And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are back once again for part three of what's probably going to be a five or six part series of the Duke of Dorks character design tier list critique. I hope you're all doing very well. I'm going to be very honest with you. This stream almost didn't happen. It almost happened tomorrow. But uh, I woke up early. I put together a thumbnail. And I have a lot of coffee in my system. And I think I'm, I think I'm good to go. Thankfully, I don't think today is going to be as long as yesterday. I hope. Since today is Smash 64, and uh, I don't know <laughs> if it's going to be, you know, hour-long talking points for each character. But Smash 64 is a very interesting game, and I'm very. it feels good that we're finally getting to a lot of characters that you know, people have really concise opinions about, because... For the most part, you're not going to really run into into divisive opinions about the Smash 64 cast. People either love them, or they hate them. Or they're indifferent. There's no like, oh, I kind of like them. Or, oh, you know, this character is like this, but I wish they were kind of better. No, it's like, this character is amazing. Or, this character is crap and needs to be changed. I really hate that this character has not changed since they came out. And I feel that since they've been around for the longest time, that they sh that these are the characters we should be the most critical about. When it comes to a critique or a design tier list. Because it's like, you've had like two decades to, to get better, man. If you're not getting better now, I don't know if you're ever going to get better. And granted, I don't think that there's many characters on the Smash 64 roster that, that fit that, you know, this character sucks. This character is so bad that I wish that they were like completely something else. I don't think any of the Smash 64 cast fits that description. Most people are either very happy or indifferent to a majority of the Smash 64 cast. And it, looking back at what Smash 64 tried to do with a lot of its characters, it's very clear that a lot of these characters are a byproduct of just throwing things at a wall and seeing what sticks. Because some characters would be would go on to have mechanics and stuff like that that no other character in the game has or ever received going forward unless they were directly copying the other character. But yeah, uh, Smash 64's cast is fairly solid in my honest opinion. I don't really have a lot of gripes with a lot of the characters. Um, there'll probably be some talking points on, like, maybe... Mario, because I know Mario is a character that, for some reason, people really want to change when I don't think that he should change. And I think that he's in such a good spot right now with what he is as of, like, late Smash 4 that they shouldn't do anything to Mario, like, whatsoever. But... Yeah. Let, let's see where this goes. I just hope that you're all having a good afternoon. I hope that uh, you you enjoy this this venture into Smash sixty four. Um, uh, I think we should just get going right away. I can't think of anything else. And uh, yeah, let's go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Design Dorks. I am at the Duke of Dorks, and this is my co-host, Pierre Kong from the channel Designing Four. And today we are continuing. Oh wait! I just realized. Pierre's a Donkey Kong main. Pierre, I might have some opinions about Donkey Kong that you may or may not like, and I apologize ahead of time. 
Oops, tier list. We are actually recording this after the first one has been uploaded to the channel, and first off, I want to say, I am so sorry for how Darkman's theme got uploaded in that first version. It was not intentional. Thank you to all the survivors of the Darkman Massacre. We Thankfully, oh, I never heard that. I never heard that version. We appreciate it. Um, if you are still out there. Uh, He's not here, but he probably will listen to this some point in the future. You probably can't hear this, but, uh, you know, thoughts are with you. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm 80% sorry. It's one of those situations where, like, you feel genuinely bad, but you also try not to laugh because the timing was so perfect, but... Just oh, dark man's in our hearts forever now. <laughs> Absolutely. Somewhere along the way. That my question is, for those that were there to experience it, does it make the Mega Man take better or worse? Uh, a minus sign became a plus sign in how the audio levels were handled, and just, oh, it, it's fixed now. You can go back to that video and not have your eardrums blown out. Uh, but today, we are not talking about that. Today, we are moving on to the next game in our Smash Brothers tier list. Now, for those of you that are just joining us, this is a uh, video series where we are taking Smash Brothers designs and ranking them not based off of competitive viability or how much we like to play as them. We are ranking them based off of how well we feel like these characters were translated into Smash Brothers, into a platform fighter. Looking at their designs and seeing like, oh, how is their, how is their si sound design carried over? What, what references do they bring over? And are they made into good fighting game moves? Things like that. Yeah, and obviously some characters will have strengths that others don't, and we'll rag on some characters for having aspects that we go on and praise other characters for having. It's, you know... <laughs> he says Metal Blade, then it's Ear Rape. Honestly, that, that, that works. Well, at least the Ear Rape has comedic timing. All very subjective, yeah. But on the other hand, it's all very much trying to look at the personality and core and what is important to that specific character and their existence and how we feel that is either represented really well or represented particularly poorly. Exactly, exactly. And today, we are actually going back to the original. Smash Brothers 64, where it all began when Sakurai decided that this game, this uh, Double Dragon Fire, whatever it was called, Let's just throw some Nintendo skins onto this, and such was born one of the juggernaut franchises of, of Nintendo. Did, did you call it Double Dragon Fighter? I, I, real, I said it, and then I realized, like, wait, no, that's something else entirely. The Bimmy and Jimmy <laughs> fighting game. Bimmy is still one of the funniest protagonist in. names ah, ever given to a character. You fought my hand, but now you'll face me, Bummy and Jammy. I played that, actually. I... <laughs> uh. But yeah, I don't know about you, but Alma... Um, uh, we actually, like, ragged in the first episode of this that, um, oh, the Smash 64 designs are very dated, but actually looking over where I've placed them on my own tier list, this is a, this is a top-heavy roster for me. I, ver I, I very much totally agree. I agree. I mean, there are some aspects that are dated for me, but, uh, I have a lot high and a lot mixed and not very many low. Um, insofar as, like, obviously we feel like there could be more reference-wise for these, but insofar as, like, the feel of the character, Smash has done a really good job in evolving and iterating on a lot of these. Um, honestly, a lot better than some of the Brawl and Melee characters, so to speak. I, I totally yeah. agree. I totally agree. Uh, and of course, if we're talking about Smash 64, obviously the first character... Oh, good. We're, going to talk we're about starting with a character that's not a bit of a weirdo. We're starting with... It's a him. Chris Pratt. Uh... As I said, Mario currently in Smash is at such a good spot that I don't think I would change anything other than his expressiveness. Mario's feel, the way he plays, his versatility, the fact that he is very much the beginner character that you're supposed to go to to learn the majority of the game. Mario is, is in such a good spot right now that I think that the most you can do is give him new voice lines to fit, you know, him fighting, because I agree with a lot of people last time we're talking about how Mario's voice lines sound way too low energy for how serious he is all the time. And just, uh, yeah, make him more expressive and happy sometimes. 
And yeah, I Mario's like an S. Like easily. And honestly, um, while I understand why, why people want to add references to him, I don't think that's a good idea. Or, you know, make him more technical like he is in, you know, Mario games. But you see, while that's both a good and a bad point, Mario in every game has always followed like a code of design. When Mario is on his own, he is the most versatile character who has all these unique movement options and all these different ways to traverse stages and stuff like that. But the moment you put Mario in a multiplayer game, he is always 100% the, the basic beginner choice character. In every single spin-off, crossover game, whatever he's been a part of, he's always fit that role. And I think that if you give too much to him, you kind of ruin that. So let, let Mario stay as the Shotokan fill-in for Smash, you know, before the fact that we got Ryu, who's, also, who's now the Shotokan, but is nobly difficult to use. He's an all-rounder. I wouldn't say he's the all-rounder. That's Pit. Pit's the all-rounder of all all-rounders. But Mario is definitely, like... The most... I want to... Actually, I want to say the most refined. But I don't... I don't think he's the best platform fighting character ever made. He's good. Especially now, with the changes they gave to him around late Smash 4 to make him a really good character. I don't know, I just think Mario- Mario good! Mario's very good! I, I don't think he needs anything, like, extra. Like, he got taunts and stuff like that to reference- taunts and costumes to reference, like, Odyssey. Like, his moveset for the- for what it is, he doesn't need like, more references to more Mario games. Leave them be. Think about changes for Luigi instead. Mario. And Mario is, in my eyes, a very fascinating character to talk about because I feel out of everybody on the roster, he is the character that people have the most- What are my- what are my thoughts on Flood? I mean, it's a good move that teaches players about an aspect of the game that, while not a lot of characters use it, it is generally useful for edge guarding. I think that he is very good. And that he's clearly still referencing and still has references to modern Mario games. I don't think he's behind the times like people think he is ideas about how he should be and what he actually is because you got people thinking that oh he's just supposed to like he should be a character that represents himself obviously then there's others that see him more as the uh the the ryu of smash brothers you can kind of see that in how he's he's technically both he's very much bing bing wahoo but he is also very much shoto of smash especially in earlier smash games when he had a tatsumaki and that wasn't just his down air, even though I think the change of putting it on his down air was probably a very good choice. Especially in the Smash 64 design, how uh, the Mario oh, Tornado yeah. is kind of like his, um, uh, Ryu's Tatsumaki, whatever it is. Yeah, Mario is 100% a Shoto character, as the Shoto is defined by, okay, their special moves are a movement-based tornado type attack, which is the Tatsumaki Senpukyen, or the, uh, Mario Tornado. The, uh, Fireball, which is Fireball. It's it's more that he has a fireball, an invincible reversal, which he does in Super Jump Punch, especially out of shield, and uh, a move that negates projectiles, which which for Ryu is Tatsumaki, but for for Mario that's his cape. And the Mario Jump Punch, which is his answer for the Dragon Punch, he is very much a Ryu, which leads to a lot of 
fascinating discussions around him because I feel like you could ask people about Mario's design and get drastically different answers because of how they view him and how they think he should be because like even on top of that there's others who view him as like the the how to play smash character like that's the one that's always shown in like the how to play smash videos mm -hmm. and as such I have no idea how I actually feel about him other than the fact that I think he does all of those roles decently well but in each iteration he could be a bit better at all of them if that makes any sense. Hmm. Eh. It's curious. Um, hmm. Like, for example, just because it's the one I feel is the most egregious, people always see him as, like, the, uh, the how to play Smash character because he's which very, he very, very... Which he very much is. I mean, there's no character in Smash that has the level of versatility that Mario has. And I think that's for a very good reason because he's very much supposed to be an everyman that can do everything. He might, you know, not have... Zoning that outplays his offense or offense that outplays his ability to play like mid range with like fireball zoning and stuff like that. But he's definitely like supposed to be th that way because that's what he is in every single game where he's not alone. Even in Mario 64, like for the DS, when they added in the other playable characters. Mario was still the baseline, basic character. Yeah, um, simplistic. A lot of his moves are really intuitive. Like, his forward air is a great example of this. It teaches players that, hey, based on how this fighter is attacking... Thoughts on Mario Finale? It is literally Mario's Shinku Hadouken. It could be something way better, but I don't think that it knocks Mario's design whatsoever because it's a Final Smash. Maybe it'll launch fighters downward, and sure enough, if you use that forward angle at the right angle, it'll launch them down. It's a really good... <laughs> Funny aerial. Exactly. But then he also has the weirdest reflector in the entire game, and a water displacement tool that nobody else on the roster has. Yeah. Squirtle is crying. And I feel like that's, um... Well, it's Squirtle, but... Oh, well, Squirtle is just copying Flood. We all... Well, even if it's still, it's still just push boxes or wind boxes. Like, wind effects and water effects are basically the exact same thing in Smash. I'll know this. Well, yes, but worse, because Flight could be angled. Exactly. And just, he, he's a character that I just, things like that. I feel like he, if he was supposed to be like that, how to play character, that he should have a stall and fall. He should have a gap closer, just to get people involved with what those what you can expect from most of the characters on the roster. Well, I mean, you could argue his pretty good dash is a good gap closer. I mean, I don't think you need to stall and fall. I don't even know what you would give him for- well, I mean, the ground pound, but that could be a command input. Sakurai, give more characters command inputs. You- you could put this intuitive design aspect on Mario without having to change his really good down air if you just gave him a ground pound command. But then if you take it to things like, uh, oh, he should be referencing, like, the feel of Mario, I feel like he does that decently, actually very well. A lot of his moveset is based around, uh, like, aerial combos, jumping up and just juggling people. I feel like that's a really good thing for Mario for Jumpman. He's, he's decent in both on the ground and in the air. It was only really an ultimate where he got ladder combos, and I like the ladder combos a lot. Honestly, he, he has Mad Knight's playstyle but he does it better than Meta Knight in a lot of areas because, you know, his moves actually work. To have. Yeah. But then his also his recovery is just not that great. Well, Very it's linear. It's simple. I think that, you know, it's... I wouldn't want it to be anything super complicated because Mario doesn't have anything that's super complicated. The down air should be a stomp. It's Mario's main form of offense, and Dr. Mario already has it. Command inputs. Could be a command input. Come on, Sakurai. There, there's opportunity. I'm, I'm not going to make this joke anymore. Very linear, very... I don't want to say vanilla, but I don't know what else to call it. And in terms of no, Mario... I can see that. Mario references, like... I've never liked the cape in its current form. I feel like that's... Oh, you're a Mario 3 fan? 
Oh, I have actually never ever played Mario. I just cape is a move that Excuse I just Excuse me? Don't You've never played <laughs> not? You can't my, just say things like I've never played <laughs> Mario. My first console was the was the GameCube and I never really went back to him. But cape is such an unintuitive move in my opinion. Like when I first played Melee, I had no idea that reflected projectiles and I didn't learn that till years later because I'm more than certain that that's a part of the how to play video. I feel very, very confident in saying that how to play tells you that ref that Mario's cape reflects projectiles. It might not have been in melees, but I'm more than certain that it's definitely in ultimates. That's not what you expect when looking at that move. Yet someone like, never it, played the how to play section where it shows Mario I using his cape. Ah, uh, Pyrrhic. Ah, uh, Pyrrhic, you know... I can always rely on you to, you know what I'm thinking, two years two years before I say it. And I feel like I was, I was not alone in this, and I hope I'm not alone in the comments either, but that's... If somebody's flinging a, blank, a blanket sheet at you, you don't expect, like, oh, obviously that can redirect missiles. Of course. Well, I mean, the way he uses it, I feel... It kind of, you know, is meant to match the way that, you know, I'm pretty sure you can destroy projectiles with the cape in Mario World. Instead, but instead of just spinning around, you just flip it in front of you because that looks better visually for a fighting game. It's a cape, though. It's magic. <laughs> he, got, he got by mugging a tiny Koopa Troop as, who had a cape. And then he's like, hey, let me take your clothes. And then it turned into a feather. Well, what I'm trying to get at here is that, like, all these complaints are very, very small aspects of Mario's design. And I think the overall core is extremely solid. But no matter what kind of angle I look at the character from, I always have just problems. And I don't know how to rectify those. How, how, how do you feel about Mario? I'm, I think we've talked about this before that you quite like the character, but I'd like to hear more thoughts of yours. So... First off, let's just get this right out of the way. He has the worst final smash in the game. Absolutely. I don't know if I'd go that far. I mean, it's not good, but its I wouldn't say it's the worst. I feel there are definitely ones in Smash that are worse, like Dark Pit's staff. Yes. Like, the feel of it, the uh, visual of it, it's just horrible. It is all right, I Isaac. Also, happy birthday. Liking it as a reference to Mario RPG's Ultra Fire or Ultra Flare, I think. It, I I don't recall. Uh, it's Shinku Hadouken. It's 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 a versus series inspired Shinku Hadouken for Mario. The the way that Mario, you know, even the animation for it is very very similar. The only difference is that it's spinning fireballs and it's not a beam of flame. A big fire move that he do. And, like, I'll, I'll be a slut for Mario RPG references. I absolutely will. But it is just the most limp, pitiful thing. And it's freaking Mario. The fact that he doesn't have a power star or a flagpole or an end of a level or the Bowser toss. There is so much Mario. The Mega Mushroom would probably be the best Final Smash for Mario, if you ask me. Like, grow really big, do like a stomp combo, and then like, kick him away. It's short, it's sweet, it fits what Mario does. Mo Mushroom power-ups are a very big part of the Mario series. There you go. And it's arguably better than Shinku Hadouken. Mario can do, and so much that is more emblematic of Mario than Big Fire. That just, ugh, it upsets me. Like, in not even a way that other Final Smashes that I think- Yeah, the Bowser tosses his back throw, the giant swing. That's what it's called. So yeah, I feel, I mean... I feel that'd be even worse. That's like, I, that's like Krom, whose Final Smash just feels like a regular special move. I think our pathetic do. It, it's a complete waste of potential. Just like Mar Mario has more history than any other character on this roster by a good margin. And he has the most unimaginative Final Smash in the entire game, in my opinion. Yeah, like the, the next worst I would say is Smash 4 DDD, which is literally nothing. 
It's just amazing. He never called Bowser gay. People were just hearing long gay, as in, I'm putting an A inflection on, an on a word because, you know, Italian. It's so long, Bowser. Except the A at the end is pronounced really weird. Made up big DDD bomb that is just a random bomb he found? But at least it's cartoony and fits DDD. And also works. Like, if he yeah. hits someone with that, it'll probably kill them. Mario's well, uh, mild inconvenience. I would argue that DDD's Final Smash in Smash 4 is a lot worse than Mario Finale. Because that was just nothing. Mario, you are actively worse because you can't use your B. Uh, not with the not with the comma. It'd be like it'd be a hyphen on the on long. So so long hyphen a Bowser button. <laughs> <laughs> like even Sonic's, it, as terrible as it is, is a cool reference to Super Sonic. Yeah, it's cool. He goes fast. You got it, guys. It, it's bad, but you you get it. <laughs> oh. I don't know what else you'd expect for Super Sonic, because that's all that Super Sonic does. He goes fast, and he does maximum spider. <laughs> I like how... Final Smashes are slowly starting to become more like Marvel Supers, because now we've gone from characters having Shinku Hadouken to now several... Or, and Ragnarok to several characters having Maximum Spider. Oh, oh so anyway, uh, that sucks. Or Maximum Wesker. Other than that, I really love Mario. So Mario to me is a matter of how he is represented as a platform fighter. And in that sense, I think that he represents what the change from Smash Brothers or from a regular fighting game to Smash Brothers is so, so elegantly. Yeah. Uh, take his fireball, for instance. The uh, typical Ryu Hadoken is, well, it's Luigi's fireball, frankly. That's the in a regular sense, I guess, yeah. Hadoken. Because it floats. And I don't know about you, but it kind of sucks in Smash. But Mario's, it follows gra- Well, actually, it depends on how you use it. If you use it as a hit confirm, you can easily, like, at certain percents run up after the fireball and then super uppercut them and basically kill them. Gravity. You can aim it. You can place it with the various changes in the terrain and heights and whatnot. It shows how you utilize the stage as opposed to just the straightforward one-on-one -on -one confrontation. I feel that so few characters utilize platforms as well as Mario. And that... Uh, Mario uses them pretty good, but I think there are definitely characters in this game that use them better. And there are characters in previous iterations of Smash that absolutely use them better. Like, for example, I don't think that Mario uses platforms as well as Fox or Marth. That makes so much sense for him as a platforming hero. Like, his jump combos aren't just good because, oh yeah, they're good, and you juggle, and they go forever, and he's the jump man. They're good because you extend them on the platforms above you. You utilize the platforms because Mario's a genius about platforms. He knows them. He's got 200 IQ plays and a PhD that he, no one knows where he got it from. Somehow a Tower of Goombas got the same PhD, but let's not talk about that. <laughs> I mean, well, he could, he gets good stuff off of, you know, his up air loops, and you can drag them up pretty high by, you know, continuing combos off of platforms. But other than that, uh, yeah, I mean, Mario's okay with platforms. I'd argue in some cases Luigi's better, because Luigi does has a much better combo game than Mario. And just... I get how people want more from Mario in the sense that uh, they want more references. They want him to represent his power-ups, like people saying that his power-ups are what make him special. And I don't think that's the case. And moreover, I think that maybe adding more to Mario and changing up his power-ups kind of makes him a weird chimera of references that fall in and out of vogue. Like, flood? You know, Krakamo, it's funny you say that, because I don't think... 
I think only like one or two characters in the entirety of the DLC roster for Smash Ultimate even have good final smashes. I think I have the majority of characters in the DLC lineup for seasons one and two, almost all of their final smashes are pretty either underwhelming or just bad. He was really, really important when he was added to Mario's Kid in Brawl. And now it feels weird and like, okay, why is this here instead of something else? And I feel like if you like added more to Mario and changed it up, then you'd kind of get that same feeling. I think that the most important thing for Mario is his feel because that's what's most important in a Mario platformer. If it feels right or if you get weird floaty new soup jumps that I don't care for. And no, I he doesn't need those. Mario, I don't think that there's a single game that Mario feels bad to play in. And no. And that really... I mean, he's a little clunky in Smash 64, but it's Smash 64 and almost everybody in that game feels at least a little clunky to some extent. He speaks to me of how much of Smash is informed by Mario and what Mario can do. I don't think he's the beginner character. I think that he is the golden standard. And I think that he performs... Why not both? ...that incredibly well. To the point where I feel like that supersedes some of the weird decisions made in his design. And I like Cape. Like, it, it, it's dumb, it's weird, but you turn the person around, and that kind of plays with the psychology of Mario. And I like that, like, his recovery is linear, but you have the cape as a stall option for it, or you have the fireball as a different approach option for it, and you have the spike. Like, like Mario has tools for a majority of situations, and it's possible to overwhelm him, but usually he can find a way out of it. Like, usually the super jump punch will do good, and it is threatening enough that he can blast through it unless the opponent's at a specific angle. So, yeah. I don't know. I agree that he's missing some of the polish and flavor and love that a lot of later entries get, but I... But, again, we have to think about Mario in in multiplayer games compared to Mario on his own. And I think that for what Mario is on his... in What Mario is in Smash in a multiplayer game, he's way more here than he is in a majority of his crossover slash multiplayer game appearances. I almost feel that's kind of superfluous to the idea of Mario, frankly. Uh, but uh, as I said, the Final Smash sucks, so. He, he is an inherently simple character, so it does make sense for him to have like that inherent simplicity in his design. I do agree with that. I also do just want to clarify real quick, Cape is so much fun to use, it just took me literal years to figure out how to use it. Uh, yeah, that's I don't fair. I that's don't fair. like that unintuitiveness. Ah, hmm. ah. I don't know, like, you, you, you're selling me hard on the character, but at the same time, I look at him and you, he just feels kind of hollow to me. Like, there's... In some ways, yeah, I do agree that the inherent simplicity is to his benefit to him, but is there really any reason that the the super jump punch couldn't be replaced with like some sort of like galaxy spin upward and still hold that same uh, role in his kits? I don't think you need to because I've seen, I've been looking at this and I just remembered this while watching these two Mario's fight. You get references to Cappy in the super jump punch. So no, I, that alone, in my opinion, keeps it in line with, with, with where Mario should be. I don't think that that needs to change. You can't say, oh, it's outdated, when they literally just updated it to fit in line with his latest adventure. And it still is, arguably, his latest adventure. I don't know, I, I feel- Unless you want him to turn into Elephant Mario. I feel like so many elements of his design aren't changed purely out of tradition and because of how poorly people reacted to when Flood replaced the Mario Tornado. Well, I, to be frank, I don't think that Mario is ever going to get rid of Fireball, Super Jump, and some version of the Mario Tornado in his kit. 
as long as Sakurai is director, because yeah. I feel like that connection to Street Fighter and specifically how you twist those fundamentals to prove, okay, yeah, this is a Smash Brothers game. It's all about the platforming and positioning more than the pure functions of the moves. Like, I feel like that is such an important design link that like, I don't know, Mario's weird because he feels good to play and I agree with you, he's missing references. But I almost feel like changing him up changes up the standard of which all other characters are based and makes it harder to build off of that. Like, I almost feel like Mario fulfills a design function, in a sense. I see, I see. You know, somebody that's a fan of Marvel, hearing the word function, <laughs> uh, that word has been tainted. It's weird to come to grips with me, but also he's really, really fun in like any game. Like I, I can't name a single Smash Brothers game where he's not fun to play. Uh, yeah, no, I, I can't disagree with that. There's just a simple joy of just jumping around and comboing people with him. Uh, he's a Look, MBCI like, is a good game. Moves. It just has bad graphics. He really miss custom moves because I feel like he could benefit so much from that. Like, he like could, and then he didn't. The baseline, right? Like, there was so much you could do with Mario, but instead they gave him, here's a fireball, here's a bigger fireball, here's oh. an ice ball. Oh. Wow. Here's what a jump. Guy. Here's his super jump. Here's a super jump that doesn't do damage. I don't even remember the rest of them. That, that's how yeah, no, I, I don't either. Little they were used. I honestly only remembered big fireball. And that's only because that was, like, the one shown in the, di the direct. Yep, it sure was. Ugh. Uh, I don't know. I, I currently have Mario at the very top of B tier because, despite my various, yeah, like, nitpicks towards him, they are nitpicks, my opinion. and I do agree that he, he fits... He's a good interpretation of what... The, of the feel that characters should have in Smash Brothers, I would be willing to put him in A tier as well. Like, you really sold me with just, um, that fireball bit in particular, how he uses the Shoto moves, but translates them into a platform fighter. I never thought about it that way, but that is brilliant. Uh, where do you have him on yours? I have him in high A, but I'm willing to admit that I agree way more with Pyrrhic so than Duke on this one. Design choices and the feel of a character more than reference and i will admit looking at every i think that since these are characters that have been around since their since the inception of the series i feel the game feel with these characters is something that should definitely be valued way way higher than other characters that come after them because if they're if they've been around for as long as they have and they still don't feel good to play then there's a serious problem with that other character around mario he is lacking in that regard. I'm, I'm never going to be a person that says, no, every move should be a reference. His down smash should obviously be him swiping his raccoon tail around people. Oh, yeah, absolutely not. No, no, no. Oh, God, no, please. Like, I'm, I'm fine with a couple, but I, I feel like Mario's physicality needs to be sold as a platforming hero. Like, he's the jump man. He's, he's the guy that makes it all possible, and his special skill isn't power-ups, it's his natural skill and athleticism in getting through obstacle courses. Yeah. And I love that that's sort of embodied in a fighting game character shell. But I, I will admit, I'm far more willing to move him down. Uh, I, can, I can deal with him in B. Like, this isn't a person where I could go, ugh. Like, he falls in a big range for me, depending on how I feel of the day. And the day I made this, I was just feeling high on the Mario. <laughs> and you are convincing me that he's better than I thought. Uh, just something I want to bring up real quickly. There was a very long time where I didn't like Mario in Smash Brothers just because of how grumpy he was. Like, the Brawl in Smash 4 eras in particular, just like, it bugged me. Never I smiles. Smiling. I feel like that's been mostly dealt with in Smash Ultimate, but there was all... No, I, I remember the Piranha Plant trailer where Mario is pissed was like oh, yeah, the big that thing. I, I, I... That's that's fair. I did forget about that, and I I don't like that. So yeah, I feel like he should inspire more joy. Like, he, he is 
he is the video game mascot. He should inspire that fun. And he does inspire that fun in how he plays. Like, there's mm -hmm. a very simple joy. Well, Again, you, could, you could argue, you know, he's serious because he's fighting. And even in modern Mario games, when he's fighting Bowser, he is, you know, moderately serious. There isn't very much Wahoo when he's kicking in Bowser's shins. But as a whole, I do think that, yeah, he could probably be a little bit happier. There's not a Smash game where Mario isn't fun to play in. Even in fan games, he's never he's fun to play in. I've never played him in a Smash formula where he's not great. But I also kind of feel like his personality also took a shift when he was translated into platform fighters. And I don't think that was necessary. I think that that's most obvious in Brawl, because Brawl took a lot of for lack of a better word, color from a lot of the cartoon characters. Absolutely. And it... but, but his realistic denim <laughs> denim overalls, though. It never gave it back. Like, it increased their saturation, but a lot of them stayed really grumpy, except for, like, Bowser. Which is ironic when you think about it. Uh, yeah. Bowser doesn't really emote, so... I, it's kind of hard to lose emotion when you never really showed it. <laughs> but, uh, I, I'm willing to go bottom of, or low A or high B. Because looking at how we listed A tier as a great mix of source and gameplay, I don't think that he embodies a great mix of source. I think his gameplay yeah. is exceptional. Utterly fantastic. But he, he is lacking in that sense. Well, I, he's I from Smash 64. Now. I don't think that a lot of characters in Smash 64 arguably are very, you know, respectful of Source and focus a lot on Source. It's more on gameplay, and that's why I feel that that's an aspect when looking at the Smash 64 characters that you should value the most when, you know, tiering them in something like this, especially compared to later games where they would better understand this and, you know, they were allowed to have personalities because a lot of the Smash 64 characters don't have personalities. Only a couple of them do. All these what tips it into B for me. Like I ha again, I have him in B right now. If he was just happier, I I fully admit to A. But with, I I kind of want to put him right next to Bowser Jr. Because I kind of feel that same lack of personality. Uh, remind me the formation of B tier right now. Okay, so the B tier right now is uh, Cloud, Bowser Jr., Greninja, King Dedede. Duck Hunt, We Fit Trainer. And I definitely feel like Mario... I want to put Mario above Bowser Jr. I agree. It's him versus Cloud that I'm debating. Because it's very much an issue of Cloud is everything is there, but something is missing and Ike took it. And Mario <laughs> is... There's something missing, and we know what it is, but he's also better than everyone else. You know, I kind of like him being the top of B tier, because... That to be really completely hurts. honest, I feel that stuff like this is why only the bottom and the top should be ordered. If you feel a character should be in A, they should go in A, and or they go in B, or, you know, stuff like that. I think when you try to order everything that isn't, like, the best of the best or the worst of the worst, things tend to get hard missing is what i feel separates the tears yeah you're i think that's about right i think that's about right as a discussion all right yeah 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 top of b tier that that is that feels good to me yeah okay so that's settled now hurt me okay <laughs> all right so oh yes good old, big monkey good old donkey kong we had a we had a whole spiel on how the donkey kong care um i am going to quickly be right back it's around the time where my cat needs to be fed. Uh, I'm going to have some very interesting opinions about DK uh, when I come back. Because I'll tell you this right now. I don't think that he's as bad as people think he is. And I think he only really needs a few very specific fixes in order to be like, a, like an A tier character. But for the love of God, Sakurai, give him his fucking voice.
I'm back. Sorry about that. It's uh, around that time. Started earlier than who I usually would feed them. So yes, uh, Donkey Kong. Listen, as I said, at his core, I don't feel that Donkey Kong has nearly enough problems as people think he does. But there is something I will tell you. And that's that ultimate fuck this character so goddamn bad. Listen, Donkey Kong in Smash 4 was such a well-realized character and had such a well-realized game plan. In Smash 4, he was a really good grappler. And guess what? They took all of that away, and now Donkey Kong is no longer a grappler. Donkey Kong doesn't know what the hell he's supposed to be anymore. And you know what? He's not the only character that has suffered from this problem. There's another character in this video that got butchered by Ultimate way more in this same video. <laughs> And Bowser also got slammed pretty hard, too. Uh, his problems come to balancing personality and couple references missing. I stand by the fact that if you changed his special moves, people would love this character. More than they already do. Yes, let's not be around the bush. It is very clear that even though this character in Ultimate got just 
completely and utterly bastardized and lost everything that was good about him in the previous game, people still fucking love to use Donkey Kong in Smash Ultimate. And he's still very fun. Donkey Kong in the last two Smash games, in my opinion, has are when he's been at his most fun. Which is funny, because he lost, like, everything good about him in this game. He's less of a grappler, but I think he's still in the grappler category. I don't understand how, because... Aside from, like, back throw at the ledge as a kill, he doesn't really use his grabs for anything anymore, because cargo up throw doesn't really work very well anymore, because of the changes to knockback. People really like to prop up how good Ultimate made some characters, but they tend to forget that Ultimate really, really ruins some characters in return. Ding Dong, I think, works at 0%, and that's it on most characters. You get it once, and I don't think you ever get it again. Sadly. If you gave Donkey Kong, like, I have ideas for how I'd change Donkey Kong. I've come up with ideas for attacks. And I think that one of them is, yes, he should absolutely use the barrel as a recovery option. There's no reason that that should not be in the game. I don't care if it's on stages. It's, it is such an iconic part of not only Donkey Kong, of Donkey Kong series, but just like maneuvering stages in those games. It should absolutely be his recovery option in Smash. I also have had ideas for unique types of moves, such as a, a projectile slash command grab barrel toss, where Donkey Kong essentially stomps the ground, causing a barrel to fly up, and he catches it, and he holds it over his shoulder with one hand, while he, like, aim while he aims in front of him with, like, his other hand in front of him, and then he throws it as a projectile. Now, this projectile will be very easy to challenge. Opponents will be able to pick it up and throw it back at him, just like other, just like, actual barrels in the game. Physical attacks would be able to break it. It would basically be a very, it'd be a very situational move. But if used properly, it would allow Donkey Kong to approach and deal with people that keep him out. Because as the biggest body character in the game, yes, he's arguably bigger than Ridley, if we consider how wide he also is as well. And the fact that there are zero to death combos that only work on Donkey Kong and nobody else. I think he needs something to deal with people poking at him and hitting him from a range. But there's also a unique catch to it. If Donkey Kong stomps the ground and his opponent is too close to him, instead of knocking up a barrel, he will knock the opponent off the ground and onto his shoulder where he can then throw them as a command grab. Essentially acting as an alternative to cargo throw, they could potentially also have follow-up options. I also had an idea for a for a jungle beat themed command grab. So can he do it in the air? I imagine if he did it in the air, he would fast fall back to the ground in order to create the stomp. So you essentially give him a fast fall move. He would have both, Rim. He would have both that and Cargo. Give... He's clearly supposed to be a grappler. Give him more options to be a grappler. Like, for his side special, I had an idea where you basically take the giant punch, and the giant punch essentially acts as a jungle beat command grab opener, where if an opponent gets hit by it, 
Donkey Kong can literally just wail on them before sending them flying. And it basically it would be like a mini version of his current Final Smash, which they should change, in my honest opinion. That aspect of Donkey Kong is really cool, and I kind of wish that they would keep it in some way, because it's also, it's also in Returns and Tropical Freeze for when you finish off bosses. Yeah, this character has potential. I don't think that it's inherently being even remotely accessed. He's fun. He f a lot of his normals are what I think they should be, and they're very satisfying. But his specials are so weird and out of left field and outdated that he's, in my opinion, he's like a B design because of that. Like, some aspects feel so good, some aspects feel so off. And it, it hurts especially because they had a way, they had they clearly showed that they had somewhere that this character could go in Smash Four, and they just butchered him in Ultimate. And they did the same for Bowser too, who was also a grappler with a well-defined playstyle, who is no longer a grappler and more of a weird, a weird uh, bruiser character now. And you can definitely tell that these changes hurt them because in most in the competitive tier list, both of those characters dropped exponentially, especially Donkey Kong. <laughs> but above all else, please let him have a actual voice. Because not having an actual voice not only holds him back, but it also holds Diddy back, and it holds King K. Rule back. And this idea that they've had for Donkey Kong since his inception has never worked. And I really wish that somebody on the DK team would step in and be like, Can you please give our, our good boy a voice that actually fits his character, please? We don't like the monkey noises or the gorilla noises. Can you please just make him sound like he does in the games? We'll bring on the voice actor and you can have him record lines. For the love of God, please get rid of the grunts. <laughs> because that's how a lot of these changes have happened. It's been less, all oh, the fans want it, and more like, all oh, the development teams wanted this to happen, so it happened. So, send in letters to the Donkey Kong development teams. And tell them, we want Donkey Kong and Smash to be really good. Can you ask Sakurai to give him a voice, please? I feel bad for people to play Donkey Kong. <laughs> I feel, I really do. Well, I don't think you have it nearly as bad as people that wanted Little Mac. Re so, I'm so sorry, Pizza. Isaac, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you definitely, you don't have it very good. Characters are treated when we discuss Diddy in the last episode. Oh yeah. And we, of course, have made that entire episode just surrounding how we want Donkey Kong to be changed. It's, it's interesting because like looking at, um, Comparing Donkey Kong to Diddy Kong, I definitely feel like Diddy Kong is the more offensive. That was weird. Too. Got stuck oh, there for Donkey a second. Kong, I don't like... know if that was the. I don't know if that was me or the video. For lack of a better word, he's a big old himbo in the Donkey Kong games. He's a he's a big dumb jock that just. I've never like heard Donkey Kong around. described as a himbo before, <laughs> and it's so perfect. Holy shit! Right? Oh my! Oh my! Oh, I need to say. Oh. Really? I, I, I'm more than certain. The people call him a himbo quite often because that's just what his personality is. He's really strong, but he's extremely stupid. Kinda in Smash Brothers, like he's just kind of swiping and grabbing people, throwing them around. I like that he's a grappler in Smash Brothers. That well, he used to be. 
They 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 gave they took away all the cool grapple stuff he could do before. It feels mm -hmm. like a good place for him to be, but yeah. he falls into that same Smash Brothers trap where the animalistic characters are treated as the animals they are, and I hate that so much. Oh, because uh, Do Donkey Kong characters in particular are just like. They have such great personalities. They are so funny. Like, Cranky Kong is one of my favorite characters in video games. Just the the way he references, like, back in my day, we didn't have to deal with all What the f- What is this? I'm sorry, I just got distracted by the AI shimmy. Tutorials and things. We just dealt with the difficulty we were given to him. I can't believe Donkey Kong predicted OK Boomer 25 years before it went into <laughs> Vogue. What an utterly brilliant. Oh my god. Oh, Incredible. That's perfect. I never thought about it like that, but that's perfect. But yeah, none of that's in Smash Brothers at all. Yeah, no, you're you're entirely right. Um not until Ultimate where when you hit Claptrap, he goes, ow. He does? Yeah. When you oh. hit Claptrap, he makes the sound when you hit him and he goes, ow. I did not know that. Neither did I. My favorite thing. I'm like, did they add the owl? And then they added the owl. I was like, oh, 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 my sweet boy. Oh, I get love little, you, Claptrap. Get a little taste of what could have been. So I do understand. At that rate, they should have just given Carol like sampled voice clips from like Donkey Kong 64. Why? For DK in general, because, uh, for a long time with the Donkey Kong franchise, it became a matter of Nintendo of Japan specifically uh, did not want to work on Rare's creations after they left out of respect for the original creators. Like this is what they did with the character. We would not feel right expanding upon it. And you know, there were obviously surface level things that were introduced in uh, Smash Melee and some things are obviously unavoidable with how popular and uh, relevant Diddy Kong was. But that was the mentality that brought us Jungle Beat and a lot of the design ideas of Returns uh, lacking some of the Kremlin characters and the Animal Buddies, well, all the Kremlin characters. And that was very much where it came from as a matter of respect and whatnot. And I think that's why we get a less cartoony Donkey Kong. Well, that unfortunate timing with Brawl taking that more serious tone. I don't think that Grant Kirkhope voice. I mean, the, those problems with Donkey Kong were apparent even when Rare was still a part of Nintendo, though. That's the thing. So I don't inherently believe that that's the reason why DK isn't DK. I'd also argue that his current voice actor and the way that he's portrayed in Returns and Tropical Freeze is pretty cartoony and really matches with the classic games. And it also, you know, helps that David Wise did the music for Tropical Freeze, which is an absolutely astounding OST, but that's besides the point. I feel that that... That worked for a while, but it's very evident that it's not entirely true. DK would have been well received as a change there, but uh, I do think that DK is a victim of circumstance because there- Like most things are in Smash, he is definitely a victim of circumstance. There are a ton of tools in his kit that he has developed to make really, really fun. Cargo Throw is incredibly fun. Really, really fun reference to the original arcade game with just the idea of kidnapping and just how strong he is. Oh, I know Krakabo. I, I've, I saw the animated short and it's it's absolutely amazing in every single regard. Is like DK is sold as strong so well that you don't realize that he isn't actually the best at knockback. He's above average but he's not amazing at anything he does but you feel like he's that strong i argue he's like top 10 for knockback he does some of his moves hit extremely hard this is true this is true like all of his moves have he's definitely higher than deity have a really good weight to them even the moves that don't really do anything mm -hmm. like you still feel those slaps even though they don't really launch you he's got a ton of really fun moves the man's got four spikes and all of them feel good 
Yeah. Now, the hand slaps could be have more impact to them, but the other three, uh, yeah, they all they definitely all do feel really good. Different ways, less so the headbutt, but that's also used on stage well. Uh, their slow addition of armor to his moves really sells off how powerful he is and has made Spinning Kong... Spinning Kong kind of nasty when you actually hit it, that's true. Which is why I feel that even if they do change Donkey Kong, and they should in the future, keep Spinning Kong as a command input. Because... It being an armored reversal on the ground works really well, and while I don't think it should be nearly as, you know, powerful or, you know, get off me as Incineroar's Lariat, it, it's very good for what it is, and I don't, I think I would miss it if it was gone. From, yeah, this feels pretty underpowered, to, oh, this feels so good to do to someone who has no idea how to handle it. Um, the fact that they've changed his dash attack from the weakest, limpest little kick to oh, his actual role. Oh. oh, God. Oh, no. Replaying subspace is just, oh, my God. Yeah, I remember that yeah, dumb DK little kick. Is, he's gotten so much better. And let me not miss words. I've played DK in every single game. I love him. I love the feel of him. I love how you kill with him. I love the feeling of earning all my kills. And DK has really has that. But he kind of sucks at representing his character. Right. He doesn't have a single barrel in his moveset apart from his entrance. And that yeah. is ridiculous. Like, imagine any other character, like... If Mario didn't have fireballs, if Link didn't have a bow and arrow, which actually he didn't in Smash 64, which also felt weird. <laughs> I will give, you know, there's obvious credit to be said that, you know, Cranky Kong is the one that threw barrels. Uh, this is, depending on your interpretation, either the grown-up donkey. Yeah, DK's also thrown barrels, even if Cranky's the one for known for doing it. And, you know, you throw barrels in actual Donkey Kong Country games. I'd argue that it's still just as iconic for modern DK as it was for Cranky when he was, you know, Donkey Kong in the original arcade games. Kong Jr. or Donkey Kong the Third, son of DK Jr. Depends on which weird continuity that you decide to latch on to, be it the D I mean, DKC or the DK64 one. This is true, but also, like, I feel like this Donkey Kong... It is kind of meant to embody the arcade one first and foremost, just like- I do not agree with that whatsoever. That might just be a side effect of him being more animalistic, but also yeah. with Sakurai's weird insistence on just keeping 75 meters around. <laughs> yeah. I think that's just more for the novelty of it being a Mario Brothers reference than anything else. I don't think that has anything to do with DK. Should it have been 25 meters instead of 75? I mean, I don't think you can run into a person that would tell you no, but... Donkey Kong and Donkey... Donkey Kong and Smash is very much... First and foremost, above everything else, Donkey Kong Country Donkey Kong. In, like, a majority of things that he does. Uh, it, it, feel, it feels like there's, like, just a, like, we gotta show off the, the history first. It's cool. Which is well, that's just Sakurai's love for history. I mean, he also put in a Mario Brothers stage, and I don't think that any of the Mario characters are supposed to reference Mario Brothers. It's just, it's just there because it's a nice reference to an older game that's a big part of Nintendo's, Nintendo's lineage. I mean, for God's sake, the only character you've ever unlocked on that stage is Rob in Brawl. Seen a lot of Smash Brothers characters yeah. actually. It's clear that there's a significant portion of love put toward the arcade Donkey Kong in Smash over DKC often. And you know, don't get me wrong, Donkey Kong is the game that established Nintendo, of course. Like, you should celebrate that. But I feel like it's gone about in a way that isn't celebratory of the DK series. And the fact that the DK series hasn't really been celebrated since Rare left it until recently. Like, Tropical Freeze is a great, great game. Like, don't get me wrong, absolutely fabulous game, but it's not really reverent of anything other than Donkey Kong Country Returns. And I feel like that's just bled- Well, I mean, 
with the inclusion of Cranky and Dixie, I don't know if I would inherently agree with that. While I know that, you know, Ramby's, and, you know, of course, we have to also mention, again, that David Wise, the original composer for the Donkey Kong Country trilogy, well, actually, do he, he didn't do three. The one that made the most iconic songs from the Donkey Kong Country series was the one that did the music for Tropical Freeze. I'd argue that Tropical Freeze is very reminiscent of the older games. While, you know, having its own modern spin on stuff with the partner system and stuff like that. It definitely keeps a lot of the old series' as challenge. Into the general perception of DK until King K. Rule came back. And I feel like DK is just a victim of that sort of interpretation of DK internally in Nintendo. It's a very interesting point. I never thought about it like that, but wow, Tropical Freeze just... Yeah, like, apart from Rambi, that, that's the only thing I can think of. Do you know we haven't seen On Guard the Swordfish in. since Donkey Kong Barrel Blast? He's not in... What? Yeah, but you know who... Well, Honestly, I don't think we need him with a lot of those uh, water stages from what I remember. Also, holy hell, the water music in Tropical Freeze is some of the best music in the entire game. And I'm not even talking about the remix of Aquatic Ambience from Donkey Kong Country 1. Some of those songs are just, like, not only, like, some of the best songs in the entire Donkey Kong Country series, I'd argue it's some of the best video game music ever made. In uh, Tropical Freeze, a reference to Billy Mitchell. <laughs> Well, that, that's definitely dated. So Billy Mitchell's in Tropical Freeze. A Metroid oh, is in Tropical oh. Freeze. On Guard the Swordfish is not. That's, 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 that's... Well, that's exactly what I mean, Captain. Tropical Freeze is not an easy game. I'd argue it's, in especially the later levels, it, it, is, it, is, it is a fairly difficult game. I'd argue it's, it's harder than Returns was. Just dumb. So anyway, uh... Oh, so yeah, Swordfish is kind of useless in modern DK because you get the water... You get the underwater dash naturally. This is me hijacking it so that... Hijacking the podcast so you could hear things that you might have heard on DK Vine. <laughs> <laughs> but as for Donkey Kong's design itself, it feels like the best they could do with what they had and with how DK has been over the past two decades. And it feels good in that sense, but at the same time, there's so much missing. I'm not the biggest proponent of needing a barrel, but the fact that he's missing the barrel cannon, something that's been so important that it was in the first two stages he ever had. Something so emblematic and so obvious. Something that's specifically tied- Well, somebody probably thought it would work better on the stage than it would for the character. They're wrong, but I can understand where the, the flawed logic comes from. Tied to Donkey Kong in DK64 is just... Ah, it, it's so frustrating it's, to me. It's bizarre. I, I, I can't think of a reason that he doesn't have it apart from just Smash's insistence of not changing characters. Because Spinning Kong is so important to reference. But Grounded Spinning Kong but, is super fun! That's my that's problem! That's true! I love it Grounded Spinning Kong! Fun. But imagine, imagine how fun the barrel cannon could be just launching Donkey Kong in any direction! I completely agree with that. Like, like you're not gonna sell me on, oh yeah, the barrel cannon would be fun. I'm like, no, 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 no. I, I, I know, honey. I, I got it. I, I, I don't it's know if you know that. Whole video about this. I, I don't, I don't know if you know this, but I kind of freaking love Donkey Kong. <laughs> uh, where does he end up landing for you? I think everybody I loves Donkey Kong, and that's why he's so. I don't feel like he's. Openly yeah, criticized yeah. because you know yeah. you're usually passionate about the stuff you Donkey love. Is so much better he than is him. so much I don't more fun. Put him up in mixed. I because I feel like that's just there's too much missing for me to put him up there. D is where he should be. I have him in mixed because I physically can't put him lower. 
Like, <laughs> I argue that he I makes like this probably like closer to what I put him to as well. Right now, like just that I just mid tier hand completely freeze and spasm. So like you can do that. You're correct in doing that. He definitely does need to be improved and. Honestly, the whole DK series needs a look at in general to more celebrate the tone of it. Uh, I personally don't think he it's like, oh, he needs coconut gun. No, he doesn't. No, no doesn't. I don't think he like, does either. It's funny. I Toss like a barrel it. at most. I, I better than that. The DK. Rap. He's fine. Let's let's not regard pretend here. Uh, the fact that it was cut down in Smash 4 is a travesty and uh, I'll wear that loss forever. But I like that he is an up and close brawler and just, yeah, give him the barrel can and give him some of the techniques that you guys fostered in Jungle Beat. It doesn't have to be locked to just his final smash, which is a neat reference, but also have you considered the moon? Right. Yeah. And I mean, That's why I you should just turn that into like a, like a, a move you can do regularly. So much. That felt like it, like it kind of got that personality back into the character it's like here's this big scary ape, ape but for his most powerful attack he just starts playing the drums and that's awesome i loved it god could be a good just, taunt um, let me ask you have you ever played uh mario plus rabbit's kingdom battle i played it before the dlc i did not see donkey kong's but i know how he's treated in the dlc and i wish that was even if just half of that love was put into his smash Design. I'd I love just want to go over uh, just a couple of things he does because he's a very melee focused character, but he has big, big AOE shockwaves. If he sees vines, he can swing on them, which carry him forward and continue his movement. So he basically just gets bonus movement for moving well, which is a great reflection of his momentum. He can yeah. play the bongos to lure enemies in, which gets him away from your other teammates and closer to the big smacky man. Uh, he can pick up pieces of the terrain that are used as like chest high walls and throw them at people, or he can just throw enemies or your teammates. What you're describing is why I'm upset that Donkey Kong wasn't in the sequel as it is a basic playable character, because nobody in that game plays anything like that, and that would have been really fun. And I think that Rayman's going to be fun, but Christ... This should have just made Donkey Kong one of the main cast members of the second game of Sparks of Hope. He just picks them up oh, and tosses them. Oh, I didn't know them. that. Oh, that's amazing. It's like an XCOM style game. Oh, oh my gosh. I... He is utterly brilliant and all of it is this really, really playful, really, really fun feeling of Donkey Kong. He feels like a boss character that you get to control in that game. And yet he still carries his momentum from Donkey Kong Country. He still carries his personality. He has the freaking DK64 slash Donkey Kong bongos in there. He is so nicely represented in a game where he has half of the tools that he has in Smash. And just, uh, yeah, he's in D tier. And it hurts me to say that. But like, there's so much that can be That's done a fair so tier. well if you celebrate DK. And what we have is a fine character, but God, we could have more. Yeah. yeah just ha having that direct comparison to King K rule and just putting the two next to each other, like it's pathetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, where on D tier would that land him, in your opinion? Like, I, I know this is hard for I, you, but just... I can't do it, man. You you want me to say that DK <laughs> is worse than Meta Knight? I can't do that. DK probably has kids in some continuities. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I... This is... I, I'm sorry for just the painful ride that this is going to be, but I feel like Meta Knight services his character better than DK does. Uh, uh, yeah... <laughs> oh. uh, An absolute zero. He's nobody's hero. When compared to the pits, uh, you're not putting the pits above Donkey Kong. I'm trying to think. Like I, I feel like the the pits are broken in a lot of their move sets. Yeah. Just, just like in terms of a fighting game, I, I'd be willing to put him between Meta Knight and the pits. Okay. Okay. As we go any further, I'm going to have to start comparing him to Robin, and that's just going to snap you in half. <laughs> oh, you'd be dead in a second. You're not winning that debate. I'll go on for three hours. No, I don't not. care. <laughs> uh. Uh. Right, but 
Are you going to be okay if he's between Meta Knight and the Fitz? Yes. Yes. Okay. Comment section, okay. please pray for, for me. Lost. <laughs> All right. Let's Honestly, look. Moose, while that's funny and it'll never happen, I legitimately think that the fact that he has a voice in the Mario movie might just end up being a factor that gets him a voice in Smash in the future. Same with Bowser, to be honest with you. I think that since these characters are now so well established with more people and it's from these characters are such noble parts of this huge movie that did so much for Nintendo publicly and publicity wise, I legitimately do think that in the next Smash, they're going to force Sakurai to give Bowser and Donkey Kong voices. If at least Bowser, I do not for the life of me think that Bowser's going to still sound the same in, in the next Smash. But next, oh boy, Let's it's, move on from the, this traumatic it's a good old and Link. Link. And I actually think Link is pretty good. I think. Okay. The reason that yesterday's stream was on a Thursday and not the Wednesday it was planned was that I was basically doing nothing on the Wednesday but playing Tears of the Kingdom. So that alone should tell you that I am a decently large fan of Zelda. I played a lot of the games. I enjoy a lot of the games. I love a lot of the games. But while I like some of the niche changes that Link brought to Smash with his Breath of the Wild design, like the longer Master Sword, the double arrows, and stuff like that, I am not a fan of Breath of the Wild Link's visual design. And then a lot of what Breath of the Wild Link lost in the translation of becoming Breath of the Wild Link from the Link we had in Smash 4 made me appreciate Smash 4 Link way, way more than I did when that was all we had. I miss the claw shot. I miss the Gale boomerang. And I almost just want to say, please, can you just, like, make this guy an Echo Fighter or something for the Link we have now? Because I would legitimately like to know how a Link with the longer sword and the, and the mechanics of Ultimate behind him would work in comparison to what he is in previous games. Because Link in Smash 4 was not a bad character. At least, not as bad as people thought he was at the beginning. A lot of people openly agree that Link in Smash 4 was actually a pretty decent character. But I miss the cl I miss the I miss the claw shot. I miss a lot of stuff that Link had in Smash 4, and I think that the design of Link as a fighter works better with the Twilight Princess design because Twilight Princess Link was always supposed to be like the one that was like very knowledgeable of combat and he knew all the he learned all these techniques. Yes, he learned from Ocarina of Time Link. I know about the Hero Shade being Ocarina of Time Link. It's been canonized. But Ocarina of Time Link never used them. Twilight Princess Link did. And they were really cool. And some of them could have been added to Smash as, you know, you new moves. I also think that Link's costumes in Smash Ultimate are absolute garbage. While I appreciate the fact that he has two different costumes, the Tunic of the Wild looks so unbelievably bad. He looks like... He looks like a bad cosplayer of Link. He looks like a $30 Walmart cosplay of Link, and it looks really bad, especially compared to the fact that he would get 
actual like older game costumes in both the DLC for Breath of the Wild and he also has them in Tears of the Kingdom. At the very least, I want Link in the next game to have like Twilight Princess themed or Ocarina of Time themed classic Link look, actual classic Link look as a costume option. That's all I, that's the most I could possibly ask for. Yeah, Tunic of the Wild Links look, looks like a man disguised as himself, and it's bad. Link's colors in Smash 4 were so, so, so much better. Because I also don't think that a lot of the color schemes also really translate very well to the other costumes. There are some colors that look pretty good, but Fierce Deity does not look very good on Breath of the Wild Link. And while I understand why Nintendo is pushing Breath of the Wild Link so much, I really do wish that they would remember that this is the look of Link that people love the most. Like, that's all I need. Just, just let him have... This is a costume, and I will, I'll be completely and totally fine. I don't care if he doesn't have claw shot or anything like that. It'd be really fun to, you know, have a Link that plays like Smash 4 Link in a game like Ultimate. And I think that he easily could have been an Echo Fighter for Link, and it would work and be arguably way more different than some of the Echo Fighters that are already in the game. If you just give him a costume that makes him look like his, his, his older appearances, I'll be completely and totally fine. Or better yet, give every, give every single one of his costume slot, his color slots, a different costume. Because there are a shit ton of costume and armors in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. You could easily give him eight different costumes and they could all work perfectly fine. But I miss Smash 4 Link. And if I were to give Link a rating, he's like a B. He's fine. He's okay. I don't mind him. I don't really know what I would add to him to make him better. And while some of the new stuff he got that helps him evolve as a character throughout the series is nice, he definitely, he lost things in the process, which in my opinion, Hart feels way more prominent than the stuff that he gained. What I'm saying is that I want, I want a Breath of the Wild Link that uses a claw shot. Give me a Breath of the Wild Link that uses a claw shot for his, for his grab and to use the tether recovery. Just, that's what I want. And, um, I don't think I'm ever going to get it, to be honest with you. That if you gave a character a most improved sticker, that Link would get... Just give him Ultra Hand. No, make Raru a playable character. That wholesale, like, no question. Uh, yeah. No, yeah, you're right, you're right. Like, he's one of the few characters that's actually been allowed to evolve properly over the course of the Smash games. I don't feel like he's done that perfectly. His spin attack being recovery still feels just weird to me. But, like, giving him his dash attack properly, giving him the remote bombs, uh, the cool thing he can do with his arrows where he can fire one, pick it up, and fire two, that's just neat. Yep. I feel like it is an alternative and to be completely honest with you that's probably what they're going to give him but I would absolutely prefer if just Raru was a playable character and he used all the all the Tears of the Kingdom stuff because it's still basically it's just Zonai technology that he would absolutely be able to use himself because he lives on through this arm um, his deep cut Metal Gear Solid reference for people to understand what that is his gameplay of just setting up 
different um, items to like continue a combo, like throwing out his boomerang, throwing a bomb, and being able to like use all of those at the same time is just so cool. Link setups are amazing to watch. And I feel like that accurately reflects the, um, the item-based gameplay of Zelda. I completely agree with you there. I know that, you know, there are some people who are like, oh, the bow and the boomerang fulfill a similar function. And in, in some senses, I agree. I feel like the boomerang in is some ways, but not really move set. But just in general, I do love how much more is given to Link in each game. Like Smash 64, he was a very baseline character and had very underpowered tools. Melee started giving him a little bit more and a little more personality to it. Brawl started differentiating him a little more, giving him the Gale boomerang and changing up his look and updating it from Ocarina into uh, Twilight Princess. Smash 4, he really started coming onto his own as a character yeah. and his movements felt better and sharper. And Ultimate took that and made it more akin to the Breath of the Wild design and interestingly enough, took away tools from him. Yeah, I don't the like they took away his stuff. Being yeah. super defined by his hookshot before and now that's no longer at all a part of his game. And, and the funny Stopia thing is that you really feel that claw shot being gone. I would absolutely argue that the loss of the claw shot impacts Link's moveset right now more than the remote bomb adds to it. It's like Link. And I think that that is just so cool and just adding little things like how at first his forward smash was just one hit and then it became the more powerful double hit and how he now has the 0% undamaged laser. And again, <laughs> yeah, that's a nice touch. Are an excellent, excellent tool that are a slightly worse version of C4, but are still great. Exactly, exactly. I, I can keep going. Like he had his ability, he got the ability to uh, to charge his um, uppy when he's on the ground to actually harken back to how it works in all the games he has. I, I wish every 64 veteran was treated like Link. I love that his spin attack is a kill move now. Right? And like not a horribly, horribly impractical one. I mean, yes, it is weird, but like it should be there and it makes sense for what it is. I yeah, guess. I still kind of feel like it should be the forward smash. But yeah, but that. that, that that's just a small, like the smallest of nitpicks among his designs. I, I would honestly replace uh, the boomerang with it and then give him a different mobility tool. Oh, probably that's like better. probably the sailcloth at this point. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For Rivali's Gale into the sailcloth. Yeah. Uh, but but even then, uh, I do feel like it's not perfect. Still, I don't like how many kicks he has. That that's always irritated me. Uh, I don't like it. It's worked, in my opinion, for Twilight Princess Link, because as I said, he's, you know, the more combat ready, the more combat savvy one of the links that we've had. So I think that alone fits that because, you know, especially the way, you know, he uses it against Pit in Palutena's trailer. It's clear that it's like, he, he has a sword, he knows how to use a sword, but he knows that, you know, kick is fairly fast can get opponents off of him. He has zero shield bashes? Yeah, we're talking like about the Smash 64 the characters. shield is in the Zelda series, I feel like he should use it more, especially with Breath of the Wild giving it its reflective functions. I feel like that could be a really cool thing for Link to have, because he can nullify projectiles already. It's fine if he can reflect Oh, dude, them, what if he had a shield bash move and it made the sound effect, the da-da, when it reflected? Shield special, that... That sounds like it would be a perfect shield special move for Link that they could just give him and it would just fit perfectly with his kit. Oh, yes. Oh, that'd be great. Ah, th there, there are other things, like, I feel like it could have been cool if, like, part of um, uh, the quick time with his archery in Breath of the Wild was somewhat carried over. That could have been awesome. Maybe also overpowered, but awesome. Yeah. But even then, like, these are just small small problems that still don't really take away from the feel of the character which i feel is the most important and in my opinion link definitely nails the feel of how he should play i agree i feel that it's taken him a long time to get there like i did not enjoy playing link until smash 4 at all but same. now that yeah, he same. has gone there now that he has been more fully formed and now i miss smash 4 with this Link new so much. And much stronger identity and has been allowed to breathe basically like yeah this is the hero of hyrule 
this is the Hylian champion, and I feel that. And that's that's really great to see. Yeah. Also, they they gave him a better final smash. Like that Triforce Slash was just I would probably do Raru before I do like Breath of the sorry, Tears of the so Kingdom Link. Snipe people with. Yeah, I I do agree. Um I do know that it's basically there because Zelda lost both of her light arrow final smashes, but I mean she also got something that's is much better than ridiculously broken. So you are entirely correct. Uh, yeah. And I do like the effects of it, but now that Zelda has a Triforce final smash, yeah, at no, this, this point this makes sense. At this point, can we just give can we just give? I know we can't talk about this character. It's like the, all the talking points I want to say are for characters that are in the video. But can we just give Zelda like a, a standard special light arrow at this point? Because I think that that's something that should probably exist if you're just you know gonna get rid of it off of her file smash. That's oh something else. Uh, we haven't really been talking about this with any of the other characters, but Link has some of the best costumes. Oh, yeah. Like, maybe before Ultimate. Yeah, I don't know if I inherently agree right now. Like he's got the Fierce Deity Link, he's got the Dark Link, he's got both his champion outfits with colors based on them and his classic outfits. Just, dang, those are cool. He has always had a great amount of variation just based on the tunics and just the slow development. So much is built off of Link and... Zelda had the thought of re-theming her specials around the Dragon Spirits from Tears of the Kingdom. Well, she also uses the Light Arrows in Breath of the Wild, so you could- I think that also fits the design if you- if we actually want to go with, you know, making Zelda the Breath of the Wild slash Tears of the Kingdom Zelda, like, more than likely Gandorf is going to be Tears of the Kingdom Gandorf in the next Smash. His legacy? Not necessarily- And he won't use his sword. And he won't fight like a samurai. And he won't switch weapons. And he won't have, like, an install where he could turn into the Demon King. And he won't turn into a dragon for a smile smash. And he's still going to be Captain Falcon. I can't tell if I made you guys sad or me. Who, who I made sadder with that? You or me? I feel like it's me. ...in his moveset, but you feel it in just all the little attentions and to detail that are given to him and i really do love that no leave fox alone he's perfect the way he is he's literally the greatest smash character ever made and i'm glad that we seem to be sticking with breath of the wild link because i feel like that keeps his possibilities more open yeah you know, you know what you know why link is treated so well it's because he's got other links that can still use those classic abilities yes i think that's why they feel comfortable letting him change yep i completely agree all right so i i have lincoln a tier a, a very I have comfortable him in a tier as well -tier. Uh, yeah. that, that that's yeah, okay cozy in like the middle of it for me yeah sure. that's okay uh, where specifically no, my, yeah. shall we put him because right now we've got uh pac-man pokemon trainer wolf ike villager we can't talk about gandorf yet we're not there <laughs> trust me i want to talk about gandorf I, I, we can't. I think the problems I have with Link annoy me a little bit more, but Wolf is lacking in potential where Link is not. At least I don't Link really see how Wolf like is lacking in potential, especially after his better. ultimate redesign. And yes. Like I have more hope for Link, I guess, than Wolf. I know it's weird to quantify a feeling of yeah, the potential, but yeah, but Pokemon Trainer still just there. Just a. Oh yeah, absolutely. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Like Pokemon Trainer is a complete design that just does that's just falls short of S tier for me. Where Link Link would never get into S tier, but like I'd never move him any lower. I mean he could, but it would take a lot of elbow grease. Yeah, I would never drop him out of A. Alright. Perfect. Ah, uh, next up. Okay, oh boy. Okay, so I've been going into these recordings. Oh, this one's going to be interesting. I'm following my arguments, but this is one that I care okay. so much about that I brought some notes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I have I have a few questions. All right. So, when we were talking about Zero Suit Samus... We talked a lot about actual Samus yesterday. As a matter of fact, I'd argue we talked about actual Samus more than Zero Suit Samus. And... 
before this stream, earlier, like very early in the morning, because I woke up early, bef I wanted to formulate what I think they could do with Samus. So I booted up Metroid Dread and I just ran around for a little bit, jumped around, you know, did some shots. And it clicked. I understand now how you fix Samus. And you can even keep Zero Suit Samus as her own character at the same time. Zero Suit Samus is very much a is very much a tech chasing rushdown fighter whose great whose biggest follow ups are based around um, following up opponents that get off the floor. And she has, you know, really good frame traps with her one frame jab and her really good up B, which is her main kill move and is a great out of shield move and all sorts of stuff like that. Samus, in my opinion, the way you fix Samus is this. You up her speed on the ground she should be, in my opinion, Zero Suit Samus is like a top 10 running character. Samus should be like a top 25 running character, in my opinion. She should be around the same speed, if not a little faster than someone like Bowser. Like, she's fast, but she's not the fastest character in the game. But you definitely get a feel that this character is mobile. Um... You really, really up her air acceleration, her ability to to change her airspeed and air direction on the on dime, because that is something that is very true to Metroid. And while that's something that Zero Suit Samus doesn't have, she doesn't need it because of her, you know, very distinct playstyle that I think represents zero mission and zero mission speed fairly well. Uh you give her a charge shot that she can charge on on her own while she's moving around that can be used to end combos and you know for you basically turn her into less of a of a zoner and you turn her into a skirmisher and a skirmisher is essentially what i like to describe as a footsie zoner hybrid like a character that has a, has good projectile options that mainly work at mid-range, and she basically will dance around opponents from mid-range and use e both weaker shots to interrupt moves and her powerful shots to as like combo enders and stock closers. I think that if I were to make a compromise, the charge shot has to be faster but weaker. I think the missiles arguably could stay the way they are, and it would still work very well for her playstyle. Do they work one for one like they do in, in Metroid? No, but they definitely work closer to the way they work in Metroid than they do in than, uh, than the charge shot does. And I kind of like the delay that they added to the missiles to give to make a the one-two punch of the charge shot way more impactful and easier to set up in Ultimate. And I think a lot of her normals could stay the same. I think that her really good aerials, like all of her aerials are really good. I wouldn't change any of them. Maybe Nair at most, but I think like forward air, back air, down air, up air, I think those should all be the exact same. Maybe add a bit of drag down effect to the up air so you can get more combos out of it. Uh, shield special could be melee counter, which would be fun. I think that that should absolutely just be a natural part of her kit and not just a move that she does. It shouldn't be a normal, it should absolutely be a special in some way, and I think that a shield special works, because it is, it is a very defensive option. Uh, 
Um, and lastly, down special is not morph ball bomb. Down, would you increase your fall speed? Yes, it should be like twice as fast. That's another thing I forgot to mention. Heavily increase her gravity. Because Samus's gravity in modern Metroid games is very heavy. But anyways, I was saying, Down Special is no longer Morph Ball Bomb. Down Special is Morph Ball. It is a mode that allows you to greatly shrink your hitbox, duck under moves, and lay bombs that you can set up traps with, and you can set up multiple ones without exiting the Morph Ball. She already has a perfect replacement in Dread for her role, which is the Light Dash. And it would be faster, and wouldn't be nearly as sluggish as the Morph Ball is as a role in Smash. The Morph Ball should be a utility move with multiple purposes and multiple bomb setups. And the bombs should have the effect to launch you a decent amount of decent amount into the air and not these pitiful little jumps that you get in Smash. I think that 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 this that kind of design would make Samus perfect. But most importantly, it doesn't take away from Zero Suit Samus at all, and she can still be the faster, unique character that she is. And, yeah. You have a powerful run-and-gun character with really good, with, like, really good aerial mobility, really good aerials. Way more setup options. And way more, and way more of a focus on footsies and set play. Because there are, there are glimpses of set play in Samus's current game plan, but they are but they are very very linear, and they mainly come down to missile charge shot, pray your opponent shields one, so that they either drop the shield to get hit by the charge shot, or they block the charge shot too, and they basically get their shield broken. Like that's basically Samus's game plan in Ultimate, and while she's a very good character in Ultimate, comparative wise. I definitely think that there's something... Also, Metroid Armor when she does the Final Smash, yeah. I definitely think that there are ways to fix Samus that work, and you could keep Zero Suit Samus and not have to change her at all. Samus should be the one of the two that has the aerial superiority. Where, while uh, Zero Suit Samus is the one with the grounded superiority, which is why she's faster on the ground. While it'd be really fun to mix in, like, Shine Spark and stuff like that, I don't inherently think that that's overly necessary. Like, a Shine Spark recovery could be a good alternative if they want to get rid of Screw Attack and they put Screw Attack on something else. But if Samus kept Screw Attack, I wouldn't be upset with it, but I definitely think that they sh she should be allowed to, like, jump, like, multiple times with it. Because Screw Attack, when mixed with Space Jump, basically you have endless aerial mobility with that on. So maybe instead of just one jump up, she's allowed to, like, do three. And she can, like, change her aerial momentum for each jump. Something along those lines. All of this just clicked when I, when I just took, like, 15 minutes just playing around with Samus in Metroid Dread. It's like, I got it. I understand what this character needs. And it's possible to keep everything else around her intact, even though Ridley should be fixed. 
I have a feeling that given what was said about Zero Suit Samus, Samus is going to be very low on this tier list. You mentioned the, um, the comparison of Zero Suit Samus to regular Samus, where Zero Suit Samus is this celebration of Metroid's mobility. Regular Samus should be this character that shows just her ridiculously powerful arsenal, this um, one-woman wrecking ball that you get at the end of Metroid Absolutely. games, correct? I don't think yep. that's inherently what she needs to be. To that, I think just, how powerful I think just more of the condensive, really good overall mobility skirmisher with just like, not more powerful projectiles, but more consistently, more, more consistent projectiles. And I think that if you want to build a slower, floatier Samus, I think Dark Samus leans into that way more, and then you could just add unique attacks to that floatier Samus design and have a Dark Samus that feels very true to the character's design. It's really in Metroid when compared to the enemy she's facing. See, that's hard for me to quantify because, yes, you know, she is less durable than them, but she has so many more tricks and she has... She has the fullness of her arsenal, which can take down any foe, I feel. And I and I feel like the feeling of thundering through old areas with the ultimate arsenal that is Samus Aran, complete and packaged, is such a strong feeling that I can't separate myself from it entirely. Yeah, but that's not entirely what Samus tell. is. Uh, I brought some statistics today. Okay. Uh... Just because I was curious, because I couldn't quite quantify this feeling in my head, but now I've got it. Ridley's boss battle in Super Metroid, he can tank 30 super missiles. And that is only because they deal double their normal damage to him. In the final battle against- Well, to be completely honest, a lot of people agree that Ridley takes a little too long to kill. Which is probably why in <laughs> more- Modern games, Ridley is very, very easy to kill. You can kill Ridley in, in Zero Mission in like, I think it's like eight to nine seconds. And he's also, you know, fairly easy to kill in Metroid Fusion. He's a full, like, three-phase boss fight in Samus Returns, but I wouldn't say he's overly difficult or, you know, he's not a sponge in that game either. I don't know. I don't think that, you know. I don't think, like, Ridley should be heavier because he can tank Super Missiles in Super Metroid when every other iteration of Ridley basically is, like, uh, wet toilet paper. Mother Brain, Samus's Hyper Beam, the arguably the most powerful ability she's ever had. How many shots do you think it takes to take her down? What, about 30? 36. Ooh, Three dozen. Okay. Samus's power doesn't come from firepower. She has powerful weapons when compared to the rest of the Smash Brothers cast, but the foes she faces in her games are just as technologically advanced, so she's kind of just, it kind of cancels out. I would argue that Samus's power- Yeah, I know this was before Dread came out, but even then, there are aspects of Samus Returns that I feel could have been taken from this, or, you know, mentioned at the time, because, at this point, Samus Returns is like four years old. Comes from her persistence and her mobility. She's absolutely relentless and adaptable. That lets her enter a battle with literally anything and outlast it. She can, has like, because of some Chozo technology, she can, she can like scavenge health and ammo from her enemies. Taking part in like a cat and mouse kind of game when chipping away at them until she is the one left standing. I absolutely think that uh, the personality of Samus from Samus Returns and Metroid Dread should absolutely in some way, shape, or form be put into Smash. Because Samus's personality in those two games are is it's utterly fantastic how cool Samus is in those games. That's something that I feel like Zero Suit Samus does decently well. <laughs> in fact, looking back at just our conversation with her. I don't think like I did gave her enough credit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, no, you, she was more projected. You were very confident in her shoes, so. I, they, they, they still do annoy me, but like if she was more projectile focused, I think she'd be the perfect interpretation of the character. But Samus as she is, I don't get that feeling at all. 
Like props for props is done. It, they do kind of try to embody this with the with the charge shots, kind of dancing around enemies until you see that opening. But Samus isn't about just looking for that weak point and then just absolutely destroying her opponents with it. No, she's constantly just chipping away at armor, slowly lowering the health bar. Metroid boss battles take forever in some of those games, and especially yes. at the Prime games. Oh yeah. And that's because Samus- Thankfully, this is a problem that has been alleviated in modern Metroid games. Can't- Samus can't purely outgun them, she has to outskill them. I feel like that's an important part of the character. And on top of that, nothing in Samus's moveset works the way it should. Uh, missiles, charge shot, the screw attack- The missiles work fairly close. The only thing is that they aren't, like, you know, freeform move- like, freeform shooting. Which I don't really understand how how you could put that into a game like this. There'd have to be limitations. Bombs are the only exception, and that, that's even that's just a kind of ridiculous concession for how important the morph ball is. Oh, do I hate that bombs don't let you bomb jump properly? Like, yeah, they, they do don't. Really bomb jumps, but like I I can't like let me bomb jump. They're here. Let me do it. Like super missile and shard shot should have traded places this they gotta trash some of her kicks maybe her grounded moves but i think that all of her aerials are perfect the way they are i also think that you know with the inclusion of the melee counter and how way more like physical samus is with her opponents in the more in the more recent metroid games i think that her having a lot of melee attacks fits Pretty well. I think if you put too much projectile focus on Samus, you're going back to Super Metroid, and that's kind of what people want to move away from. Attack is not a multi-hit move. Change up air? I think up air should be the one of the few moves that stays the way it is, except just change its properties a little bit. The sound design on her melee attacks feel weak. Well, I mean, that's not Samus's fault. It's a soup. It's her strongest weapon, arguably, and just I, I, I hate this design so much. I, I, I have at the, I have at the bottom of my notes. I have one more question. Okay. Has playing as Samus in Smash ever made you want to play a Metroid game? The, uh, when I first learned about her in Smash sixty four, if that counts. Yes, when I learned she was a girl. <laughs> I was like, that okay. is cool. Which happened when I was seven, before anyone- What if up air was a tube hit move with the first hit meant to link into the second? That would work. Like a multi-hit move that links into a, like a final like ending hit? That'd be nice. One says anything. But in terms of her, of her gameplay, I'm not going to argue that- I think that Dredd's popularity will help Samus in the next Smash. In s at least some regards. I don't think it's going to solve every problem. I don't think that we're going to get the Samus that I just described. But I definitely feel that there are definitely going to be things about this character that change in the next Smash. Simply thanks to how- How much publicity this series got from what became its best-selling game by a huge margin. Smash has hurt Samus's reputation. I feel like Metroid can stand along on its own, and Nintendo has done that well enough with just some of the stories that she's put her in. Mm -hmm. But I would argue that it has given a, a wholly apathetic advertisement of Metroid gameplay, at least in terms of baseline Samus. Zero Suit Samus is much better. But baseline Samus, I- I still think that she's very good for what she's supposed to represent, and what she- What she's supposed to represent is Super Metroid. Like, let's not be around the bush. She looks like Other M- Met Other M Samus, but she is still very much Super Metroid Samus. And- but the problem is that Super Metroid Samus is not what she should be, nor is it what people currently want. I feel no inspiration to desire to check out the series she is from. I was talking about in the last episode, I have one more F-tier character. Samus is that F-tier character for Oof. me. I have her at the top of it. I can 
I can feel that. I really, really can. Um, I have her placed directly next to Sonic because I feel those two characters struggle I, for the- While Samus has problems, I do not think she's even remotely in the same I need help desperately ballpark as Sonic is. The same reasons, where there is an intrinsic lack of something with them. Uh, Samus has issues where she has references, but they're just bad references. Whereas Sonic has some references, but they're very, very straightforward and very, very focused on one specific interpretation of Sonic. And I feel that neither of them properly represent the gameplay that they're supposed to represent. I don't know. They, they feel weirdly tied at the hip for me. And That's I, fair. I said before, oh yeah, in subspace, Zero Suit Samus frees her power suit and becomes a low tier. And I mean that, you feel so much worse. Well, I said this yesterday, but that's no longer the case in Ultimate. Just playing as Samus than you do as Zero Suit Samus. And it's so obvious the instant that you hit that moment. It, 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 it hurts even more because the the cutscene leading up to that moment is amazing. You just get have Rob's rushing into the room and they all explode as one at once. The Samus music helps very much. Walks out of the smoke. Yes. It's the music made that cutscene. And then it falls completely flat the second gameplay starts. It sure does. Um, <laughs> there are Am I at least allowed to, allowed to say that given what Samus is supposed to be representing, which is Super Metroid, that I actually really like Melee Samus? Because yes, I agree that she's outdated. She should be more in line with modern games. But what about Melee Samus? Am I allowed to say that Melee Samus is a good character? Because I feel that Melee Samus is a good character. In both the way she plays and her design as a whole. She was That was also the only other game more than Ultimate where Samus was a really good character. There are some things with Samus I do like. I feel like even though the charge shot isn't representative of Samus as a character, I feel like I like it significantly more than Mega Man's interpretation of the same move. I feel that keeping that mobility and keeping that kill shot for the right moment is really important to Samus. Uh, could I throw something out here? Sure. Um, uh, uh, small spoilers for like the eventual Samus remake I'm going to make, but... My question is, for the concept they came up with of, you know, the weaker charge shot, do you think that a design like that could get away with using multiple beams? Because I feel that that's something that, if, even if they want to keep the charge shot we have now, that that's probably something that they should do. Like, the more you charge it, it turns into more powerful beams. And like the last version, it's like plasma, which can like pierce and like deal, and the projectile can like take out multiple people at once. Okay, at least if you want to keep charge shot, Sakurai, you could you could go with a design like that. I think that'd be more interesting and more you know faithful to what Sa to what uh, Samus is. I don't know, maybe that's just me. I think she should have that. Uh... In Marvel vs. Capcom 2, where Mega Man has that um, ability to charge and move, yes, I feel like Samus should have that as well, because that is the exact that that is so much of Metroid gameplay revolves around uh, holding that charge and jumping around your opponents, looking for that opening. Yeah, the charge of time can be longer. I agree. That's perfectly fine. Like what it is now, like that's not. A I personally would argue that I think all the charge projectile attacks. You know, charge shot, shadow ball, aura sphere. I think they all need to be revamped in some way to do more than just charge and shoot. And I originally designed it so that like Mewtwo would have the move where if it hits somebody, it like blasts out their back and can like deal damage to more people. Since Shadow Ball has always like been described as a volatile attack. So it's like, oh, this move causes burst damage. So don't stand too close to somebody that might get hit by this move, or you'll take damage too. 
But now that I'm thinking about it, that could also work very well for Samus if you, you know, give her plasma beam. A charge shot. That is that is so much more powerful than what the charge shot is. Charge shot is what you use when you run out of missiles. Yes. I agree, but I want Mega Man to have that too. It's so important. I want both of them to have He has it already. Well, actually, no. Like he could use that with the Mega Buster. And how Mega Man and Samus play. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, I could see th that. Another point of comparison, actually, we have we have other Metroidvania characters in here in the form of the Belmonts. Yeah. And I feel like the Belmonts like really show off. Just I wanted to play Castlevania after playing. I mean, that's kind of unfair because uh, this Samus is based on a, on a design for Samus that came around before that genre was even a thing. Yeah, I know technically Symphony of the Night was before Smash 64, but it was still, for what it is, fairly unrefined. It was still mostly Metroid that was doing this. The Belmonts in Smash Brothers. I feel like Samus should be like, I want to see like- I'm pretty sure also Metroidvania was not a terminology when Super Metroid was, you know, brand new. The chic of the Belmonts just- a much faster, much weaker version. Like, B Belmont's projectiles are insanely strong. I feel like Sam should be more... She should revolve around chip damage. Around outlasting her opponents. Because Samus really just goes for that heavy finisher like that. This is the... Like, so many games don't have like... Okay, I'm going to... I'm not going to say anything about that. Because I, as I know that this is before Dread. But Samus Returns did exist by this point, And that was a thing in Samus Returns... They would be accentuated in dread where you know she does go for those finishers and she looks really cool when she does them those cinematic finishers like they've started doing it with other m but i don't i don't i don't like other m i, I like that feeling of just after a long hard battle the, the boss falls and samus is still there beaten bruised but still alive that is yeah i know that but part of metroid to me metroid why he's so badass castlevania wasn't else playing was like fun. metroid and when super just, metroid was a thing i don't get that yeah i don't know they really should change her file smash to adam malkovich <laughs> pushing her out of the way so that the bottle ship can crash into the stage and then she can cry as the stage is on fire <laughs> I was about to complain about No, this I isn't necessary. She has a really cool personality now. <laughs> well, I'm glad to please. Um She doesn't need that anymore. She speaks bird and she screams. It's amazing that this character in Dread has one line of dialogue, technically two. And it's just a language of another species and just screaming <laughs> and you know what it's awesome let samus scream when she kills up when she kills like pikachu and smash brothers I have one more argument about why she should be an F tier. Okay, okay, let me hear it. Samus drags down Dark Samus with her. Oh, 100%. Like, not only is she damaging her own reputation, people are just- I disagree, if only for the fact that if they really tried, they could have easily made Dark Samus work. But, you know, they, they went- They went kind of in. The animations and all that are good, but- the, a lot of the stuff she shares with Samus should be way more different. I I really like her over-the-top missile launch animation that looks like a JoJo villain. I mean, that's really cool. Like, there are glimpses of Dark Samus that absolutely work in her favor. And I think that she fits the floatier playstyle that Samus currently has in Smash more than Samus herself. But... Yeah, uh, if they if they even remotely tried with her as much as they did with Ken, she'd probably be a really cool interpretation of Dark Samus while still feeling like an echo of Samus. But they didn't do that, sadly. I think Dark Samus is just Samus, but creepy. Dark Samus could, be, of all the Echo Fighters, Dark Samus is the one that I feel is the most lacking in potential. 
because there was so much you could have done with the Metroid Prime. Just like having corruption mechanics, duplicating yourself. Just, oh, it just, it just, it. Even it then, yeah, they could have just, you know, had stuff like that. I don't know about a corruption mechanic. That would have been, you know, interesting if she wasn't attached to a character. I, I don't think that Echo Fire should have tricky mechanics like that. That's some, unless it's something that's similar to the mechanic of the character they're attached to. And uh, none of the characters that have Echo Fighters have mechanics like that. But uh, yeah, like using the, the, the ability to like split yourself in two, which she uses for her victory animation and nothing else. Uh, yeah, I think that, that works really well. You should be in the game. Even for, if it was like for like a down smash or something like that. Or like the second Dark Samus comes in and beats you up when she grabs you. I don't know. You could have made it work and still make her feel like an Echo Fighter. Makes me so upset that she was so much better as an assist trophy than at... Honestly, Camp, there was talk about the, the me Gunner being a better Samus than Samus. Why didn't they give her the the me gunner forward smash and up air? That would be similar to her rapid fire as an assist trophy in Smash 4. Guys, the stuff is right there. You could have used it. I mean... And it probably would have looked way less janky than Krom does. As a what? playable character? Oh, yeah. I, I don't know if I hate Dark Samus more than Daisy. Because, holy crap, you literally have nothing other than effects with Daisy. And yeah, Dark Daisy's Samus, like a nothing. She should have been a costume. Animations and differences in jumping. I, I feel like, with, at least with Daisy, like, that design kind of feels like an amalgamate of the two princesses in the first place. So it doesn't... It still hurts, but not as much. No, I, I Whereas do agree. Dark Samus is just stuck with a bad design because Samus is stuck with a bad design. Oh, a hundred percent. But it feels like the difference between, well, you gave it a little bit of thought versus <laughs> you didn't even try. In fact, you actively <laughs> anti-tried. <laughs> oh yeah, they like patched out with some of the differences. You that was actively wow. took your effort away. <laughs> Wait, what changes did they patch so out? I'm fine with Samus and F tier. Yes. I, I can understand it. Like you can you can take the W on that one. You comparing her to Mega Man specifically, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, no, I, that was a I thing? feel you there. I feel that and I don't have as deep of a connection to Metroid as I do to Mega Man. But Oh, I Daisy had Daisy, Smash 4 turnups. Myself say, hey, she's okay and you go, no. I will let you have <laughs> this one. Uh in terms of where she's placed in well, F tier I do have her at the top. Guess that just goes to show how useless Daisy is as a character, and I've never understood why people like that character. To be honest with you, I'll put her under Little Mac, but that's what I was thinking. I don't want to go any lower than Wario because I know just the ire. Just Samus hasn't ruined her character. It just has has done such exceptionally poor marketing that I I feel like Metroid would be a more popular franchise than it is now if Samus played better in Super Smash Brothers. I genuinely believe that. I agree with that. Also, if she brought better stages with her, just like, why are there so many Norfairs? It's it's well, it's all Norfairs, rising they're lava. Stars. Nobody likes those stages. <laughs> well, yeah. the person who's saying, well, do you want rising lava or do you want Cray T posing in the background and making your stage spin? while you play on the giant meat cube in the center of the screen. I think I'd rather fight- I think I'd rather fight on a stage with the rising lava, even though, you know, I only play on these stages in Omega mode. Or Battlefield mode. I'd rather play with that than have Kraid literally come in and say, Hey bro, you like the stage? Uh, I'm gonna turn a little bit to the right. <laughs> My kingdom for a Fendrana drift stage. I guarantee you, 
the next Metroid stage from Metroid Dread will be better because there's nowhere in Metroid in Metroid Dread that fits the rising lava. The only way they could do it worse is if they put it in the water area <laughs> and you have to and like half of it is covered in water. So I feel you're guaranteed to get a good stage out of Metroid Dread. At least better than what we have now. I personally kind of wish they brought back the Planet Zebus from Smash 64. Yes, I know that's similar to Brainstar, but I liked its visual design and I like that song a lot, even though it's on other stages. I think that stage was just really cool. That I like the stage, you're incorrect. Look at yourself in the mirror, and then you'll see Brinstar behind you, and it's slowly dissolving away. And you'll go, huh, I guess I never really liked it. Oh, yeah, let, let's show up. I know it's not lava, it's acid, but they, they work the exact same way. Of the Metroid Prime games, here's Frigate Orpheon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ugh. Okay, okay. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm tired from Samus. Let. Let, tell me about Yoshi. How do you feel about Yoshi? Oh, it's Yoshi. Okay. Um, hmm. I think this is like one of the few characters in the game that I, I don't I don't know what to say because Yoshi is so very much a okay, nothing's wrong with him, but he doesn't really do anything special character that he's just there. And uh yeah, he's Yoshi. He's he's baby's first platform fighting game character, and he's he's good. He's he's kind of fun sometimes. He he he's expressive. He does Yoshi stuff. He I can't talk about Yoshi for twenty minutes. There there's there's nothing about Yoshi that's worth talking about as a character. He's just Yoshi's fine. Leave him alone. He's good. They gave him some new moves in Smash Ultimate. He feels like a way more complete character than he did in the past. And I feel that this is a character that has gotten better over time. And arguably... Kind of was good in almost every game except for Brawl. Like... It's amazing looking back how Yoshi... If we want to talk about something impressive with Yoshi, just how... How much people underestimated him in Melee, and how Amsa basically proved to the world that Yoshi is good, as he won tournaments with Yoshi, and Yoshi is now one of the few characters in, in Melee that has a tournament win? That's nuts. The fact that people are still learning about Melee to this day is nuts. And that's cool. But we're not talking about Melee Yoshi. We're talking about Ultimate Yoshi. Ultimate Yoshi is very vanilla okay. He's good. He's like a top 20 character. He's, there's nothing inherently wrong with him. I don't know what you would add to him. He's just there. You play him sometimes. He's easy to use. People like to make memes about how He's so easy to use, but no, he, there's so much to him, but nobody wants to play him because he's so easy and boring. Like, it, it, it's Yoshi. <laughs> Nobody's going to come around and be like, I fucking hate Yoshi. <laughs> How can you not like a character with that smile? Yoshi's like an A or a B. He, he, he's, he's good. He, he's experimental. I like his jump. It's, uh... Yeah, it's just Yoshi. How to describe No, Yoshi. I slightly dislike Yoshi. So there was a time in wrestling where... But you don't entirely dislike him. So it doesn't count. Where uh, John Cena and I believe it was Batista were in the Royal Rumble, and they, they eliminated themselves at the same time. 
and Vince McMahon was very, very upset. So he stormed the ring and he got into the ring, this angry, buff 70 year old man, and he blew out both of his quads on national television. So he started screaming at both of them like a little baby on his butt to restart the match and give the people an actual damn show. And I'm telling you this because I have nothing to say about Yoshi. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> Here you fucking hit the nail on the head. What what you just said, while it has no correlation to Yoshi, was far more interesting than anything I could say about Yoshi. <laughs> like Yeah, I, I I feel that though. Yeah. Like Yoshi is the most yeah, he yeah, he's there. Character in the entire roster. How does he play? I mean, he plays okay. What he's does okay. he do? He's yeah. He does, you know, a regular character thing. He's fun. He's got a weird jump, I guess. He's uh, the nice... If I can say anything, he's the nice medium that I think that Pure is looking for in the Donkey Kong characters, where he has things that where he fights like a dinosaur, but not like a dinosaur at the exact same time. If anything, that's something I can say about Yoshi. He nails the animalistic fighter better than a lot of characters in Smash, and Pokemon don't count because Pokemon are more characters and animals, and they've been like that since the since the series' inception. Uh, what does he bring for a series? He turns you into an egg. Like, everything that Yoshi does, he does okay. He also has a very cool shield. And I kind of wish the more characters had, like, unique shields like Yoshi does. Okay, that's it. I have nothing else to say about Yoshi. And another character already does better. Uh, like when you think of a big butt ground pound, you think of Bowser. When you think of someone eating you, you think of Kirby. Yoshi arguably does it better than Kirby does. When you think of a rolling into a ball move, you think of Sonic or Jigglypuff. When you think he doesn't of roll into a ball, he turns into an egg. Aerials where he sticks out his foot, you think of Mario. Hell, you think of Mario for a lot of his animations. The only things he really has unique about him are his... They has super armor on his second jump, which I know the cool. big floaty jumps in the case of Ness and Mewtwo. And you might I like his down first, air. But, you know, this is fair. And Egg Toss, which is so different from how it controls in Yoshi's Island that it barely feels like the same move. It feels like a very, very token reference with Yoshi's story effects. Yoshi yeah. is a character who just exists for me. Yeah. He's not bad in He's, any way. He was even like that in Smash 64. <laughs> in a game with 12 characters, let alone one that has over 80. He was just a character that exists. And he's there. He, he references his series okay. I yeah, like he's Super fine. Dragon more than Yoshi Stampede, I'll admit, because I like that that's a full reference to Super Mario World. That's a really I like the kind melee of, reference. I love it. It's but nice. Yeah. Uh, Yoshi's there. And he was the most interesting when he was making fun upsets in Melee because of how weird his second jump was. And as the character roster gets more fleshed out around him, he becomes more and more kind of forgettable. Like you've heard for years how much potential Yoshi has and how no one wants to explore that because he ends Yoshi. Yeah. But I mean, that's just a meme. People have tried. They just didn't find very much. And ultimate people just say like, oh yeah, he's like a top 20 character. He's really good. We don't really have anything else to say. He, he has very clear upsides and very clear downsides. Most people know how to fight Yoshi, but he's versatile enough for you to possibly get around his weaknesses. Just go play a character, have fun, just Yoshi. I, I, I remember when that big rework of him in Smash 4, when all, he was the only one of those veterans that wasn't revealed, people were just wondering, oh, what are they doing to Yoshi? And Sakura revealed the ultimate truth of that now he stands upright. That's literally it. The Ganondorf oh, scar of Yoshi's character no, development. It sounds like I would be really upset about. But at least Yoshi was actually true to his character from the beginning, unlike Ganondorf. Out that. I, I I do want to give him a little bit of credit. I like how much he shares with Mario. I feel like that's a fun parallel between the partnership of the two characters. Like the forward the forward era in particular. 
I would agree I like that if that. there wasn't two other characters and a little bit of Wario that share the same features as Mario. Uh, this is true, but also if there's going to be a character in a Nintendo Cross. Yeah, but you could argue that Yoshi's I doing it because, you know, he's he saw Mario do it and he just wants to be like Mario. You could argue that that Mario trained this Yoshi how to fight. I know he's talking about Luigi when he mentions other characters that fight like Mario, and I don't think that... Luigi goes in his own direction enough. We'll get to him later on, but... Yeah, this is... I would argue that this is just a Yoshi that Mario taught how to fight. It should be Mario, and not, like, say, Marth. Cough, cough. <clears throat> I mean, yes. Uh, I do like his down air. Okay, yeah, Yoshi's yeah, down air is fantastic. Yeah, funny flutter. That's good. That's good. That is that. That's one move. Yeah, home uh, run contest superstar. <laughs> yep. Yeah, no, I I can't add much to him, and I don't play enough of the Yoshi games to know how he could be better. Actually, no, I know how he could be better. I wish his throw involved putting his opponents in eggs and tossing the eggs. That would be amazing. That could have yeah. so many weird setups. Uh, takes away from his standard case, special. You could just literally serve up a volleyball for your opponents to spike. That'd be so much fun. You want to know whose specials are very, very uh, similar to Yoshi's and how they should function? Or at least how the general mechanic of egg should function? Olimar. Uh, who's? Uh, oh. Like, uh, maybe. I, I know. But, like, have the eggs and be able to throw them. Make eggs, throw eggs. It's the name of the first level of the game. He should have a stock of disposable projectiles. That the question is, how does he get those disposable projectiles? Because if they're finite, if we're having a Wonder Wing situation, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to say no on that one, Chief. It's Yoshi. This is true. This is true. Like, there's something salvageable there, and the the fact that his eggs are just these weak little blips when so Oh, they're not weak. They're, they're very, very useful for what they're supposed to be. And they got even better in Ultimate because they bounce. And don't immediately break when they hit the floor. So much of Yoshi's Island is carried by how you ricochet your eggs and how much fun it is to bounce off eggs and figure out how to combo them is so disappointing. But again, what's here is fine? Yeah, I I, I can't, like, bash on Yoshi can't, also can't, you know, make his own eggs like, other than eating an opponent. And you can't put an opponent in an egg indefinitely. You kind of... They need to be able to get back onto the stage and, you know, making an egg after eating an opponent and the opponent's not on the egg doesn't make any sense. So in the context of Smash and translating it to a fighting game, I think they did what they, the most they could do with it. On him, I just, he has, he has, I almost feel similar to, similar to him as I do me Swordfighter, but Yoshi is a good design, if that makes any sense. I, I, just, yeah. I just, I don't care. There's nothing about him to care about. Well, his animations are, decent he's cute i mean that'd be interesting yeah, potted plant but uh it'd also be very situational because not every character has projectiles Put it over yeah he's he's like one of the animals that gets translated well he doesn't make weird dinosaur growls it's still yoshi yoshi oh my gosh i'm just i'm just picturing him with like jurassic park velociraptor <laughs> sound effects <laughs> we've given yoshi but the thing though bacon is that he doesn't lay eggs normally in those games unless he eats something in the, the Yoshi's Island games I think even in Yoshi's story he gets them from like egg boxes that you like jump into and the more you hit the every time you hit one you get an egg and it's kind of separated from Yoshi's natural abilities and it would look kind of weird in a fighting game yeah, there's no natural way to translate getting a ton of eggs in Smash. So just, you know, tossing one. You get the one from eating your opponent, just like, you know, you eat one enemy in Yoshi's, Yoshi's Island, you get one egg. 
I think that they they did what they could. There really isn't much you could do. Angry eyes. Yeah. I don't know. I have him in C tier, but I just I don't know how I feel about him. So I have him at the very bottom of B tier because that's a good spot. I, I don't have enough problems with him at he's, to feel yeah. He's just mixed he's Yoshi. Up. Oh, I do. We like Yoshi. I don't think that yeah, any of his he's, specials he's, are what they could be. He's funny. That, that's true. Like, he's the, adorable, the but the fact that some of his movies he gets angry sometimes. And like, name a his special. Final Smash is a nice melee reference, but uh, yeah, he's just he's just there. But I'm, it's not coming to my head. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I think I think you got me. Yep. Uh, egg throw. I I don't like it as a recovery move at all. I mean, I it's not like a recovery move. It's a projectile. Options. I feel like, I feel like him having multiple jumps that get weaker is so much more in character for Yoshi than having more in character. But the but the super heavy arm, heavily armored floor jump works better for a fighting game. One super super big jump, and I know that's been his only defining trait through the Smash series, and I feel like he's kind of just gotten stuck with it. But I'd really rather have the several flutters. Like, he doesn't feel like Yoshi's Island Yoshi. He feels like the idea of Yoshi. Well, I'd argue he's closer to Yoshi's story Yoshi, if anything. As sort of like this power up to your jump. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, here, here's an interesting comparison. Like, I've never wanted to play Yoshi games. Like, just... I, I have always... I've never seen Yoshi as being his own series in Smash Brothers, And I think that's why. <laughs> Oh, dude, play Yoshi's Island. It's a good Remember when they tried to advertise Yoshi's New Island through Yoshi's inclusion in Smash 4? Holy shit, what a bad idea that was. Good game. I, I, I believe it, but you wouldn't know that when looking at him in Smash Brothers. All right, that, that brings him down to Z for me. They need to give him a kazoo attack. It would fit very well with the music direction of his series. All right. All right, that's fair enough. Uh, where in C tier specifically? List them. Alrighty. We got uh, at the top going down Ryu, Ken, Lucas, Rosalina, and Luma. Zero Suit Samus, who on. After that Samus conversation, I kind of want to move Zero Suit Samus up a bit. Alright, we'll, we'll, re we'll reflect uh, at the end. Alright. And then uh, Bayonetta, Me Brawler, Shulk, Me Gunner. Honestly, I kind of want to put him next to the Mies. I'm yeah. feeling that kind of just apathy of just like you could be so much better. Yeah, I. I don't even I know agree. if that's even true. He could be so much better. Uh, he's gotten two really good <laughs> final smashes. You, you, at you least. don't have so much to nice. work with it's with true. Yoshi. Sold the character, so I'd like to put him. The only thing you could do is give him a taunt where he gets high off of fuzzies. But uh, I don't think you would be able to get away with that in a, a kid-friendly game like Smash. Above. The Mies? Yeah, I think so. But, like, he's not beating Bayonetta. Ba yeah. Bayonetta is le missing potential. Poor Shulk. She does, she does well. Yoshi's just bland. Yep. I'm fine with that. Uh, also, uh, we didn't rank Dark Samus. Like, we discussed oh, uh, her and then... Shoot. Uh, Probably next I, to I regular Samus. Next to Samus. Because I feel like it kind of just botches... Re oh, and also for people that are only watching this uh, audio-wise, we never ranked Ike properly in the last episode either. Yep, but he's right above Villager. Yeah, just, okay. just, just for establishing that. Yeah. Hi, Corin. I see. I, I see you spinning in the bottom Sims right corner. It's not her fault. Yeah. Okay. If that makes any sense. Y yeah. No, that's that's fine. That's fine. Still a failure though. Yes, absolutely still a failure. Yep. Okay. Cool. Okay. Uh, do we have anything else to say about Yoshi? Uh, one There's time no. Vince McMahon rejected a script <laughs> because uh, he. Big Show was supposed to eat a burrito that ended Get Rare better Yoshi game. music? Rare. The composers need to make better music for there to be better Yoshi music. It's going to give him diarrhea, and Vince McMahon rejected it, not because of the diarrhea being horribly unfunny, but he did not know what a burrito was, and did not think his audience would know. He was then informed by his staff what the actual name of the meat wraps he had been consuming for lunch every day for the past week were. Thank you for sharing that information. Yeah. You know what? I'll tell you something you could do to fix Yoshi. Give him a Boshi costume in the next Smash because of Super Mario RPG coming out.
like an official one. I'm pretty sure that makes some people happy. Oh, uh, uh, goodbye, Yoshi. Let, let's let's talk about a ge better character now. Oh, it's Kirby. Ugh, I love Kirby. Like, I don't think that there's a character who has. This is also weirdly enough a character that I don't know what to say because I think that there's not a single soul on the face of the earth that would say that Kirby's not like an S tier. Like it's Kirby. He is the reason that this entire game exists. This entire game's systems are built off of his old game systems. Kirby is... Kirby. And he is perfect the way he is. I do not think he needs more references, but holy shit, can we please, for the love of God, either change his side special and give him like maybe you could give him hammer on his forward smash but i don't think you should go overboard with with uh with uh abilities i think that at most you should try to limit it as much as possible like maybe he could use mirror for a down smash That'd be cool. Forward smash could be hammer. Like the smash attacks, I feel you could put co you could put copy abilities on and it would work. And I'm mainly saying hammer because I fucking hate Kirby's hammer. Post Smash Four. Kirby's hammer in Brawl was good. I liked Kirby's hammer in Brawl. It was a good move, and the aerial version was a really good kill confirm. Kirby's hammer in Smash 4 and Ultimate is one of the worst moves in the entire game. And I do not understand why Kirby has it, because it's literally a copy of a move that King Deity does, but Kirby does it worse because he has less range. Hammer used to work, but it doesn't anymore has benefited from being in smash as much as kirby well there are there are a couple but kirby is just i've never met a person who has just picked up the game of super smash brothers and not flocked to kirby like right this is the character he's, that everyone he's kirby. plays he's not good. because he's a i really like they gave him back because they gave him back his melee dash attack fun which he like, honestly should have never lost jump, so it's so easy to recover Everyone's first kill move is stone every single time without <laughs> fail. That's your first step. And when someone learns how to shield, you're like, oh, how did you do that? I, I think use the that they should just make, they should give him the full final cutter combo on the ground. And that final cutter should be able to spike and it would be a much better move. But as it is, the fact that, you know, Regardless, if you have them in the perfect spot to spike them, it will never spike them because it has a grounded hitbox that's, that moves horizontally outwards. It's, uh, it's very annoying, and I hate it. Kirby is a very good design, but Kirby is not a very good character. At least not since the original Smash 64, where he was the second best character in the game behind Pikachu, who was, you know... Even more broken than he was. Because a majority of changes I would give to Kirby would be make him a better character. Like, gameplay-wise. Like, 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 you know. That he feels better to play. Because I don't know if I inherently would call him super good to play. He's fun. But there are definitely aspects of his game plan that could be better. But I can't say that he's anything less than an S tier. He's just, he's just, he's Kirby. He gets to use the powers of all the other characters in the game. And he gets all these silly hats and all sorts of stuff like that. He gets like, like when he absorbs Snake, he gets a goatee. It's really funny. Or he gets like really big shaggy eyebrows when he absorbs like Bowser or Ryu. And it's, 
and he says the attacks of all the people that he copies. So he gets to say like Hadouken and all sorts of other stuff from other characters. And it's really cool and funny and I like it. Yeah, he needs buffs rather than changes. I, I, it's very hard for me to believe that there are people out there that would genuinely look at Kirby and say that he's not like a top 10 design in this game. Hockey move anymore. Just, he works so well in the Smash framework, and it's just, I feel like... Mo I'd argue that if he didn't work, that Smash as a whole wouldn't work, because he is the framework. It's not that Kirby works well within the framework, it's that he literally is the framework of Smash. Oh, a large amount of his popularity and his recognizability comes from Smash. Like, Yeah, I honestly believe that if you hate Kirby, you're a contrarian. Much like people that would hate characters like Captain Falcon. If you if you put Captain Falcon in like a B tier, you're a contrarian who's just looking for attention, in my honest opinion. Kirby games sell pretty okay, but not incredibly well. But I feel like Kirby is one of Nintendo's. You're right. I love Kirby going beep when he uses the laser ability from Rob. It's adorable. And uh, you know. He says PK Flash better than Ness does. He, he enunciates the word better than Ness does, or at least he used to before Ness actually got re voiced, like he got new lines in Smash 4, which is what. Of all the characters that I expected to get revoiced in Smash 4, Ness was definitely not one of them. A list, not franchises, but characters, especially in marketing. And I think Smash yes. sells him to just an utterly exceptional degree. I mean, and it's it hard to not sell Kirby. Kirby. I mean, it's Kirby. Everybody guy. loves Kirby. Everyone he appeals to everybody. The little guy. You remember when we he, angry? He's the main character of World of Lights. Remember when Ness and Kirby had the same VA? Yeah, the it's noticeable. Like, he's good that also explains how Kirby got new lines in Smash 4 as well. And then he did, and everyone was like, yeah, he did the thing! Even though it's the most <laughs> obvious joke in the world, but they're still like, yeah, it's Kirby, though. Yeah, 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 there's always that joy of seeing Kirby in a trailer. Like, just the Min Min trailer, you have to just have him sitting next to Captain Falcon. You know what's going to happen. It's like, oh, obviously he's just going to inhale it. Just, oh, yeah, I love that trailer. Like you know, the trailer where they got Captain Falcon's on. voice actor back to literally sound like he's slurping noodles. And that's all they did. <laughs> I hope it got paid really well. Understand. Yes. I feel like the tremendous amount of effort that goes in- Inhale should be an anti-projectile move, but it gives his opponents a free hit. Here's the problem. What you're describing is King Deity's inhale, because that's what his inhale does. The focus of Kirby's inhale is definitely on the copy abilities more than anything else. While I agree with you that that should absolutely be the case, and probably would be something nice, you know, that's something that they should give from DD, not his awful fucking jet hammer. I can definitely see why he doesn't have it. To his copy abilities is also something to be commended. And something that yes. we take for granted until we hear Kirby inhale Terry and go, Power away. Fuck you. <laughs> and then we go, I love Kirby. I think it speaks a lot to Kirby's design when one of the things that people are most excited to see when a new character is revealed is what hat Kirby is going to have now. Block Kirby. Yes. Be it just a point out his own Kazooie or becoming a block like Minecraft or having Sephiroth's hair. Yes. The the I think my favorite Kirby hat is definitely the Steve one because it it it, it looks perfect. They even like stylized his face not to look exactly like he does regularly, but he looks like if Kirby's face was stylized to fit in Minecraft, and it's great. 
fact that that exists at all is wonderful. He is such a delight and little details like he gets angry eyebrows when he turns into Bowser or just the <laughs> entire design of Game & Watch Kirby is just... Ugh. He gets pale when he inhales We Fit Trainer. Yep. Uh, his expression when he gets Pac-Man. He gets a goatee <laughs> when he eats Snake. Yes. Ugh. Just taping a me like stamp to his forehead when he inhales a me. He does a freaking spy from Team Fortress 2 thing with it. I love it. <laughs> right? Oh, he's such a wonderful character. He gets and a gun. I see a lot of people. And Bayonetta and Joker. And I just don't get it. Because, like, I, I understand, like, wanting. Kirby can do a lot of things. Yeah. Like, that's, yeah, that's the point of Kirby. He eats anything and he can do that. Yeah. But, but what he has now works so well. It really, really does. I know that a lot of people do want, what if all of his references were, or all of his moves were copy abilities? No. And I can see that. I can feel that. Look, because someone actually did that as a mod in Rivals of Aether. It was one of the first mods, like first big mods for Rivals of Aether. And for what it is, it works it works pretty damn well, and I actually do like that Kirby iteration a lot. But Kirby and Smash is so much more, and I would not trade him for that in for that whatsoever. Kirby is very basic and limited in his initial skill set, but I feel like that's what makes him important, and why it's important to keep him at such a simple skill set. Like, would I like it if maybe they changed up the moves sometimes in games? Yeah. Do I think that Hammer Flip is particularly good? No. I would like that move changed for a better one. Yeah. But what we That's the only have, one I could think of that should change. Just him having all of his suplex throws is great. The fact that they can't decide if they want his yo-yo head spin or his fireball as his dash attack. I like both of those. They're never getting rid of stone. Everyone loves stone until they realize that they can't use it properly. <laughs> and just do I feel like at the upper end of the game, Kirby is lacking as a fighting game character? Yeah, to some extent. I feel like just the stubbiness of when everyone knows how to actually play the game does hold him back more than his the utterly tremendous amount well the sad thing is that he didn't used to be as stubby as he is he got more stubby as the years went on brawl and melee kirby was way less stubby than smash 4 kirby simply because they made his feet smaller power that you feel in the kirby games but he's a character that i feel like introducing advanced text to is wrong on the sole purpose that nah kirby should be simple not because his games are simple, but because he's simple. He's yeah. super, super straightforward as he's a, a ball with eyes. And everything is expressed and super straightforwardly. Shoes, and it works feet. well. I don't know what, I what they're it, supposed to be. The fact that his down tilt is not they're just your bare feet or shoes. They look more like shoes. Really yes. I also feel like he should have the little puff of air in that when he's jumping. Yeah, I, I do agree there. Yeah. Uh, but that's it. Yeah. It, it, it does feel weird that he doesn't have those staple abilities, but Kirby's great. He's just great. He's Kirby. Yeah, it's Kirby. He's lovely. Uh, he, it's weird. Like, a lot of these characters we're talking about, I wouldn't want them changed, but I desperately want custom moves from them. Yes. Because, like, I, I, I still want Kirby to have, like, his like his kicks and stuff. Like, I feel, I feel like he works as a baseline fighter, but, like, there's so many things that could replace those power-up abilities, and I feel like just being able to cycle them around would be such a great yeah, way Yeah, I don't know why Kirby didn't get, like, a ton of unique I, I like spe like specials or custom moves in Smash 4. Kirby are those out of personal taste for what they love from the Kirby series, rather than any sort of disdain for his regular moveset. Agreed, agreed. Uh, I have Kirby in A tier. What about you? I also have Kirby in A tier. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's he's, okay. He's very close to S talking about it right now. Like, I, I didn't think about how much comes out of him from just his simplicity and the joy of that. But he really is, like, one of the most important characters to Smash Brothers because of how he plays and because of who he is. Yeah. It, it's, it's, I, I kind of feel the same way about him as Pac-Man. I don't know how to order them. 
because Pac-Man is again so 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 great but he's missing like a couple of those staple moves that you just look at them and it's like why 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 don't you have that that's so simple that's easy like I don't know. Who, who do you value more Kirby or Pac-Man I mean, I mean, personally, Kirby. on like a spiritual level, like Kirby's I, I, I'm, Kirby's like my soul. That, yes, Kirby's Kirby's my heart. He's my dream. He's my dark. He's my other form of matter. <laughs> like, I think I Miracle respect matter the creativity of Pac-Man a little bit more than the simplicity of Kirby. But I say that saying that Kirby is utterly delightful. I could get behind that. Yeah. Yeah. Just a mutual agreement that I definitely like Kirby more. Kirby's oh, Kirby's yeah. one of my favorite characters on this entire roster. Oh, 100%. Like, God. Oh, man. But Pac-Man is just barely out of S tier. Like, I, it, if, if I were to put a character above Pac-Man, I just want to move both of them up into S tier. Agreed in entirety. But better than Pokemon Trainer. Like, just oh, yeah. Absolutely. agreeing on his placement. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, Final Smash could be better, I think. Yeah, yeah. But Ultra Sword is just. I'm glad that eh. it's well, not a superstar reference anymore. It works because, because of Deluxe, I guess. Real folks. It's probably going to stay crap. that because I'm of glad Deluxe. It's a Kumazaki era Kirby game being referenced. But I'd like like an actual star power, please. Anything yeah, that actually ends his game. Star. Yeah, yeah. I know the warp star is an item, but maybe it shouldn't be. Yeah. Hmm. Like Kirby games, like there's there's some insane stuff at the end of those games. That's that Final Smash feels a bit tame. Yeah. Also, also, I'm I'm not saying he's not in A tier, not S tier because of this, but I do just the fact that one era of Kirby is oh, so about halfway through favored, already. It's only been three hours. Does just no. leave that little bit probably going to be my head that's just probably going to be the shortest stream today. Yeah. It's, it's a small thing. Because again, they're just like the last two characters and like, oh yeah, they're good. They're good. Love yeah, Kirby. No, it's, it's, no it's she's the good. Animosity yeah. Held for Zero Suit Samus, but less, and it hasn't been fixed. Yep. Straight up. Yep. But that made me feel yeah. good at least. Kirby's yeah, always fun. Kirby, Kirby's just, Kirby's just Kirby's just friendly. Yes. Yeah, he he okay, is. And, uh, he's shaped like a friend. A friend, actually of good characters. Oh, we already talked a lot about like the spaces in general in the last episode and I feel the same. Oh boy, way do I get Fox. do I get to gush I'm about Fox? Up say I think Fox is the best spacey. Fox, in my opinion, my heart of hearts. Fox is the greatest smash character ever designed. I better have a whole essay ready. I feel like I've already said most of what I would what I would have said. There is no character in Smash that utilizes the fact that he is in a freeform moving fighting game better than Fox. His speed, his jump height, his attack speed, his gravity, it all feels perfectly tailored to work in a freeform moving environment. And Fox is one of the few characters in Smash that I feel that if you moved him to a different type of fighting game, you would absolutely lose something very important to the character. And I think that this has been accentuated by the fact that Fox has been extremely good in every single Smash game and has basically gotten very... Very few changes. Some stuff got changed when the mechanics of the game changed. Like, his Fox Illusion no longer goes through shields and ultimate. People thought that that was going to cripple the character. And guess what? Fox is not only a better character in Smash Ultimate than he was in 4, but it's one of his highest tier placements since Melee. I also remember that a lot of people thought Little Mac was going to be good when demos were out, and yeah, he looked promising, but yeah, that's a different story. Fox is legitimately platform fighting game perfection. And every aspect of his character from Star Fox is also perfectly shown in his moveset. He is very level he's the very level-headed and brave leader of his team 
He is the one that gets the job done. And he is a daredevil. He knows he... It's so hard to put into words just how much positivity I have to say about this character. Yeah, give that to Crystal. Let Crystal use the adventure staff. I think there's a reason why Fox is, without a doubt, next to maybe Captain Falcon, the most iconic character in Smash Brothers history. Like, I know people love Kirby. Captain Falcon is always really hype. But Fox is the one that I think if you asked the common person, like, that knows about Smash, but, like, may not, you know, be super into it, they're more than likely going to mention Fox in some way, shape, or form. Because he's, he's, he's just perfect. People know Fox from Smash Brothers more than his own series. And Fox is a byproduct of the designers literally just being allowed to go and do what they want because the source material doesn't, you know, translate super well to a fighting game. But the funny thing is that in doing so, they made a character that perfectly encapsulates Star Fox and its gameplay and the way that all that feels. And it's like, how the hell did you do this? <laughs> I can understand why people don't say, like, why people think that he's not the best designed character in the game. But if I'd be questioning you if you didn't tell me he was at least in the top five or top three. I feel that he's one of the best designed characters in the game because there's no character in Smash that utilizes everything about the Smash Brothers engine and the freeform movement and everything the game gives you better than Fox. While Falcon is very fun and he, very fun and he has a lot of really cool stuff and he's got a really good personality in Smash. He's still very aggro, and a majority of his stuff is very, you know... he's He doesn't utilize the space nearly as well as Fox does, and he's very much a one-direction... He's more of a horizontal, you know, combo character than one for vertical, while Fox can be either-or. Yeah, uh, I will absolutely argue... My my only my one gripe was his final smash not being R wing and they changed it in ultimate. The R wings are good, but I feel the R wings could be better. But I don't think that that takes away from the rest of his design, because even if you were because the final smash already feels super detached from the rest of the character as it is. I'm not just talking about Fox. It goes for like every character in the entire game. Yeah, we can also talk about how Fox made a new archetype. An archetype that was so good that he did it, they did it two more times in the same game. And both of those characters are also in like the top 20 to top 15 designed in the entire game. Not to mention, you know, it would go on to inspire so many characters in different types of games and other platform fighters, like how. Zetterburn is heavily inspired by Wolf and Fox. And stuff like that. Yeah, and every, every Smash clone has at least one Spacey. There's no Falcon in, in Rivals of Aether yet, but there is a Fox. And I think that just goes to show how transcendent this design is from just Smash. While Kirby is the backbone of Smash, Fox is the identity of Smash. And I, I think that you can't... I don't want people to... Ch I don't know how people feel about changing him, but I don't think they should. He's... 
in such a very specific spot. And he's designed such a very particular way that I feel if you did anything to his character, something would, like, it would feel off. The speed, the impact of his moves, the gravity. And that's another thing. He, his moves are fast, but they also hit hard. So he's got impact. He's got speed. He's got great. Mo he's got great jump height. His his gravity, while it can make him a bit of a combo a bit of combo fodder at times, feels so good in every Smash game, even in Brawl, where it's the where it's the floaties of the bunch. Yeah, Fox is just Fox is Smash. I think that's the best way to describe it. Fox is Smash Brothers. And while he may not ever like reach the height levels of Captain Falcon, if anything ever happened to Fox, like a, it wouldn't be Smash. You can't have Smash without Fox. Like. I, I, he's just one of those characters that if he wasn't there, Smash isn't Smash anymore. And thankfully, he's had a presence in every single Smash game. Every single one. He has also been the most balanced top tier in a fight, in a, in a Smash game. With his, you know, melee iteration. You know, a character that while top tier, is just a really strong character and is not like completely and utterly broken and, and breaks the game and every factor along with it. Looking at you, man, Bayonetta. Like, this character is perfection to me. Again, I can understand. I have a feeling that he's not going to be the best sl slot in the game for them. And that's fine with me. But I definitely think that he he is 100% like a top tier design. Fox is Smash Brothers more than any other character in the entire series. Yeah, I, I, I can't think of anything else to say. It's just Fox is Fox. Fox is Smash Brothers. Fox has always felt good to play in every single game. Everything about Fox has just been like immaculate. And people that want to cut Fox, you're fucking weird. <laughs> and I think that he is absolutely fabulous. I think that he is utterly perfect at getting the feel of Star Fox just right without actually having you have the R-Wing. I feel like having his gravity be so great is utterly genius because not only do you get the feeling of, well, he's- It's funny you say that, James, because even in Brawl, people openly admitted that they were way too harsh on Fox. And they even said that if Brawl went on a little longer, Fox probably would have gone into, like, the top tens in terms of, like, tier placement, which he did in Japan. In Japan, which has a different tier list than the West in Brawl, Fox was, like, seventh. But, yeah... Even when people that and the thing is that that's him at his lowest. Brawl was technically the worst Fox, and even then people were like, "Oh yeah, you know what? If this meta game like evolved like a little bit more, this character would have gotten better. Like this character would have placed higher, and we would have underst we understand him better. Like yeah, this character would have been like like way higher than he is now." 
He's a dogfighter. Those are the G-forces. He's used to having that heavy sort of load. But you get the feeling of piloting the R-Wing as Fox, of being able to go up and down so quickly to avoid your opponent, about dodging out of their way and then getting right into the range and aiming your lasers and then coming in at just the right moment. Fox is utterly incredible in how he nails that feel. And I feel like it stands just as a testament to how well he's been received and how emblematic of Smash Brothers he's become. Like, I, I know the meme is no items, Fox only Final Destination, but Final Destination doesn't do him justice because when Fox has platforms to work with, when Fox is ducking around the stage, when you see the melee Fox go clickety clack with the control stick. Yeah, Fox ASMR works on like any stage. stage does... and you're going, hiya? Then you just feel good. There's such an amazement. Fox is such. Like, if Mario is the uh, solidification of moving around platforms and Kirby is the introduction to it, Fox is the utter mastery of it. Yeah, 100%. And I 100%. feel like he is one of the absolute best Smash original designs as a fighting game character. Totally, totally agree. I, it's also interesting to see like, how his interpretation in Smash has gone on to affect Star Fox. I kind of feel like I kind of feel like Star Fox is always scared about moving forward because Smash has set such a reputation for the character that it's just having a hard time living up to. I don't know if they, if you feel the same way or not. No, but... that's not true because Platinum did a, a, a Star Fox segment in Bayonetta 2 that was better than anything we've had for Star Fox and Star Fox Assault. And it, it felt new, felt unique and refreshing and honestly you don't need to reinvent the wheel with Star Fox. If you had a game with a with a new story and play, new places to go shoot, new enemies to shoot at, that's all you need. If the gameplay feels good and you keep like the the good feel of like Star Fox sixty four, at least you know Star Fox sixty four three D, and you know the shooting segments like the ship segments from Star Fox Assault. And you keep it focused on those ship segments. Yeah, um, you could absolutely 100% just have a Star Fox game that's just doesn't need to like push any boundaries. It's just more of the same while we're finding it and making it just fun. That's all you need. My only request is that you retcon command. It's hard for me to say because, like, uh, Assault and then Command followed uh, Dinosaur Planet or, or Star Fox Adventure so heavily. Like, there's a solid through line there, and Smash actually was following that with Assault. And then it kind of just didn't look at Command. Good. It shouldn't. If they make a new Star Fox, I hope they retcons it. <laughs> Like, everyone just kind of looked at Command and went, okay, yeah, we don't want to do that. And then everyone was like, you guys want to do 64 again? Every single time Fox has shown up post-Command? And it is weird for me. It's weird for me. Like, I don't understand how the last, like, how Zero ended up as bad as it was. Okay, no, that's not true. I know why. It, it, it was very clearly because of one person's heavy, heavy, heavy involvement and probable meddling with the, with the development. Because Platinum already proved through Bayonetta 2 they could, they could absolutely make a Star Fox that was really fun and true to form while feeling like its own thing. I think at this point, if I wanted to make a new Star Fox, I would limit Miyamoto's influence on it and give it back to the Ace Combat team that did assault and mainly have them focus on aerial battles and less on ground battles. If they want to make the ground battles like a like a multiplayer thing, that's perfectly fine. But for what it is, yeah, I think that they should focus on that and Ace Combat the Ace Combat team has already proven time and time again that 
yeah, they know how to make it. They they know how to make an arcade dogfighting game like Star Fox. If they're, I would I would sell an arm and a leg, and even a kidney thrown in. If we could have a Star Fox game, nearly as good, both gameplay wise and story wise and music wise. As Ace Combat Zero. If anyone here knows anything about Ace Combat Zero, and especially that final boss fight, yeah, there's a lot I would give to have a Star Fox game on that level. But I do think that Fox is super emblematic in Smash in that regard. Yeah. I, I feel like Star Fox would be a dead series right now if it weren't for Smash Brothers. Completely like, like the popularity behind why people keep asking for those games is because Fox is so strong. Totally agreed. Like, as a design. Totally agreed. Like, yes, Star Fox 64 was a fantastic game, but... I feel like Fox would be more in the same breath as uh, the banjos of the world, as opposed to, I don't know, more of the fervor of just, I feel like Star Fox is a little less patient or was before Zero of just like, yeah, a new console, a new Star Fox game. Yeah, let's go. Uh, where do you have him in your tier list? Sadly. Very high A tier. Oh, like, that's too low. <laughs> debate him with Pac-Man because that's interesting i actually have him at the bottom of s tier because i feel like he has just so perfectly captured the feeling of his games like you you said um uh, last episode i know it's because I was, I was just editing right the episode at this point right. in time you look at a character and say this is smash brothers yeah and i would definitely say that fox embodies that leaps and bounds more than snake and rob <laughs> While Snake's moveset's fun and it doesn't fit the character, and Rob's fun, Rob's moveset is, you know, child creative fun. Neither of them are even close to Fox, in my honest opinion. In what Smash Brothers is. For the S tiers, I feel that when I look at Fox, because he is just so emblematic of what smash as a platform fighter can do when you translate a game into it properly gosh i do agree with like, that there is no there are no snake likes in other platform fighters there are no rob likes in other platform fighters but there is always a spacey and i think that alone should make him go above snake and rob sentiment but i also do have my caveats with fox um don't like his final smash who like, cares about the final now, smash but i you need to control that like that's that's star fox that that's the slam dunk that you've ignored for three games in a row and just that annoys me um i don't love firefox as a recovery I don't feel like that captures a lot. I like I know it captures the some people have likened it to his bombs and the explosive force of that or like a halo jump and re-entering atmosphere, but I, I just don't love it and I would prefer his actual somersault or barrel roll or something in that regard to boost him up a little bit more and be more sudden. I don't like that it has a stall to it. That's fair, that's fair. Um but it's such an iconic move. You can't replace it. You just can't. At this point, Fox yelling fire. Fox yelling fire is one of the most easily identifiable, thing, identifiable things from Smash next to Captain Falcon yelling Falcon Punch. You, you can't get rid of it. He's right on the precipice, isn't he? Like, yeah. I feel like he could do a. I feel like he could do more to represent the Star Fox series in 
references. And he doesn't have the sound effects of Star Fox. That's, that's what I wanted to say. Ridiculous. Oh, God. I thought about that, and that got me. The fact that the blaster doesn't make the actual laser sound is just... Ugh. Or the fact that there's not, like, the eye and pick up of... Anywhere in his moveset. But, God, then he has, like, three different giant conversations on different stages with the Star Fox cast, and that fits him so well and whatnot. I, I, I do agree. If Palutena's guidance can't save Pit, though, I don't feel like that should... Like, the, the reason that Snake's and S-tier on top of that is because everything else is great. And that's... that. I feel like those conversations are supplements, but they it's aren't so weird. saving graces, if that makes any sense. Oh, no, I, I do agree, but... God, they're so important, and if they weren't there, I would be complaining that they were missing from Fox. Yeah. But, God, like, when Fox, when you're playing as Fox, you feel like you're the ace pilot of the Star Fox team. Like, Falco, Slippy, and Peppy, and Crystal, they go down if someone chases them for a little bit and you're unable to save them. Fox? Well, Slippy's kind of useless. <laughs> Let's not beat around the bush. Slippy... Uh, he's he's a. Uh, I wouldn't say he's dumb, but he's a, he's a he's a klutz. You know, and feels like somebody that like forged his own like pilot license. <laughs> Fox is just pure skill, and the implication is that you, the player, are just so skilled that even the greatest dogfighters in the universe can't compare to you, Fox McCloud. And that's how he feels in Smash Brothers. And that's so good. Oh, this is hard. This is, I, I feel like this is the hardest decision, like just for me that we've talked about so far. Cause like, I just think you need to ask yourself, which character rep, which character do you feel feels like the envelope, like the character that represents Smash better? Like which character makes you think this is Smash more? Rob, Snake, or Fox? And I think that 95% of the time, people are going to tell you Fox. Unbelievably well. Like, like he has barely changed. A if Captain Falcon is not an option, they are going to tell you Fox. Across the course of the entire Smash series. Mm-hmm. And there's good reason for that. It's because, like, they just nailed it first try. Yeah, 100%. Well, not quite 100% because I feel oh, like... Yeah, well, it, 64 wasn't... 64, yeah. Yeah, but Melee... Melee has... I mean, he was still he was still a really good character in Smash 64. I think Star Fox is a character more than the Star Fox franchise. <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you're completely right with that. Ugh. Yeah, okay, s I, I want to... Compare him to Pac-Man, just real quick. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you... Because it, it's a it's a weird case of... If I put him in A tier, I think I would still put him... Well, I, 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 well... At this point, I have no doubt that Fox is better than Pac-Man. Yeah. 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 Well, like, I have zero doubts. And that's hard, because I'm looking at Kirby right underneath, and I'm going, damn. Yeah, but Fox is better, though. Like, you're in exceptional. Yeah, I, I, the, to, to quote Star Fox itself, you're good, but I'm better. That's Wolf shit. <laughs> yes, it is. Who is it? Stuff. They have the same voice actor in Star Fox Zero. It works. It's here below him, but yeah, yeah like yeah, I, ha I had Fox at the bottom of S tier for a reason, and I still feel good about that. It's just he he's tiptoeing. I don't think I'm going to put anybody below Fox. I would agree. I feel, I feel like Fox is the border. Yeah, Rob's above him, and I feel so much more strongly about Rob just going above and beyond. Even in my A tier rankings, I put Rob above him, and I agree with that. All right, all right. But I, I can get down with the bottom of S tier, because just, damn, that's a good design. 100%. And continuing this trend of supposedly well, dated designs. Pikachu! Pikachu, I feel, I kind is of, also I, pretty good. I, I, I yep. kind of fear what's going to be said about Pikachu because there's been a lot of noble bias against Pokemon in this in these videos. Uh, Pikachu's... Pikachu's just really good. I don't really have a lot to say about Pikachu either. He's just fun, expressive, fits the character very well. 
no character inherently plays anything like him or her since you can now play as a girl. Like, uh... Yeah, Pikachu is, uh... Pikachu, like Fox, has always been a pretty good Smash character. While they've never been on the same par as Fox, they're they still, uh, you know, they're still good. People really like them a lot. They're played by a lot of people. And uh, everybody loves Pikachu. How can you not love that face? He's adorable. I totally agree. Also, the co also the Pikachu Libre costume is one of the best costumes in the game, and I love it. He, like... In Smash 64, he was the fast character, and he sells fast really, really well. I like. He's also very. They are also very expressive, which I like, and I think it's it continues the trend of the Pokemon being of Pokemon characters being you know abundant in personality that fits their character. Like his facial What's up? Uh, we just finished general? Fox and we're moving on to Pikachu. I like when he has to grit his teeth when he's trying to like get off of a ledge or is in real trouble. I also really like his new his new Nair. That's really nice. I think it fits him very well. Like he feels like the anime Pikachu. He really does. And he utilizes his speed to the best of his ability. It's it's just yeah. I won't say fun. I, I don't really have fun fighting against Pikachu, but it's good. I mean, it is fun. I don't think I've ever run into a person that's, that, that's like, played Pikachu at a casual level and said that Pikachu is not fun. Absolutely. He's not one of those characters that smacks- But then again, from a fighting perspective, 90% of the roster is not fun to fight. <laughs> like, at all. Ash has allowed to evolve. I got the neutral air is the biggest one for me, just to point to. Yeah. That, that feels like just such a good, so much better, and like actually involving electricity in more of his moves. Totally. It's hard to say much about. I thought of this comparison after, um. Uh, Pikachu's changes throughout the years have been very simplistic, but they've had a big impact. I like that the changes in Ultimate, you know, he got a new Nair, his down air now spikes. You know, there's more consistency with this with his thunder, and you're able to like spike your opponent into you to deal huge damage if they're at the right range. Like Pikachu's changes over the years have been very subtle, but they've done a lot to help the character grow. And I think that Pikachu is easily like an S tier design for what he is. Uh, recording at the Smash for Wii U when we're talking about Greninja, because mm -hmm. like Greninja is still in B tier, and I feel good about that. It feels like praising a Pokemon for being translated well into Smash Brothers. I get the similar sense of like letting a baking soda volcano win a science fair. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, there's that Pokemon bias showing there again, Duke. Uh, I, I, I'm I'm very concerned on where Incineroar is going to show up in this tier list. <laughs> you did it. I can't fault you for this, but also, like. You're not exactly breaking new ground here, but for Pikachu, like, the added effort of making it the anime Pikachu instead of, like, a game Pikachu was the right call. Because that is the Pikachu that people know. That I mean, it's both. And, you know, the Pikachu made... Sorry, the, the Pikachu made the anime what it is. The anime made Pikachu what he is. This is why Pikachu is here. Yes. I guess the one little thing is I wish that his hat, when he goes into the red hat, had the thunderbolt on it. The little green thunderbolt design for Ash Ketchum. I also I also don't like Sk uh, Skull Bash. Like, yeah. Of all of his moves, that that should be Volt Tackle. Be something like um, Charizard. That's his final yeah, smash. Anyway, and I know you're using Volt Tackle for the final smash, but like... There's more you can do there. You could do so much and like... I mean... I feel it would kind of not sell the power of the move if you gave Pikachu, like, the character that, you know, he's, it's his ultimate attack. I feel that you should absolutely 100% have his ultimate attack be his final smash, not just, you know, tackle. But with electric charge, you can use wild charge for that instead, which I 
think Pikachu learns. Pikachu is here because of the anime. Let him do anime stuff. Let him, right, let right. him go on Swellow and do freaking Thunder Armor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's the pinnacle of Pikachu right there. <laughs> but yeah, like Pikachu is done well, but and I appreciate him a little more than other Pokemon because it's his anime interpretation and whatnot. And he fits the role of quick electric mouse very well. I don't think they quite captures the games because Pikachu is like a status monster. Like he's designed like his original red and blue design is basically Thunder Wave into double team. And I, I you, feel like some way of slowing another character. You don't want to emulate competitive Gen 1 Pokemon in a fighting game. I'm going to be completely realistic with you. Gen 1 was such an Un, was such a horribly balanced, mismatched mess of balance and just oversights and problems with coding that the last thing I think I would ever want to emulate for any Pokemon, let alone Pikachu, is what Gen 1 was as a competitive game. What an absolute unfun nightmare that would be. Just be thankful there are no Ice-type Pokemon playable in Smash yet. ...would really emphasize Pikachu. I mean, he'd be broken right now if you did that, but, like... <laughs> I don't know, I feel like that's more of the gameplay of Pikachu. So it's They wanted a Rushdown character, and Rushdown characters don't really use stuff like that. ...speak. Maybe if he built up so much electricity with his attacks, it would paralyze? Yeah, I think that, I think... Something like that? But then you're taking away from Zero Suit Samus. I think that, like, whereas Pichu discourages electric attacks, Pikachu would encourage it and get yes. stronger. I mean, he does. With a lot of his moves, you know, now having electric, electric properties, you know, how useful Thunder is now, especially compared to back in the day when it was just okay. Now it's, like, one of the biggest parts of your game plan... Thunder Jolt is an incredibly oppressive projectile option if used properly. Yeah, I think that Pikachu embodies the encourage electricity aspect of Pikachu, or the Pokemon that you want, fairly well. From it. I like, I like that a lot. I like that. I, but even, even then, like, I, I, I can't complain much about, uh, like, it's Pikachu. Yeah. You, you, you can't mess up Pikachu. You haven't been... A, a, oh, you can mess him up. Thank God they didn't. Adorable. Like, he has some of the best taunts in the game. Because... Just that when he just, like, rolls around like a cat. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Uh, I, I just want to give him a hug. He's adorable. Totally. I mean, he's Pikachu. Everybody wants to hug a Pikachu. I a for his intro animation. That bugs me. Yep. It, it's not important, but it bugs me. Yep. You can easily do the wild grass intro for Pikachu. Eh, the Pokeball still works, because it's not Ash's Pikachu, it's just a Pikachu. Why isn't that in the game? I've never thought, why isn't that in the game? I don't know, because cause I, I can think of Smash Brothers better than Sakurai. I'm better than an entire train team <laughs> in Nintendo. Me, there's one guy doping around in a bedroom. I'm a genius. <laughs> That's how we all feel sometimes, as character designers, isn't it? I do have Pikachu at the bottom of A tier because, again, baking soda volcano. I, 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 it feels wrong to. If the design is good, the design is good. It doesn't need to be bombastic, and I don't think that, you know, the fact that he's a Pokemon should take away anything for how good and how well realized Pikachu is. Because, like Fox, Pikachu has not changed very much in ever since his inception, and. I think that that's for a good reason, and that's because he's always just been a really well-rounded design that makes a lot of sense for the Pokemon and the character that he's supposed to be. He's very expressive. He has a ton of personality. He has great taunts. He has great victory animations. It's Pikachu. I There are definitely ways you could do him wrong, but thankfully we never got to see it. Put him above characters that impress me with how they've carried over like their mechanics 
but I can't put him in B tier. Like, like it's Pikachu. They Pikachu, no, B tier. I think that's too low. Like, he, it, he absolutely sells that, hey, go play Pokemon because they've got all these cute critters in them. He's a perfect advertisement for that. It's Pikachu. Yeah. It, it's weird for me because, like, I can see the argument of putting him above Mario, but I'm struggling to see the argument of putting him above Cloud. Huh. But, like... That's... Oh, I totally agree, but that's so weird. Because, like, Mario has things missing, but he's also exceptional in one regard. Cloud is like, yeah, that's Cloud, but what? there's something not there for me. And I don't, I feel like Thunder is a good move. I like using Thunder, but that's kind of all I think about with Pikachu, other than being really good in Smash 64 and the existence of eSAM. I mean, he's always been good. I, was like, where I mean, like, like Yoshi... Pikachu is a character that a lot of people underestimated in Melee, and then, you know, so many years later, Pikachu wins his first tournament and is added to the pantheon of the Melee characters that have won tournaments, and he's far... He's still being explored, and there's still more to learn about this character. All these years later... Pikachu has always been good. Like, there's never been a Smash game where Pikachu's not, like, a top 15 character, at least. Maybe Melee, but, you know, that game is like, only got 26 characters in it to begin with. Kirby has the stone, Pikachu has thunder. That is yes. One of those He's a high tier. Just, like, spam in, like every game, at out least. It. How do the, what is this new nightmare? Yes. Ah, that's throwing me for a loop. Right? Like, I thought of that. Like, okay, who would he be above? Oh, crap. Because, like, everybody beneath Cloud, like, Bowser Jr. This is why the order everybody. may have not yeah, been a good idea on yeah. paper. May, uh, might have been a good idea on paper, but not, you know, an execution. No, I, I do still feel like I'd put him above Cloud. Because, like, Pikachu is a complete design. Cloud just, I don't know if it would be, like, some sort of... Yeah, he has a consistently amazing all costumes. And they only got better in as the series went on. While I do like a couple of the melee costumes that we lost, I I would sacrifice them in a heartbeat to use Pikachu Libre, which was such a good choice and is easily Pikachu's best costume. Spell selection, you just make limit not be able to be charged or something like that. But there's there is a side of Final Fantasy that he just doesn't represent, whereas Pikachu, he's he's a Pikachu. I could see that. Yeah. Well, like and, unless like I can't define where my problem with Pikachu lies. Like, sure, Skull Bash could be something different. Add electric effects to it and call it Wild Charge. Uh, the Volt Tackle is just a weak Final Smash in general. I don't like it at all. Yeah, I like it better on Pichu, just because of the sound design. Yes. Yeah! <laughs> oh, God, play, are you okay? Chaos. Oh, okay. I, I think, yeah, bottom of A tier. You're, you're selling me on a lot of these today. Yeah, I, I, I'm feeling, I'm feeling... Oh no, he disappeared! Samus Where did he go? <laughs> yeah, you're on a friggin' roll, Oh no, well, Pikachu went oh, to the back right, rooms, right. I guess. Uh, it, it's gonna get harder as we like, because I'm... Uh, I keep looking back at Zero Suit Samus, like, it, this is gonna, it's gonna get, like... As we start reorganizing the tiers, this oh, is gonna totally. get absolutely chaotic. Oh, completely. Uh, but for now... Dawn of the First Debate, many more remain. Oh, it's time to talk about good old we Lugie! Earlier, that wait, hold on, I'm gonna make sure that this is actually the next character in the list. It is. Okay, good, it is good. Okay, I, I got thrown through a loop earlier because I thought Fox came after Yoshi, and I was like, oh yeah, let's talk about good character Kirby. Okay, I'm still down for this. Yeah, <laughs> but Luigi is. We talked about how Link Luigi was is such an interesting and weird case, and is sadly. A character that for as many characters as Ultimate pushed up and made really good, Luigi is sadly a character that the Ultimate completely and totally destroyed. I think that the concept of Luigi in Smash is fantastic. While Mario is the everyman who can do everything, Luigi is basically his antithesis, 
and is essentially a character that's heavily focused on one aspect, and he does it very, very well. That in comparison to, you know, comparing the little brother that, you know, lives in his brother's shadow, who his brother can do everything, but he can do this, he can do these couple of things really, really well. I think that that works super well for Luigi as a character. Because I know, because here's the thing, I understand that, you know, he should feel, he should look more afraid and he shouldn't, you know, be like, I, the, the argument is that like, why would he be able to combo? Like, isn't he like afraid of engagement? It's funny because in some regards he is afraid, but in others, he's clearly like not a, in some others, he's clearly not. Like, and like, I'm trying to think of a good example. In games like Super, like Super Mario 3D World, where all these characters are playable, like we get glimpses of like Luigi, you know, his fear, like that great animation he does at the beginning where he watches them all go down the pipe and he basically just like slaps himself in the face like, okay, okay, you can do this. And then he goes in after them. Like, that's nice. But then, like, I think that when he's around his brother, he's confident enough to, to you know, not be scared all the time. And he, as long as Louis, as long as Mario is here, Luigi will always be here. No, lightning's stupid. Lightning has never been an aspect of Luigi outside of, outside of uh, the Mario and Luigi series. I don't think that inherently fits Luigi as a character. I think that him using fire makes sense. But I like that the aspect it's like. How he's has a lot of attacks where he looks like he's afraid. Like he like a lot of his moves are very quick and they don't last very long. Like almost like like he he has to hit you, but he doesn't really want to. Like his forward air is like, oh I'm gonna chop you. No, I don't I don't wanna hit you. So I'm just gonna do it really quick and I hope that you stay the hell away from me. Like there are aspects there of his of his scared of his scaredy cat personality clearly in his moveset and the way that all of his attacks are very fast and they don't last very long, but then you have those explosive moments of bravery from Luigi doing these like grandiose moves like green missile and his super uppercut like his super flaming uppercut. It's like. And he's like doing all these cool things and he looks happy while he's doing it. And it's like, I never knew I could do this. Mario, look at me. I'm doing good. This is better than Brooklyn. This is better than corruptions. Like, I get that aspect of Luigi. And I love that aspect of Luigi. Because he still shows fear sometimes. There are glimpses of it. At times when I think it makes sense. Since a lot of it's a lot of his focus is on like aerial combos and his jump height being really good. And this, that was like the biggest thing that they focused on. Oh, he's good at really good vertical aerial combos because Luigi has always been the character between him and his brother that has been you know, the better jumper. That's always been what Luigi's been in every game that they're both in. He jumps higher than, than Mario. And they and they just went all in on that. And Smash 4, I think, was the best iteration of Luigi we ever had because it basically perfected it. He had the personality, he had the unique playstyle and the nice antithesis to Mario. He still felt very true to his character. He got his, like, jump animation from Super Mario Bros. 2, where he, like, runs on the air and stuff like that. It, it, it's all great. 
and then Ultimate came around and ultimately destroyed what Luigi is as a character. Luigi is no longer a character that's good at jumping. His recovery is now arguably in the bottom 10 in the entire roster. Like, it's just gone. His incredible aerial like, superiority is just gone. Yeah, his aerials are still fast and he can still combo, but that huge aspect that put Luigi above his brother and was an aspect that they focused on his design, it was just removed from the game entirely. There were ways that they easily could have built off of Smash 4 Luigi and made a character that was even better than Luigi in those games. I think that if they could have easily just, you know, they could have given him the grab with the, with the poltergust. Because, you know, I don't want to get too close. I'm going to grab you from a distance with a plunger and I'm going to pull you to me and, we're, and then I'm going to do my damage. That fits the personality. It's perfect. It should be a tether recovery. For the love of God, why is it not a tether recovery? But that makes sense. But the problem is that in getting that, Luigi lost everything else that made his character good. Luigi was very good in Smash 4. For a while, he was like top 3 in the game. And then he nerds him a little bit and he's like, he was like top 15 after that. Luigi in Smash 4 is arguably the best Luigi in the entire series. It was the first time, like much like his brother, where Luigi actually was a good character. Actually, no. Unlike Mario, who was mostly overshadowed in Melee, Luigi was, was still like a popular wild card pick in Melee, if only thanks to how insanely good his wave dash was. And you all know what? That's another thing they took away from Luigi. Luigi in... in any Mario game, he's always known for having really bad traction. They took away his bad traction in Ultimate. Luigi doesn't slide anymore. Which could have been really good if, they, if he could, because it would have worked really nicely with Ultimate's changes to doing anything out of a dash. So that's another aspect of Luigi's design that's gone. He doesn't, his vertical, like, recovery and, like, his ability to, like, you know, move around in the air, it's gone. It's one of, it's one of the worst feelings in the game now. Yeah, he didn't have good airspeed in Smash 4, but the fact that he had such quick attacks and, you know, the, the maneuverability of Luigi's Cyclone, which just doesn't work for anything anymore... And then he lost, like, his iconic traction. Luigi is very clearly a character that they were thinking about gameplay balance first, and in doing so, they just butchered everything about the character. Because if you were to ask me, like, oh, what is Smash 4 Luigi's placement? Smash 4 Luigi's placement is like a B or an A for me. Because it encapsulates so much of what Luigi was. Could he have used more, like, stuff from, like, Luigi's Mansion? You know, like, a, like use a poltergust for the grab? Yeah, I mean, the, pol the grab he has works now, and I like that it's his grab. But the problem is, is that it's literally his game plan, and there's nothing else to the character now. When there was way more to Luigi as a character in Smash 4 than there is in Ultimate. I'm... Unbelievably saddened by what they did to Luigi in Ultimate. And somehow he's still a mid-tier character after all the ways they butchered him, probably because he can still zero to death you, but... I'm sad that we lost Luigi. I can't believe they, they brought back Everyone Is Here, and then they, they cut Luigi from the game. How could they do this? It's just like, you know... They cut Falco from Smash 4. Fox was the only Star Fox character in Smash 4. How could they do this? Why would they do this? 
I thought we were focused on everyone here, Sakurai. Where's Luigi? Because what I'm looking at in Ultimate is not Luigi. That has been improved the most? I feel like Luigi is the character that has evolved the most over the course of the Smash Brothers series. Maybe not for the best. But I don't know if it has been for the best for his design. It was up to a point. They didn't cut Falco in Smash 4. The joke is that Falco was so bad that he might as well have been cut. I have very, very conflicting opinions on Luigi. Mm -hmm. For similar version, reasons, I have conflicting opinions about Mario because I feel like there's a lot of ways you can take the character. Is he the player two to Mario's player one? Should he respect his own franchise more, the Luigi's Mansion? Or should he just continue following in Mario's footsteps because that's also important to who he is? Smash has created this- I, I, as I, I definitely think that they wanted him to be the antithesis to Mario where it's just, instead of being able to do all these things really good, Luigi focuses on like one or two things and he does it better than Mario, which is basically what he's always been. And he doesn't always have to be afraid because he's shown bursts of, of courage throughout, you know, not only just Luigi's Mansion, but like actual Mario games too. It's weird. Kind of canonized a lot of odd elements to Luigi's character that still fits. Like, Green Missile is bizarre, but it also fits Luigi's character in a very bizarre way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't like it, but it fits. I I, I don't know how I feel about this character. Like, what, what, what are your thoughts on Luigi? So, insofar as Smash goes, I love Luigi from a characterization standpoint. Because you, you have to think that it, when he was introduced in Smash 64, Luigi was your player too. He didn't have a single RPG appearance except a cameo in Mario RPG to flesh out his character. He had Mario is missing to his name for games of his own. He would go on to spawn a legendary meme at least. Mario's shadow. And thus he was referred to as the eternal understudy. And this is still is. where the idea of Luigi as we know him in a modern context developed where he has this weird flailing dash attack where he blushes as he kind of puts his arms in front of him. This is sort of Luigi as both simultaneously a tryhard trying to live up to his brother and is sort of like more cowardly and weird than his brother. And that would continue- I think it's more along the lines of he, he sees how Mario goes in and engages and he doesn't know how to do it himself, so he just does that. And I think it's very fitting that Luigi has bad neutral. Even when even in Smash 4, his neutral was not that good. Because I honestly think that Luigi having bad neutral is one of the best ways to describe his character. Like, I don't know how I'm going to approach you and do the things that I know how to do. I'm going to try some things that might work. I don't really know what I'm doing where Mario's neutral is extremely good. And, you know, he has a lot of ways to, you know, force engagement where Luigi doesn't have that. It's, it's a nice touch. Luigi's neutral in Ultimate being bad, though, is... is while still fitting, still very painful for what was lost in the translation from Smash 4. Continue into Melee, where he would get so many weird attacks with weird effects, where when used to his fullest potential, it's greater than anything that Mario could accomplish, like his super jump punch or the randomness of the green missile, or how far he moves when mashing the Luigi Cyclone. Like, all of these elements came up to define who Luigi is, a character with almost infinite potential that he's hiding in his shadow, but is too nervous and weird and just awkward to... I wouldn't say he's hiding it, he just doesn't know what he's doing. ...fully bring it out. I love how understated his original taunt is, 
how it's just this little baby kick, but it can murder you if you're on the edge. I love the how kick. Simultaneously, the most mocking like and top five taunts in the entire game, easily. The unassuming move, and how that's gone on to personify Luigi, not just through his own series, but in other RPGs like Paper Mario: The Thousand Year Door, Super Paper Mario, and the entirety of the Mario and Luigi series. I don't think would entirely exist as they do without Smash Brothers Luigi and would go on to help flesh him out in further games. Like Luigi in Smash is so, so unique and so important for the Luigi character and Luigi's such a great character. Yeah. Totally agreed. Totally agreed. Like his original final Smash was so bizarre, but like I... I love I love this just how do I put this like this he doesn't mean to be as effective as he is almost right like yeah like he's even like he's surprising himself with how good he is at some stuff which is why I like that he smiles a lot it's like look Mario I'm doing it I'm doing it I'm good at this it's it's very endearing and it fits Luigi's personality well while I know that you know he's very cowardly I think that if they focus too much on the cowardly, it wouldn't feel very true to Luigi as a whole. I like that there are glimpses of him just, you know, being happy and like he knows what he's doing and he's having fun while doing it. Luigi is such a more interesting character than his brother. His brother, it's not even fucking funny. Like he, like he's trying and he has the potential in him, but he doesn't know it. Exactly, exactly. I do, however, feel like there is, like, I love that characterization, but that kind of breaks apart when you actually start as playing him as him, especially in the later titles. I feel like Luigi is way too competent of a fighter, like, just how easily you can string together combos. Yes. For how, just, how he's characterized. Like, yeah. it's, it's such a weird state where I... It's, it's, it's strange, because as I said... I feel that Luigi being better at stuff than his brother makes complete and total sense. And the focus on the whole, you know, aerial superiority, he jumps higher, he recovers higher, he's got these insane, like, aerial combos that he does better than his brother. Yeah, I'd argue that that fits Luigi very well. And I like that he that he shows competency because Luigi is competent. He just doesn't show it very much. Because most of the time when we get to see Luigi be competent, it's when he's with his brother. When Luigi's on his own, he's, you know, he doesn't really know what he's doing. feel like you're doing good you're giving luigi more references and more luigi's mansion stuff uh you broke him and made him boring like he's, he's the weird yeah. case where the more you added and the more generally what you would think of as pretty good design in adding references and whatnot and honestly yeah the, yeah the poltergeist should be his grab that makes perfect sense the if you want perfect luigi Literally give him two things. Do two things. Revert him back to Smash 4 Luigi in basically every regard with his with the way that Luigi Cyclone works, his traction and his aerial combos, you know, functioning better than they do in Ultimate. And just give him the Poltergeist as a grab. I think that alone is all you really need. For you, for me to be happy with Luigi in Smash. Because then he has that really focused design around that one aspect that he's really good at. You have the references to Luigi's Mansion in there. He still has a lot of, he's still very expressive. When he gets hit, it's very clear that he's scared. He's got great taunts that show off his personality. The kick is great. All like the JoJo poses that he does back back to back are really fun and fit the character very well. 
like you don't need to add you don't need to reinvent the wheel with Luigi. You had you had something and you were so close. And then you gave him the thing that would have added so much to the design, but in at the same time you took like everything away that made the design work. I don't like Plank. You could probably replace Plank with something else as a taunt. But it does add to his weird personality. And if it was gone the next match, I wouldn't be like, oh no, the Plank's gone. If they remove the kick, I'd be pissed. Unless you get out of him? It's so... I, I do kind of like, I, I don't like playing against it, but I do kind of like the, um, the stalling, the keep away from me that he does with, like, his, um, not his, his zares, just mm -hmm. continuously throwing out the plunger that fits, like, it fits Luigi's character. Totally. But as soon as he grabs you, like, just, Luigi can get so much off of a grab, and I feel like that is the exact opposite of what he should be able to do. Right. Like, I, I disagree. You, you shouldn't want to get up and close and personal with something. Like, that's what well, that's the thing. He's not getting up close and personal in a, in a way that makes he he's like his brother and he wants to get up and close and personal, but he doesn't want to do it in the same way as his brother because he's not as good as doing it as his brother is, which is why the whole aspect of I now have this thing that I can use to not instead of having to come close to grab you, I can now use this thing to pull you to me therefore taking any risk to me out of the fact out of the picture therefore i feel safe and i won't and you know i feel confident enough to use my abilities properly because you are now in a state that you can't react or do anything about it why his dash attack is so amazing because he's scared of getting that like physical with somebody Completely, and I love that he has like the weird handshake karate chop forward smash. Like, oh no, 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 I am a little nervous here. Hey, buddy. <sighs> I also dislike some of the changes. That recovery right there is why this character in Ultimate makes me very sad. Because if that was Smash for Luigi, he would have been able to make it back to the stage. They made to him, like, how they mitigated the Luigi Cyclone recovery. I love how much you so can match with him and just like it feels almost accidental that he's recovering so well. Yeah. And I kind of love that. It's just like his effort is putting him forward. And I miss, I'll admit, I miss Melee Luigi because I love slip sliding around the arena with him with wave dashing. That was, that, I just... Pray for the day that they actually put wave dash back in Smash like they should. So much to him. Just like how slippery he was. Like if one character is gonna benefit- Like I want you to imagine, everybody has a problem with Sonic because of how quickly he can disengage from a fight because of how fast he is and you know, run speed is the only thing to determine speed in Smash. Could you imagine just Sonic trying to disengage from Luigi and Luigi then proceeds to wave dash after him? <laughs> And manages to catch up to him? It would be hilarious. Fit a ton from an accidental discovery. It's gonna be Luigi. Uh, I hate his airspeed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah agreed. Yeah. Like I, he's supposed to be if they were gonna take away his recovery options, they should have absolutely given him way better airspeed. Like the the higher jumper, higher jumper, little, but but like that, that's what defined him, right? And just you don't want to jump as much with him. If you're not short hopping with Luigi, you're playing him wrong, right? This is such a weird character to talk about because like I agree with everything you're saying, both positive and negative. I don't know how to fix it. Yeah, like as I said, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Just you go back to what you had and add the things that you were going to give him an ultimate. Because it's literally a case of you took you took away while giving and you took away too much. And now you're left with a character that is kind of what he was and he's super focused on it, but it's not really true to what he is.
and you took away the thing that made the most sense for Luigi as a character. And yeah, uh, I don't ever want to see Luigi's changes in Ultimate translated to another Smash game. This is a design for Luigi that needs to be left behind. I love Luigi, but also I hate Luigi. Like, I don't think I have a character that I'm more divided on. And I was less divided before Smash Ultimate. Yeah. And now that they've added more and like, yeah, one plunger is good, but the rest is just weird. I don't know. I'm not. I, I, I guess. They couldn't even make it tether. Together that alone would have just helped with his recovery he, so much. How, what do you feel like he should more represent? Should he, should he try to follow Luigi's Mansion more? Should he go back to how he used to be in uh, in Melee? Should he try to further follow in Mario's footsteps? Like, where, where, where does that begin? I think that you need to purposefully design a weird technique that Luigi can take advantage of. I think what? that Luigi is a character that needs to be overlooked initially, but have some kind of secret to him that if you unlock it, then he is better. And like, he doesn't even realize he's falling into it. Like how wave dashing was in Melee. Like I know that is a complete accident and a glitch of a technique but it's so fitting for Luigi to benefit so much from it. And it's- Then just put wave dashing back in Smash, which I arguably think they should at this point. Like with that in hindsight, you can still develop something. Just make it easier to perform like in Rivals. Like that. Like you don't have to make Luigi clean for Smash Brothers. He can just be weird and goofy. Uh, insofar as do I think he should reference Luigi's mansion more? <sighs> Maybe, but like at most I would replace either Green Missile or Fireball. I actually think that Green Missile could still work the exact same way. Just have like the vacuum back, like have it push. Like sometimes it just explodes and yeah, green missile with the with the poltergeist. Yeah, there you go. That works. Launches him. Right. Oh, that could. Oh, that would work. That would. That would be fun. That'd be fun to do. Like, you like I don't want to get into a discussion about wave dashing and you know, I don't like that it's a, a technically controversial topic. When I feel that games like Rivals absolutely prove that it helps so much. And it adds so much to player expressiveness and allowing the care the player to interact with the you know open movement of a platform fighter. But if it allows me to see Luigi chase down Sonic and punish him for trying to disengage with neutral from neutral exchange because he thinks he's too fast to be caught, yeah, I really want it back. It wouldn't lose anything with him, but it would still, but it would be a more, it, it, it's so, hmm. I do like his project. If it's, if it's fair, James, Sonic would probably have a really bad wave dash. Not every character that's inherently fast has a good wave dash. Like Zero in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, he has a very, very bad wave dash. M change as well to Green Missile, where instead of pure 12.5%, it's it will happen one in six times every single time as a Russian roulette kind of thing. Okay, I, I like that. I do like that. I do like that. So you like you get more likely to have it misfire the more you use it. Mm -hmm. So like you can plan around it, but more isn't often it based on traction? That, he will. I wouldn't be surprised if it is. Probably Sonic. Sonic has good traction, for the most part, and Luigi used to have really bad traction, and then they, you know, they took that aspect away from him for, I literally couldn't tell you why they took it away from him. Fall on his face. I, I definitely feel like he shouldn't be such a combo-focused character. Agreed. Like, if Luigi wins, like, he didn't mean to do that. Yes. I don't know if but I like the, with, like, I like the like, burst the of, like, confidence. It's like, it's... It's very reminiscent of just like, you know, his bursts of heroism and confidence in 
a variety of games. I think that that like burst damage via combos is translates very well to that aspect of his character. I like that Luigi can it is literally known for like zero to deathing people. It's funny. I like it, and it's also. I guess kind of weird, which also fits Luigi. It's very funny that the two characters in Smash, known for zero to deathing people, are Kazuya Mishima and fucking Luigi. <laughs> because reads that he has, or something. Ah, uh, gosh, this is a hard character to talk about, right? Even though technically, if you look at it online, it's basically you know flirting versus harassment. Because there's just, there's so much variance to Luigi, and so, like, I don't want to take anything Smash original away from him, because it did so much for him. Um, I do think hitting people with his butt is weird. I'm looking at this ultimate art of him, and I think him yeah. having his butt is, like, like, Wario should do that. Like, I know Haha -ha Stinky Man is, like, what I'm against, but, like, Wario's, like, an everything in the kitchen sink character. Luigi is, like... Luigi, your ass isn't going to hurt him, sweetheart. You don't got much there. <laughs> hey, he's trying. Let him be. He doesn't know what he's doing. He looks like he's having fun as he's doing these wacky moves, which I do. Le Luigi should be terrified the entire time he's in the match. You see, that I don't agree with that. Because when he's with his brother, Luigi's not always terrified. And he's always going to be there with his brother in, in Smash. Even in the original Smash Brothers, Mario and Luigi, they fight together. Like, I don't think that, that Luigi should be scared all the time. I don't think that that's true to his character. Especially with how much arguable development he's had over the years. To want to get into a brawl. Yes. Also, side note, just, God, he has one subspace emissary scene, and it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did kind of show the, steal the show the that, but just seeing him, like, panic with the wall, that's Luigi. That's, that's what Smash Brothers did for his character. Yeah. So, like, make no doubt Luigi is in mixed. Yeah, like, if it isn't clear, same, same. That's, yeah. that's fair. But also, Especially in, weird with what Ultimate Luigi. did to him. Yeah, these characters are hard to, to talk oh, about, hang on. man. <laughs> I thought this would be shorter. They've, they've got so much legacy behind them that you just, there's so many interpretations you have to juggle, and it, it's, it's just, ah. Uh, like, I, I don't even know where I want to put him in mix, because, like, I feel so much stronger about him than most of these characters. Yeah, yeah, like, I care about them, but also I go, but I like playing as him less in Ultimate, though. You know, yeah, like I like, feel the same way. Also, Smash sorry, Emperor's phone call. character is right up there with, like, several of the characters in A tier, but what is, how badly it treats, like, how badly it reflects his character is right down there with, like, I feel like Diddy Kong and Sonic, like... I, yeah. oh, I, I do not think we're going that far. I don't think that Luigi's character in Smash is anywhere near as, even with the way that Ultimate butchered him, I don't think we're going as far as Monkey. It, he plays like nothing like they should, and it's just so split. I, I honestly wonder if he should just be like reworked. Because it's funny. I know that it's like Luigi shouldn't know what he's doing, and sometimes he does, but aside from like being afraid in Luigi's Mansion, he clearly is confident in what he's doing with the way he just, especially in Luigi's Mansion 3, where he's like slamming the shit out of these ghosts into the floor and the way that you can just rapidly slam a boo into the floor over and over and over again. I get that there's a sense of, there's a sense of confidence and understanding of what he's doing from Luigi in those games. But I know, like, every cutscene is, he's scared. But gameplay says, yeah, he's a little scared, but he still knows what he's doing. It's a fit, this weird Smash Brothers, like, absurdity. Like, but then you lose, like, the connection to Mario, and it's, you have to change Mario at the same time to do that. I don't want to do that either. And I don't either. Ah. Oh. Uh, 
Okay. Um, I think that Smash 4 was a nice please balance. Please leave in the comments your ideas of how to fix Luigi. <laughs> this would be very helpful in various regards. However, if you lean too closely to one interpretation or the other, you will be docked points. I don't care if we'll be docked points. I still think that Smash 4 Luigi is exactly what he should be. All he needs is the grab. And... I don't know, maybe a little bit more fearful expressiveness. Other than that, it's like, he doesn't need very much. Some things just need to be, we need to, we need to go, we need to control Z on Luigi. I think that alone will fix a lot. <laughs> uh, I feel like he's better than Yoshi. Well, I care I, about I, him a I, lot more than Yoshi. Yes. I... If if we're putting him anywhere in C tier, I think, but I but I but Yoshi's Yoshi's. Uh, oh no, oh no, okay. Go back. I want to be good. <laughs> Maybe I'll just. I mean, arguably, he's still decent. I mean, Luigi's character got neutered to hell and back, but as a competitive character, he's still like a mid tier character. Put Luigi like on top of, like just not on the actual tier list, just on like the left side on mixed itself. No, put him in the green tier because he's green. Just Luigi. Yes. Oh, cause like I, I don't want to leave him like this, but I don't know what else to say about him. I, I don't know where to go with this either. Yeah, me neither, he buddy. He's the most interesting man in the world. <laughs> But well, well, let's let's establish something here because I feel like what I love about Luigi is what has been established by him. But this tier list is talking about their actual designs. Like Fox is su such a great S tier because of how he plays right now. Uh, going back down there, Ike is an A tier because of how he plays right now and like what he did for Fire Emblem is great. But overall, oh. like I feel like each of these characters has been placed for design first and foremost. Right. And I feel like Luigi, as his Smash design, does not fit the character. I adore what it's done for him so much, but that's his legacy, not his design, if that makes any sense. That, yeah, it, it, it kind of does, but it, it, it's weird because, like, at the same time, like, if you ask me where I put Melee Luigi, that's B tier. It's easy. Yes. I'd say it, Smash 4 Luigi's like an well. A. Because that doesn't have the same problems that I have with Luigi. Mm -hmm. Even taking Luigi's Mountain into account, the Luigi's Mansion into account, because it, it, it still fits that Luigi's Mansion does that, that dash attack is perfect. Yes, it's, it's always been perfect. Yes, I feel like looking at him as a Smash Brothers design, something that's supposed to represent the character. I'd want him lower than C, because the the way that he plays is not completely goes against the character. He's got great references, and he's still like in terms of animation, he sells the character. I, I feel similar to him how I feel to DDD, but I also feel that DDD does so much, so much better. But I also feel that oh, DDD had rough. more to pull from. <laughs> poor to poor reach Luigi. That, whereas Luigi kind of made it on his own, and that kind of fits like a weird sub narrative of Luigi development, <laughs> where it's like. Yes, there's this meta narrative of Luigi developing as a character and becoming a personality through his design in Smash. That's so weird. Yeah, it, it's. I didn't expect to find Luigi to be the most interesting character in Smash Brothers to talk about, but wow, there's there are there are there are sub levels to this. Yeah, he's got more layers than a Shrek man. Yeah, I I do kind of. I, I kind of want to put him in D tier. I I don't feel as egregious about If it's him. Ultimate he Luigi, yeah, he could great, go in that tier. But I feel like the yeah, core of that makes sense. Sure, sure, DDD is missing things, but that's because, like, he suffers, which still fits the character, but it just isn't a great translation into a fighting game character. Right. Luigi is a fantastic fighting game character, but it's not the character that he is. Like, Lu Luigi kind of... I'm trying to think of a character that just would fit this one grab and you're dead kind of. I did. As it as Kazuya Mishima.
that's who I can think of fits the design of one throw and you're dead. In like a combo centric character? Or, yeah. I know this is like, Luigi, this may not be like around the time Kazuya released, but still no, no. it just makes it, me it, laugh. Kind of like the momentum of just like how just the name is a meme at this like point. The skill of someone like Meta Knight. Yeah, I kind of want to put him next to Meta Knight. Like I, I don't feel like near, he's not going underneath Donkey Kong. No sorry, not a chance. <laughs> You want to hurt me a little more. Just to hurt you more. Oh, look at the look at this salt that you're pouring into my gaping wound, Luigi. <laughs> but I do I do kind of feel the same way about Meta Knight in terms of like his ultimate design. Like where Meta Knight lacks that part of his character of just being like <laughs> he doesn't climax. Just going back to that joke. Hey, that's Luigi's a funny missing good. that. Oh, oh. oh no! I can't make the same joke again because it doesn't work with Luigi. It worked. It worked really well with Man Knight, though. <laughs> Luigi's missing just the his uncertainty. He should have weird moves that do not combo into each other unless you do something completely unexpected. Right now, it's just bread and butter, just kind of following Mario of just like endlessly juggling you and no he shouldn't be able to do that I feel but he has that casually with the green missile misfire and the super jump punch like most people aren't gonna do the Luigi he was fireballed just like mash that's it also true. and that's, that's gonna also come true. out and like be a miracle Hail Mary but I, I agree that his at a high level play is so detrimental to the idea of the rest of his kit. I still disagree on that front. I either want to put him at the top of D tier or the bottom of C tier. Hmm. Just continuing on this train of thought. I want to agree, and then part of me wants to just make a new letter in between C and D that is just Luigi. <laughs> just an L. The blacklist. <laughs> the purgatory of Luigi. The place between heaven and hell, there is only Luigi. Hmm. Now, actually, what's between heaven and hell is uh, round one. Let's rock. Hmm. Well, I feel, I, I feel like I don't want to step into that level no, because I, that's just going to tangent I, off into oh, no, like I, all I sorts agree. of it's jokes. Like, okay. Okay. Mankind knew that they couldn't. Con levels. They this couldn't control society, so instead of reflecting on themselves, they blame the beasts. And this right here is where Samus is in the strange void next to does not work. Now, that, that, that Dual one, out. whatever. That will spiral out. Oh, yes, yes. I don't like Guilty Gear Strive very much. So we've reached the Dr. Mario Trench. <laughs> <laughs> Just start building a World of Light map off yeah. of this tier list. Uh, and over there, we'll I, say the peer refuses to put Donkey Kong any lower than this portion. <laughs> It's it's like one of those um carnival games when someone's sitting above above a uh, thing of water and it's just me trying to throw like rocks just to knock Donkey Kong down and you trying to block it down. <laughs> oh my god! Just get down, Mr. President, to Donkey Kong. <laughs> <sighs> I I do feel stronger about the top of B than I do the bottom of C, because like who is current bottom I of love... C? Remind me. Uh, bottom of C is the me gunner, like right next to Shulk in the me brawler. Whereas okay. the top of D currently is Meta Knight. I can I can feel top of D with the caveat of like D tier. I get how to improve everyone else. Luigi. Ah. <laughs> yeah, he, I, I I agree. I agree. Uh, like, he almost feels like he needs an overhaul, but I don't want to sacrifice so much of his kids. I don't think he needs I an don't overhaul. Want to put him any lower. I know. I know I don't want to either, and I value Unless you that know, so much. Like I value re revising his stats as an overhaul, Luigi, to an incredible degree. All right, all right. Uh, so a, a soft top of D tier until we probably inevitably come back to this. As maybe the comments will have something. Yes, please maybe, tell us. Maybe, maybe maybe we'll have inspiration. Please, when we talked about you giving comments like twenty minutes ago, how <laughs> how fix Luigi? This is, this is my form of giving help. comments. <laughs> we are desperate. <laughs> Okay, okay, let's, let's, let's Okay, let's it's one. nest time, but it's actually not nest time because it's actually break time. Uh, this will probably be the first and only break of the stream. This will be like... It's gonna be like at least 20 to 30 minutes. I'm gonna go eat, 
I'm going to go refill my water, walk around a bit. I have to give my cat his insulin needle. And, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, I'll see you in 25 to 30 minutes. And, uh, yeah. Uh, hope you enjoy talking about the clearly S-tiered Ness. Uh, <laughs> uh, not even close. Realistic play. <laughs> okay, you know what? You know what? Yeah, sure. We're going to play environmental no noises. Pikmin. OST. Environmental noises. Half hour extended version of environmental noises. Somebody is credited as a fucking composer for this. <laughs> All right, here you go. This will be riveting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, my favorite. Turn it up, man. Turn it up. I'll be back.
I'm back. I'm glad to see the environmental noises has scared away a majority of the audience. <laughs> God damn it. <coughs> Excuse me. Ugh. But yes, um, hello, I'm back. I'm fed. The cat has been fed. He's had his needle. He's going to go and sleep for, for a little while now because he usually does that after he gets his shot. And uh, yeah, let's uh, continue. I, I hope that the people that left come back. Um. Anyways, Ness. Ness, I think I said a majority of the stuff I was going to say about Ness when we talked about Lucas. I mean, that was, I mean, that was the plan. It might, uh, it might, I might take tomorrow off. Just, you know, because I have, I have video work to do and other stuff. Ugh. Yes, I did, Chuckles. Uh, that's where the S-tier joke at the, when, before I left came from. But yeah, Ness. Uh, Ness is clearly one of the most experimental characters in the entire game. I don't think that a character like Ness would ever exist in any other game than Smash 64. This character, as a design, does not would not have been made as they are in anything other than Smash 64. And they're okay. They're like a B. I think that their design of representing the game they're from more than representing themselves is a lot less of a hard pill to swallow with Ness than it is for Lucas because Ness doesn't really have much of a personality or a character. He's very much a blank slate that, you know, sometimes has to call home because he gets homesick. And uh, he's just a kid with psychic powers. That's basically what he boils down to. And he doesn't really, doesn't really feel like he ever really evolves past that point either. As a majority of Earthbound is just you interacting with a very odd world. And uh, yeah, Ness as a character, it doesn't really have much to represent. I mean, he's basically like... He's basically nothing like he is in Smash. He doesn't use PK Fire, PK Freeze. He uses healing abilities, and he's also the one that takes the damage for the team. I guess in that regard, he's a paladin. If I, if my years of playing World of Warcraft or anything to teach me. Uh, yeah, there's not really much to say about Ness. I mean, he's... he's Ness. Arguably the weirdest character in Smash 64. Even weirder than Jigglypuff, because at least Jigglypuff was popular. Even when Smash 64 came out, Earthbound was such a, a deep cut. Like, out of nowhere choice. Even more than F-Zero, because at least F-Zero had F-Zero X come out like a little bit before Smash 64 did. Yeah, um, he's like a B tier. Oh, I'm sure somebody would ask for him if he wasn't in Smash. He does fit a niche that I think people would want. But I don't think he would have ever gone in if, he was, if it wasn't at the very beginning. And, uh, yeah. Ness. He became a way better character design overall in Smash 4. 
like for the longest time, it didn't feel like they knew what they were doing with Ness. And then just surprisingly in Smash 4, they just re they reimagined him a little bit and then he just became like a decent character and now he's like a decent character. He's like a character that's never going to get past mid-tier because of the fact that his recovery is so Smash 64 and is one of the worst in the game because of how easy it is to exploit. It doesn't matter how good his throw power is or how good his combo game is or anything along those lines. That, that recovery is basically his Achilles heel. He did get more fun by Ultimate. Absolutely. And it's nice that, you know, even though Kirby and Ness share the same voice actress, it still feels nice that they went back and they gave Ness a voice, like a new set of voice lines in Smash 4 that feel way more in line with Ness as a character and feel like way better. They, he sounds like he emotes more. And, uh, yeah. It's funny. I remember when Ness was teased was like a part of the leak for Smash 4. And what Ness was like, other than, you know, the hilarious, the hilarity that was Photoshop Shulk, sorry, Photoshop Little Mac being Shulk. People thought that Ness confirmed that there was a leak because Ness's shirt is striped, but at the very bottom, there's like a little piece that isn't, that's like past the, the yellow stripe, there's like a little piece of blue that hangs down. And that isn't in his render for Smash 4. And everybody was like, "That it's not, it's not accurate to the design. That means that this is fake. Ness confirms that this is, a, this is fake. And then... He, uh... It was all real. I'll definitely say that uh, I love Magicant when it's like Omega form. The music that Earthbound got in Smash 4 was absolutely amazing. The Magicant 8 Melodies remix is like one of my favorite Smash songs of all time. It's, it's so good. The way it just sounds like a dream, like... Like you're lost in a dream, and then you've got the the beautiful beautiful harmony of the of the eight melodies coming together at the very end before the thing re before the thing resets. Why Magic Hand wasn't in Smash for Wii U, I don't know. But I'm at least glad it's here in Smash Ultimate. But yeah, Ness, he's like a B tier. He's okay. Just as a, just, just, to, just to get away from that. We've done it. We've Confusion. escaped the Luigi, whatever it was. We're free of the negative zone, and now it's Ness. Uh, Ness is okay. <laughs> no, it's Ness. Ness is. Uh, we've established a lot of how we. What do you think of his new ultimate victory theme? It's okay. Personally, I don't think that. I think that his uh, melee and Smash sixty four victory theme was already bet the best one he's had. Like, it's okay. I, I don't really have anything to say about it other than that. The the Earthbound Boys from how, what we talked about, Lucas. Yep. I like Lucas a lot more. I do as well. Just, just straight up. Like, he Ness falls underneath that. Interestingly, they gave Ness PK Freeze one of his, as one of his custom moves to make up for Lucas being cut. I don't think it was for Lucas being cut. I just think that, you know, it fit the slot. Same problem of just, I don't like that he references the uh, the game over his actual character, because I feel like that's a disservice to whatever character that design appears on if there is more to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ness in particular, like, correct me if I'm wrong, I have not played Earthbound, but Ness is so much more of a a physical fighter. He's a, he's a cross between a tank and a support. He, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a tank healer. Yeah. yeah. So, also, uh, so, he's a paladin. Yes. Damn, Pear, what do you mean in World of Warcraft? Yes. 
And that is not in Smash Brothers in the slightest. No. I, I do want to give him, like, a lot of the same compliments that we gave I mean, Brawl's is good, too, but I think I just like... I like the simplicity and the melody of his Melee and Smash 64 one. Lucas, the Earthbound effects, Sublime. Mwah. I love those so much. I would not want to go another game without them. They're some of the best effects across the entire roster. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the changes they've made to his Final Smash of him bringing in his friends to do it. I feel like that fixes a lot of the problem of just him not, yep. just not being his attack. Agreed, agreed. This is the power of friendship now. Yeah. That's wonderful. I like that his bat reflects. I wish it had like the Smash effects, like when you KO a Starman. Oh, I do too. But That'd I be nice. In the game. Yes. Uh, I want to put in a caveat that yes, I hate playing against Ness as much as literally everybody else, but that does not mean he's a bad design. Right. Like, I actually... If there's any character, a few characters in this game, yes, that everybody hates. Everybody hates fighting everybody. But there are very few characters in this game that I think people would say they hate fighting more than Ness. Ness isn't exactly hard to fight. But god damn it if he's not completely and totally obnoxious. I feel that his PK fire keeping you in place is, you know, very reminiscent of Ness because Ness is this very optimistic, bring friends together kind of character. And I feel like that holding it in place compared to Lucas's get off me is absolutely fine. Yeah. Uh, Psy Magnet as well. I like that he can absorb damage that fits what he's supposed to be in the game. Yep. And his Psy Magnet should deal damage, in my opinion. The last of the nice things I can say about him. Yep. Do you know what PK Flash is in Earthbound? I haven't the slightest idea. Cool. Yeah, it's a random chance of death move, and otherwise it does status effects. Why doesn't Ness have any? Don't you mean PK Farsh, as Ness tends to call it in Melee and in Brawl? Status effects. Yeah. That, that fits the support angle so much. Yeah. Just something that, like, paralyzes to li The bat should be the cornerstone of his playstyle, I feel. Mm -hmm. And it isn't. It's even in his render, but it's barely thrown out because it's so risky to use. I would like him to use more aerials that utilize his uh, toys because there is a certain nostalgia of childhood that Earthbound represents. And I feel like his smash attacks represent that exceptionally well. I love that his strongest attacks are just him being a kid. Yeah. Enjoying life, playing with his toys. And, and since he's way more thing. of a blank slate, I feel that you can get away with stuff with Ness that you can't with Lucas. Excuse me. Use him like that. That is Ness. Doesn't he have a technical infinite with it? Maybe in Smash 4, but I don't think he does an ultimate. S to me. A kid with exceptional talent, making the most of what he has and enjoying himself as much as he can along the way. Like, that's that's that little special magic of the Mother series that's put in, like, almost subtly. And I really do love that. And I wish I wish there were more of it in there. And PK Flash just sucks. Yes, yeah. it does. It is terrible. It's a bad move. It doesn't represent what it is in-game at all. And it's just... It's such a missed opportunity of an attack in every way. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention that I do love, I love that uh, hitting yourself with PK Thunder is very similar to how you might mess up a teleport in Earthbound. And like just to have that blow up in your face after needing to run in a straight line for a while. I love that little touch to it, I think. Is that what his um, entrance animation is? Yes. Okay, okay, neat. Uh... I, I do want to throw out here just because I know that these characters have a lot of fans. I'm not saying that the Earthbound moveset should be sacrificed. I actually think that a third Earthbound character should, like Kumatora or somebody, should bring it be brought into the game with this moveset to allow the Earthbound boys to actually be who they're supposed to be. Agreed. Uh, I'd argue Ness is closer to what he's supposed to be than Lucas. Or, you know, you could just bring in Ninten, who would just use the the kid stuff and be mostly just that. I think that that is, you know, that could work. Like, Lucas has more of a focus on PSI. Ness is in the middle using, you know, Yo-Yo and the baseball bat and, and PSI. And Ninten is just, like, toys 
think that that could be a good way to balance it out. Although I do think that they should definitely change Lucas before they change Ness. Where does Ness rank for you? Uh, Ness is in C for me because, like, as a yeah, baseline, that makes sense. I really appreciate him. I appreciate him <clears throat> as basically the surprise rep of uh, Smash 64. I mean, there, there are better choices for it, such as Sukapon from Joy Mech Fight, my son and my little <laughs> savior. Did you know that Joy Mech Fight had a training yes. mode two years before Street Fighter introduced it in Street Fighter Alpha? The only thing I really know about Joy Mech Fight is Sokopan, and that there are, for some reason, somebody decided to just remix like a couple of themes from from that game, and they're incredible. Like there's, they remix like two songs. I think one's like the first stage, and one's like I think it's based on like a castle level. And they're both like these rocking remixes that are like, holy shit, this is incredible. Why is this like not in Smash? <laughs> Why is this music not in Smash? <laughs> this whole time, I was going like, where is it? Where is it? There it is. I couldn't for the life of you tell you what those, I couldn't for the life of me tell you what those songs are called. But they're really good. Uh, no, I did not know that. Yeah. Utterly incredible, revolutionary, teaches you the command inputs in the game with a demo with replays. <laughs> incredible title. Utterly, utterly fantastic. Yeah. And while Ness doesn't quite compare to that, my good boy, my savior, Sukapon Joy Mech Fight, I think he's still okay. I don't think that he's great at what he does, but I think that at a baseline he is good and he has room to improve rather than the fact that I feel that he is supremely lacking. Like he has big, big caveats for me, but at a baseline, he's okay. Yeah. 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 Like for, for a design that like references his games, he succeeds at that. And yeah. I just wish it referenced the character more. I'm definitely mm -hmm. putting him beneath Lucas. I just oh, like playing against Lucas more, but Lucas is the better design. Yes. I do not I agree. I think that Lucas is specifically held back because he's trying to be Ness. I had Lucas in B, so like I have Ness much lower than him. Where he would go in regards to the rest? Uh, I would compare him to Shulk and say how you feel okay. compared to that. Well, that's a... Well, I think between the two of them... Only one of them could actually be argued to be a Ness to your character, and it's not Ness. This is another interesting case of like, we've actually gotten some really good comments about Shulk that have gotten me just kind of, just kind of to question him a little bit more. Okay. But I do, I do still feel like the Earthbound boys showcase their games better than Shulk does Xenoblade. I would still put Ness above Shulk. Okay, I don't think I would put him much further than that. Um, I, I don't think so either. The fact that Ness has a move that is just incorrect annoys me. Yes. Like, especially now that we have an instant death move in Smash to show that, yes, it oh, can be done. Oh, if that was like Splack. Oh, that'd be great. Oh, people I would don't be want so more mad. instant kill moves. But, it, but it'd be so worth it to use this terrible, terrible move. For a small chance. Uh, n next past Shulk is the mean brawler? No, he's not past that. Alright, alright. Yeah, I can get- th bottom of C tier I can agree with. Yeah. Just kinda chilling with the- chilling with Shulk with the RPG boys. Yeah, can he be improved? Yes, but he makes me happy. And like, yeah. he has- he has enough- And that's all you need. For me. Alright, alright, so that feels good to me. Our next character? Ah. Uh, I am just oh, going to start fuck me. Spot. We're already at Captain Falcon? Is, not only is Captain Falcon S. What do I say about Captain Falcon that hasn't literally been echoed by anyone and everyone that, like, even remotely cares about Smash? What- what do I say? What- what can I say? He's- Incredible! He is he is the second best design in the game behind Fox, bar none. 
everything about Falcon is hype as fuck. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, Captain Falcon is the only reason why Ganondorf is fun to watch. Because Ganondorf copies the most fun moveset in the game. He does it poorly, but that's why still people still like to watch him. Captain Falcon is also a character that you cannot change. At all. Ever. <laughs> every one of, almost every single one of his moves is iconic to at least a small extent. Falcon Punch, Falcon Kick, Raptor Boost, and his up special. I forget the name of it. His knee, his dunk, his tilts, his taunts, his even his freaking basic pose. Everything about Falcon is fantastic. But he's still not better than Fox. If only for the reason that he doesn't utilize the as doesn't utilize the open flow movement of a platform fighter nearly as well as Fox does. He is second. He is uncontestedly nobody comes close. Second. But I still think that Fox is better. And unlike Fox, who is whose personality is perfectly reflected through Smash. Falcon Dive, okay, thank you. That was always the one that eluded me. Because we just like to call it the yes, because that's what Captain Falcon says when he uses it. Um, fuck, what was I going to say? Oh, yes. While Fox's personality is very well... It's very well, like, displayed through the way he fights and his mannerisms and stuff like that. I don't think that a lot of people know that a lot of what Captain Falcon is in Smash while it is immaculate, is not really Captain Falcon in F-Zero in terms of personality and what he does. Captain Falcon in Smash is a Sentai hero. 100%. The way he moves, the way he sounds, the way that all of his attacks have like names like Falcon Punch and Falcon Kick. These are such iconic moves that literally all his codec is for Snake is just giving David Hayter and Christopher Randolph excuses to do Falcon Punch and Falcon Kick. <laughs> That's all it is. And you know what? It doesn't need to be anything else. Is Captain Falcon that much like his actual F-Zero self? No, and you know what? I don't think anybody gives a shit either <laughs> because I think they love the Sentai hero Captain Falcon way more or would love him way more than, you know, the Douglas J. Falcon that's actually in F-Zero. Falcon is the reason why Blaziken's key art has him with the knee, which is funny because there are people that think that Blaziken would be a good echo fire for, for Captain Falcon, but I do not understand how in the hell we came to that conclusion. Like, Captain Falcon in Smash is like if the. It's basically what you get if the writer. If, like, the developers of Smash. Like, looked at, like, a brief description of Captain Falcon in a picture. And they just were like, make the rest up. Have, just, what is Cap, what's Ken Falcon like? I mean, he, I wouldn't say Ken Falcon is boring. He's just very, you know, like, he's way more, like, down to earth than, you know, the one, the guy screaming in English, Captain, Fal like, Falcon Punch, Falcon Kick.
Like he's not he's not like over the top. I'd say he's like way more grounded in like actual F Zero compared to the one we have here in Smash. This is not Captain Falcon, the F Zero character. This is very much this is very much Captain Falcon, the Smash character, and yeah, he's. He's so good. He's literally he's he is literally Smash's Sentai hero. But I you know what? I gotta say something, and this might upset some people. I kinda wish that Fal like Falcon Punch, I kinda wish it had more impact than it does in Smash currently. And I wish it had better sound design. Well, I don't, you know, think that the smash the sound design is, you know, inherently the character's fault. Because it's not. For example, if Falcon Punch had the sound effect of like mixed in if they had if it had the sound effect of Little Max KO uppercut mixed in with the explosion, where it sounds like it's a jet, like like a, like a jet fire flying over you, then it would be perfect. But, I, and maybe it's also just the way that Falcon Punch is delivered, but I've always, I personally have always loved the Smash 64 Falcon Punch the most. Just the way that it's delivered, and the way that the punch comes out at the perfect point. I don't think that the guy who did Falcon in, in Smash 64 gets nearly enough credit. Because I genuinely... Yeah, the Falcon Screech can stay. But I genuinely adore how he did Falcon Punch. And I think he did it way better than Falcon's current voice actor. That's a personal opinion. Falcon is still second best character design in the entire game. Like, nothing I say is going to budge him from that spot. So if I say there's something that I think could be better, don't think that's like, oh, you're not going to put Falcon in one of the top spots. I would be more concerned if somebody didn't put Captain Falcon in the top spots. I'll definitely say the slowdown, like zoom in of Smash Ultimate, definitely added more impact. But the sound, but the sound of actually punching them is still like not that great. And never forget that the Falcon Punch is technically canon. It is technically canon. And is still, to this day, one of the most hyped things in any anime I have ever seen. The entire end section of the F-Zero anime lives rent-free in my head. And I will continue to let it keep living there rent-free because of how fucking fantastic it is. From the music, to the voice acting, to the timing on the punch, to the way the, the Falcon Punch is, you know, it's used. Uh, like, yeah, just... I feel like if I were to say anything more, I'd just be I'd just be paraphrasing other people. Captain Falcon is easily 100 percent the second best character design in the entire series. I don't think that there will ever be a character that comes along in the future and is anywhere near as good as Captain Falcon. And the only reason he's not better than Fox is because Fox utilizes the utilizes the open space of a platform fighter way better than Falcon does. 
everything every time falcon is on screen you are rooting for that falcon it doesn't matter if your favorite character is on the screen if it's if he's fighting captain falcon you're more than likely going to vote for the captain falcon because he's literally just that fun to watch captain falcon much like Fox, is Smash. And the legacy of this character, regardless if F-Zero ever gets a game again, this character will continue to live on as an icon of video game history simply because of his appearance in this series. It doesn't matter if he's not entirely true to F-Zero's Captain Falcon. This is Smash Captain Falcon, and this character is an easy God-tier design. God bless the development team when they were making this character. You guys knew exactly what you were doing, and yeah, you 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 nailed it on the head perfectly 100% captain falcon transcendent tier plus here for me he is at the top of my tier list i yeah yeah that I that makes captain sense falcon is the best smash brothers character because he embodies smash brothers better than literally anything in my opinion well, I, I well if your opinion, i still Name think fox does it better but fox he's still second like, there is another character in this game who is what fox does but better i've been avoiding saying up. that so Man, uh, 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 i respect your opinion watch this entire time oh my god right the spaces but if you want to talk about a character nice, their nice dash dance in there, Brothers, Falcon AI. Captain Falcon is a racing game character in every single sense of the word. There's a reason we said that he was what Sonic is supposed to be. He is such an amazing, flashy, rushdown character that I do not have a single problem with. I know. I know that there is a contingency that is upset that he has a very, very slow turning animation. I mean, it is a notable problem that has basically taken a high tier and put him in mid tier in Smash Ultimate. And uh, it, I sincerely hope that it's not something they keep going forward. Like, it yeah, is I distinctly programmed to be worse than other characters. Yeah, and it sucks! I, I, I do have, like, a little... I, in my notes, there's just a little star at the bottom, like, Ultimate isn't the best version of the character, but I... <laughs> you, want, you want something spicy? They're freaking wrong. If what? he had oh, a oh, better, what? faster turn, I guarantee you he'd feel more like Sonic. No, he wouldn't, because Captain Falcon is way closer to characters that are in his, that are in his like speed class. Captain Falcon does not have the tools to just disengage from neutral if he wants to. Sonic is so much faster than even Falcon that he can literally just determine when neutral when neutral starts and when neutral stops. Not to mention, Falcon doesn't have those like heavily pun like those heavily exploitable moves. They're designed to punish people that try to approach him, like Sonic does. He doesn't have anything like Spin Dash that could work in his favor in that regard. That turnaround animation, as I said, puts a high-tier character in mid-tier, and that character should not be in mid-tier. For the love of God, do not bring it back. And we'd have some of his true, similar problems. True. Have you no, we would not, because turning? Captain Falcon... Because Captain Falcon's options and frame data are not on par with Sonic. A race car? It's hard. <laughs> like <laughs> That's true, but F-Zero games, you're not really ever turning around. So that aspect of being slow to turn around doesn't really matter for a, 
a racing genre where you're you're basically just you know trying to avoid things and not fly off and stay on the track and it, it kind of does distract from the design a little bit and it is very detrimental to falcon as a character Captain Falcon is that jolt of forward momentum. Captain Falcon is what you want, where you commit to an option and you absolutely go. I feel that that's not at all a disservice to his character. It I is, that that but is it's not notable enough to knock him down at all. Of the hype that he brings, of the decision of, I am going to do this, let's freaking go with all of the reckless abandon that you could possibly have. He is beautiful as a character. Yeah. 100, 100% agreed. I know people start looking at him like, oh, he should he should use his gun. He's got it right there on his, on his side. No, the fact that he has a gun and doesn't use it is one of my favorite things about that him. That is a statement. Because he doesn't care. He's like, yeah, I could just shoot you, but can he give his gun to Snake? I think he would use it better. This is the flashier, more enjoyable option that just shows like that his race car drivers are performers. Like they're the, they're athletes. I mean, if he really wanted to make a statement, he'd pistol whip somebody with it. Absolutely. <laughs> Captain Falcon embodies that so well. The ridiculous anime levels of just Falcon punches the best move in the entire game. 100%. In terms of a spectacle. Yeah. There's, there's, no, absolutely. It feels better to land a Falcon punch than it does most of the final smashes in the game. Absolutely. I. Well, that's because it's much harder to land Falcon punch than majority of the final smashes in the game. So I'm not going to lie. I'm planning on making a Captain Falcon video just in general. Like, you didn't hear it from me, but I want to make a video just all about Captain Falcon, <laughs> not just in Smash, but just in general. And yeah, Falcon punch utterly utterly incredible it it hits that kind of feeling where like you look at a wrestling move and a wrestler's finisher and it's like okay you're just like dropping your elbow on him with some theatrics that's not that special but part of you wants to believe in it so bad that you go out of your way to cheer for and pop for it. Captain Falcon is that showmanship turned up to its most absolute. He has some of the best voice clips in the entire game. It absolutely sells that showmanship. Because he doesn't just, like, elbow you. It's a full-on... I the, I mean, they got rid of the elbow. To, it's more of like a backhand him. attack now. It makes it makes it sound like he's trying so hard. And I can't tell whether or not I like the new forward smash more, or I, or it doesn't really work. I I don't know. I I I mean, from an animation perspective and animator's perspective, I think it's fantastic. But you know, it's like an actual move. Do everything that he's trying to do and the impact of his moves still sell that absolutely i love does it really matter no as, not quite as many as donkey kong but just being able to just just spam up tilts at the at the ledge uh go for a hell mary disrespect with his raptor boost off of the stage yes oh i'm so glad or that just, they added that it, it, it says something that captain falcon probably would have been an s tier in melee and he's gone up since then. Yes, exactly. Like, I mean, I don't know if I go that far. I still think Melee Falcon is the best Falcon that's ever falconed. Yeah, we don't talk about Brawl. Brawl was a stumbling block, but that's literally just because they toned down Falcon Punch and they made the game hostile to the idea of Captain Falcon. Well, Falcon and Brawl was just in the wrong game. And, you know, no character is defined by Smash Brothers as much as Captain Falcon is. Like My head can is that the gun isn't even real and it's just literally a holster. That's It's a novelty holster designed to look like that. Fox is close, but Falcon is like you can't take the gun Smash out, brothers. In the sense where, if you see a Captain Falcon playing, you are on board with that Captain Falcon player by the <laughs> notion that it is Captain Falcon. And the the best part about all of this is, if he wasn't in the game, nobody would care about him because it's F Zero is just a. Oh, I'm game. sure he'd still have a following because F Zero is still a really good series. Games, but Smash Brothers has let this character explode in such a way that he's 
I'd almost argue he's the face of the franchise. Like, remember when he was revealed? I'd still argue that's Fox. If only because of the fact that Melee is still the most iconic Smash game. And he's the main character of it. But Falcon is definitely right up there with him. Robin's trailer? Yes. Just the amount of respect that was given to him? Yes. Dodging a sword and just kicking it like it was nothing? Oh my god, that was just... Like... Well, I mean, you're never... Look, they put Robin and Lucina up to an impossible task of up... Of up showing Captain Falcon. You can't one-up Captain Falcon. He almost took her head off before deflecting a sword with his bare wrist. All while having a shit-eating smirk on his face, which, you know... Actually, there's one thing that I'll definitely say about Falcon that I don't like in Modern Smash. Captain Falcon never smiles. Like, no smirk or anything. Captain Falcon never smiles. Like, at all. Let Captain Falcon smile, Sakurai. I, I had that as my wallpaper for a while. But yeah, the Mario effect. But in the Smash trailer for Robin, Captain Falcon's literally n always smiling. He smiles more in that trailer than he does in the entirety of the Smash series. Wow, just the second that his eyes light up, it's just... <sighs> it's so good. Well, let me, let me add on to that, because I can't praise Captain Falcon enough. The original design for F-Zero was actually based off of Tim Burton's Batman. The design is very, fitting. very I mean, flashy American comics. He, I mean, he looks like a Space Ghost character, to be completely honest with you. With as much flash and spectacle as possible. Captain Falcon takes that and he translates that into Smash by mixing it with another incredibly famous franchise. But Captain Falcon, exactly! Comic, which would then go on to Trust influence. Trust me. I work with the Captain Falcon model all the time because I always use him as a reference for when I'm giving character just grab animations for my videos. I will tell you, there is no smile on Captain Falcon's model. So, he never smiles. There is never an instance where he even smirks. And it hurts Sentai me. And, and it shouldn't be that Avengers. way. Which is obvious when you consider that the most famous move in that series, the rider kick, is directly referenced by the Falcon Kick, as well as the famous variant of the Falcon Punch and the Rider Punch. No matter where you are or who you are on this Earth, Captain Falcon is the superhero you didn't know that you wanted. Oh, I know he I wanted Captain Falcon as a hero. <laughs> of that and of his original design, and he elevates that through the roof. It makes me sad that there aren't any other playable F-Zero characters. Just to, just to explore the different ways that this kind of craziness could be, like, fully fleshed out. Okay, okay here's the thing. I kind of don't want there to be more F-Zero characters. Because I feel that if you had, if you included more F-Zero characters, you would need to tone down Falcon. If, at least in his, like, over-the-top personality. Because, again, that's not really what Captain Falcon is in his games. Captain Falcon in Smash is a hammed up caricature of what he is in F-Zero. And I feel that if you put in an F-Zero character that's like they are in F-Zero, it would look very, very weird next to blatantly Sentai hero Captain Falcon. Completely. And as well as that, like, they haven't, like, taken this momentum and tried to... The most they would, I think, would be okay is Black Shadow with the personality he has in the anime. And that's pretty much it. Because even then, Black Shadow in the anime is fairly different from him in the games. Carry it into an F-Zero game. This is, Captain Falcon is the entire reason that people still clamor 
for F Zero. Well, I won't lie. GX is like, an utterly fabulous game. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, it's absolutely amazing. But it it would it would still be down there with like other B and C list Nintendo franchises. But Captain Falcon has ensured that F Zero is never going to leave people's minds. Yeah. Totally. Like just. We at one point compared Lomax KO Punch to uh, the Falcon Punch. And just think of how many people clamor for F-Zero. I think that the KO Punch has way better sound design than the Falcon Punch. And uh, I kind of wish that the sound effects on the KO Punch were on the Falcon Punch. And it would be a lot better if that's anything to go by. The only reason that the KO Uppercut isn't as impactful as Falcon Punch is because it doesn't have any wind-up to it over punch out or over advance wars before that you know did pop off and good for that and good for them they deserve it <laughs> it's i, I don't want to derail the conversation but it was so funny editing through that zero suit samus segment we're just talking about like oh metroid's so great when there's an enemy hunting you and like like literally two days later right? <laughs> vindication yeah we're, yeah we're right but yeah uh i think the only like, this, the smallest change I would make to Captain Falcon is that I don't feel like his final smash is bombastic enough. I feel like either his car should explode, or he should, like, just leap out of it and punch you like he did in, like, yes. the... Yeah, probably hit you with the car, and then, like, superhero jump out the wind, like, open up the pop, open up, pop the top off, leap onto his, onto his roof, jump after you, and then Falcon punch you. That, that's probably the best way to do it. Subspace Emissary? Yes. Oh, but God. even then, like, it's, it's... You can even throw it in a Kira reference of the car sliding to a halt before he jumps out of it, if you want. Still so good, he just runs you over. Yeah, my one caveat, I think, is that uh, I would make the Raptor boost faster and make it damage him, because that's how boosting works in F-Zero. No, it's fine the way it is. That has always felt a little off. It's, it's it's the few moves that he doesn't say anything in. Yes, I agree. I think that you could even just use the uh, F Zero uh, lap starting sound effect for it, and that would just do wonders for it. But God, remember when he hugs you and then you explode, and then he <laughs> moves out of it? He has all of these different fire effects, but for some reason his knee is electrified and it still works. The knee. Oh, you commit to that so hard, and you love it, and it's so good. Oh. Well, in some games, it's good. It was kind of the poopy in Brawl. I got nothing. Like, I think it's Ganondorf's down air, and that's the only thing that compares to the beauty that is the hit stun of the knee. I, I feel like it's telling that people hate Ganondorf's design so much but they still play him so much because the baseline he had was so solid. <sighs> You're not wrong, even remotely in the slightest. Absolutely and utterly. Just, God, Falcon is so, so good. Um, so obviously I had him in S tier. Yeah. yeah obviously. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like the only discussion we have to make right now is just where he... Is, is he better than Snake? Yes, really 100%. It's not even I a contest. Them right next to each other, and I've gone back and forth on them. And this is speaking from someone who loves Snake. That, because that is good question. Changes to Captain Falcon I would make would be... I feel like I could fine-tune things a little bit. Changes to Snake I would make are... I wouldn't really fine tune things. I would completely replace them, but they would be pretty much an equivalent exchange for me. I, I feel like the one thing that would just slightly drop them down. I want Snake to have some kind of shield special stealth that he activates for just like two seconds to just add on to his trap based mechanics and just harken a little bit to that stealth, like to kind of fit that theme of yeah your enemy still knows that snake is here but like shit we lost track of him where is he you know what you know what something i would love is uh he goes into the box and you have the option of putting a grenade in there and if your opponent tries to punish you <laughs> they get hit by the grenade and snake is just in the background the most you need is to just let him walk around in the box it's 
it feels so strange that you just can't move around in the box. And why are all three of its taunts still the box? But if they don't, then he's just vulnerable. Oh, that'd be amazing. Uh, th there, that's the dividing line for me. I feel like Snake has more potential that isn't being met, whereas Captain Falcon has met his potential. There's just some fine tuning and tweaking that could be done. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I, th I think that's They're fair. both still top of S tier. I don't have anybody above these characters. I, I, I remember you saying the snake was top three. I think I know who your second. I or I, like, I think it's up there. I think it's very obvious who is my top two. But like I, Captain Falcon is perfection is impossible. But for what I consider perfect in Smash Brothers, Captain Falcon embodies that. The the first thing I put on my tier list was Cap dragging Captain Falcon to the top of the tier list, and he has never left it. He has never left S tier for me. I've put him in certain places in it, but yeah, I love Captain Douglas J. Falcon. He belongs uh, near the top. Actually be his Absolutely, one hundred percent. I don't. Magazine that we all just. I don't think there's anyone that isn't you know a weird contrarian that would yeah, say otherwise. I like, I like it more than Andy. For sure. For sure. Uh, but are you okay with him being above Snake? Yeah. Yeah. But God, I don't think that there are two characters that are more important to smash than falcon and snake snake has literally next to no importance to smash compared to fox i'm sorry personal opinion or not that's just wrong <laughs> yes i can get behind i put fox up there as well but he's not as important as those two i think that fox is important from a competitive and f game feel standpoint which is like what is most important but I feel like, even from a casual level, Snake and Falcon are Smash Brothers. Yes. In just the hype cycle of Smash Brothers. I mean, hype is good, but... I think the, the core identity of the series is arguably more important. <laughs> and now, we have to... <laughs> it's weird going from the absolute hype train of Captain Falcon. Oh yeah, that's Jiggly right. The last character Jiggly. is fucking Jigglypuff. Oh, you, you you want me? What do I say about this character? Jigglypuff is weird. Fun, but weird. The design is very specific. And covers a niche that isn't in Smash at all, even now. Like, a, a super floaty character that's entirely based around the air. While there are characters that are good in the air, nobody has the aerial superiority of Jigglypuff. Well, what else does she have? Oh, she can put opponents to sleep. Oh, she also has a move that puts herself to sleep, but if you're over somebody when you use it, they fucking explode! Wait, what? Like... Fun and weird. Like... Jigglypuff is a perfect example... ...of working within restrictions. Because Jigglypuff is literally a byproduct of having a base and just adding, just throwing shit at the wall that would work for it and just making a weird character out of it that is way, way past its prime, but I think people would still be upset if it was gone from Smash. Like, Jigglypuff was put in because it, she's popular, she was very popular in the anime and in Japan. And they basically said to themselves, Oh, we got, you know, we want to put in, like, Mewtwo and Deity and Bowser. And we got really close with one, but we're not going to have enough time for them. Why don't we just, you know, we have this base of a character here named Kirby, and there's another popular Pokemon named Jigglypuff that we could put in. and..." You know, wouldn't take very much time to develop, 
let's put we could put this character in to fill in a slot that would have been for like Mewtwo or something like that. And they thought to themselves, yeah, you know what? People like Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff's popular right now. If they see Jigglypuff, they'll know who Jigglypuff is. Yeah, I'll put Jigglypuff in the game. We are now like two decades past when this would have happened. Julie Puff has also been a character that her reputation is all over the place. She was mid tier in Smash 64. She was top three in Smash Melee. She's bottom one or bottom three in Smash Brawl. She was bottom one in Smash 4. And she's okay in Smash Ultimate. Like that, that it's all over the fucking place. I don't know where I would tear Jigglypuff. It'd probably be somewhere in the middle. If only for the fact that I feel that there, you could definitely add things to this character that would make her more consistent. Like, I feel that you could replace Rollout and give her, like, echoing, like, echoing voice. And give her, like, sound waves that can, like, bounce off of walls and help her tra trap her opponent to make it easier for her to land rests. Or, you know, maybe even if you're, you if you use, like, sing and your sound wave hits the sing that you have active, then the sound wave will put the opponent to sleep if it hits them. And you basically have the potential to set up a ranged a ranged sing a ranged sleep effect which you know is just what hero does but uh, that's besides the point like there's things you could add to this character and the character is a wonderful novelty of the time when smash was in its infancy and uh, They've even gone so far as, you know, update Jigglypuff to look more like modern Jigglypuff with the smaller eyes. And, uh... While I don't think anybody would have said, oh yeah, I want Jigglypuff and Smash... I'm glad she's here, and I'm glad she's never left. I don't know. She's like a bee. If only because of how good she was in Melee and how I and a lot of people kind of wish that Jigglypuff would go back to that, to that heyday and, you know, be a really good character again. Because that's, I, that's the thing. I legitimately do believe that people want to see Jigglypuff be a good character again. And while she's not bad in Ultimate, like... She is far, far from being the worst character in Ultimate, or even low tier for that matter. Yeah, yeah. I, I would like. I think I'd like her more if she was higher tier, which is you know better, more consistent character. Because, and people will probably argue, oh, she was never consistent. Jigglypuff in Smash Melee was a very consistent character. That's why she was top tier. Where the hell is this even going to go? It's my honest, my honest question. To blow your friggin' mind? What? What? I have Jigglypuff in S tier. It fucking excuse me? <laughs> I'm jingly puffin' ass. Purik, what the fuck? <laughs> Purik. Purik. I don't know if you're here right now, but I know you're gonna see this eventually. What are you talking about? I don't think the character design is bad. As I said, it was using what they had at the time and the resources they had available. 
And for what it was, they made it work and made something unique and fun out of it. And it's basically turned a basic Pokemon into an icon that's going to continue being an icon for many years to come. That's great. Jigglypuff is not a fucking S-tier design in any way, shape, or form. You have to understand, you are putting her in the same tier as Captain Falcon and Fox. If maybe she could be an A-tier, if she was consistently like Melee throughout the entirety of Smash, and she was a way more consistent character. But fucking S-tier? What are you? What? What? It's not a melee bias. It's a bias of I want the character to be its best, and I and and you can't argue that melee Jigglypuff is not the best the character has ever been. Just like I'll say, I want Donkey Kong to be more like D, like DK is in Smash Four, or Luigi being more like he is in Smash Four, or Bowser being more like he is in Smash Four. You, you have my attention. You, you better be, you better have something very, very good to explain this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I am not, I, I will hear you out. Yeah. Hit me with this. All right, cool, cool, cool. So Jigglypuff, right? Yeah. Uh, knock off of Kirby. Mm hmm Maybe at the beginning, but not anymore. Was only there because she was important in the anime and uh, was relatively popular and was very, very easy to make. Yeah. In some eyes, absolute waste of a character slot. Uh, well, you could say that about a lot of characters and a lot of people would probably say that about a lot of characters, but I don't know if I'd say that about Jigglypuff. If only for the fact that nobody plays like Jigglypuff. All of these are 100% true. Jigglypuff is the absolute perfect joke character. She's not a joke character. You have immediately lost me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Pierre. That steak is raw. You've immediately lost me with this. Jigglypuff is not a joke character. She was clearly put in the game for a reason. She was put in because they wanted to put in an extra character, and they had a base to work with, and they had a character that they could turn that base into with little to no work that would have a big payoff at the time. While, while it worked then, it doesn't work now. Rest doing damage isn't a joke. It's an odd design choice, but it's definitely not a joke. But Jigglypuff is not a joke character. There are no joke characters in Smash. The only one that I say you could make an argument for is Pichu. Because its design is inherently meant to be worse than the character that it's based on. But Jigglypuff is not a joke character. She's weird, and she's unlike any other character in Smash, both on a gameplay and visual level, even compared to Kirby, the character that she wants to use as a base. And in some ways, she would go on to surpass Kirby. But... Jigglypuff's not a Joe character, and she never has been intended to be so. I don't think that she should be seen as such. Of Super Smash Brothers, there is no character that comes nearly as close as Jigglypuff. Not in the sense that she's like an absolute joke to fight or some ooh lethal joke character with one move that you don't expect. Nah, Jigglypuff takes Smash Brothers and just flips it on its head. It's like, okay, 
Here's what? a platform fighter where you all maneuver about the platforms. What if we made a character that never ever uses the platforms and just hops around and does random bullshit and weaves in and out? Jigglypuff uses platforms. Uh, locking opponents in on platforms with up air is a huge part of Jigglypuff's game plan in Melee. And catching opponents on platforms with up air is one of your best ways to go and to combo into rest in ultimate. Jigglypuff uses platforms to her advantage 100%. Okay, we have this wonderful shielding mechanic that differentiates us from other fighting games. What if we have a character where they die if you pop their shield? Okay, we. I mean, you could argue that Yoshi going into an egg and not being able to shield stab is as much of a joke as that. We have all these cool, cool final smashes. What if. And I'd say that's less based on, you know, wanting to be a joke and more just haha balloon pop. If we made a character whose power was getting really, really big, so they push them off, so that they take away the ability to platform. Well, I would argue that that's more of just a byproduct of them just wanting to come up with a final smash really quickly because Jigglypuff was implemented really late into Ultimate. I wouldn't say that this was the plan from the beginning. Although you could argue, hey look, it's a Gigantamax, it's a Gigantamax Jigglypuff. What if we made a character special be that their shield is weak, so they beat up the other person's shield? What if we make it so that this healing move is actually super duper explosive, but if the game decides, oh, it kills you wrong, then you get punished anyway? Well, to be honest, that's more of a fault of the game itself and not Jigglypuff. Most people were, in general, were generally, like, not happy with the change of, you go off the top, you don't, aren't guaranteed to go off the top simply because of the fact that it ruined Jigglypuff's rest. Jigglypuff. That and Jigglypuff was designed way before that was actually a thing. Puff is an absolute joke in every sense of the word. I would argue that Little Max, you know, not being able to recover comes way closer to being a joke than that of Jigglypuff being able to float around in the air. And I don't think Lil Mac's a joke character either. And always has been. One of her taunts is just deflating. And it's not up to anyone or her design if uh, she is good or not. It's up to the fact that if the game feels like letting her be good, she will be good. What and does that mean? Not, then No, they they super underpowered rest after melee. That that that's a, just something that has become a problem and has made the move, you know, not inherently super worth it in a lot of ways. That, along with the changes to how, you know, opponents are launched and KO'd off the top of the screen, not always being guaranteed to be a star KO. I mean, that's... <laughs> yeah, I mean... They nerfed Rest. Jigglypuff's viability has always been on the power of her rest. And it was destructive enough to kill most characters like 15-20% to in melee. And in Brawl it does like 15% damage, like little to no knockback, and it puts a flower on their head. In Smash 4 they upped the power a little bit and they increased the damage, but it still is nowhere near as powerful as melee. And then they upped it a little bit more in Smash Ultimate, but it's still like... only... Okay. Like. That is the defining factor on whether or not Jigglypuff is good. And Jigglypuff right now is only okay because her rest is only okay. Yeah, she'll suck and be the worst character in the game. But either way, it's Jigglypuff. And it's just fun. It's just taking the concept of this character is a ball and a balloon and is just floating around and taking it to its logical extreme. It's a practical joke on the very concept of Smash Brothers. Not I really. I love it. 
Okay. Uh, 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 A lot uh, of things. Entering uh, uh, into this discussion. I feel the divide comes in the different perception of a joke character, especially since the expertise in traditional fighting games approaches a joke character differently than Smash. I don't think that any character in Smash is a joke character. And the only one that you could make an argument for is Pichu. At most. Jigglypuff's criteria as a character does not match what at what joke characters are in fighting games. No, joke characters aren't always in. Well, it is a it is a design factor, but it's not always the only factor. Wacky characters aren't joke characters, though. There are plenty of wacky characters in games like these that aren't joke characters. There are plenty of wacky characters. Wario's more wacky than fucking Jigglypuff. I wouldn't call Wario a joke character. I was not expecting to be sold on Jigglypuff, right? <laughs> but wow! I, it's something I mentioned during Wii Fix segment is that how Jigglypuff is a novelty. She's not a joke character. She's a byproduct of the time when Smash was in its infancy. A character that under any other circumstance would probably not exist. But she was in the right place at the right time and fit a very specific criteria, and therefore she's a playable character in this game and has been so in every single Smash game to date. She's not a joke character. How well a joke lands for a joke character is important? Damn, does that joke land well, right? And it's a Pokemon, so it's not that important to represent what she is. Yeah. So you have that freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's that Pokemon bias again. Who would be a better joke character for Super Smash Brothers? Oh, I can think of a few, and I don't. I still don't think that Jigglypuff is one of them. Other than maybe Ditto doing the Ditto face on a character, and that being your random button. I actually have a quick concept I want to make at some point. Just that Ditto should be an option in. Uh, online smash modes just be like okay i'm picking this wherever i'm fighting i'm gonna beat them with their character the thing is that she doesn't upend the table she just has good aerial mobility yoshi has good aerial mobility too and while he's a bit the only difference is that yoshi's faster on the ground than jillypuff and she's slow on the ground ergo why you want to stay in the air i don't think she upends the table Nearly as much as characters that are already in the game. Like, Lil Mac upends the table way, way more than Jigglypuff. And again, Lil Mac's not a joke character. Oh, that's fun. But like, yeah, yeah. Like, even, even the likes of, like, Piranha Plant, like, as absurd as that is, Jigglypuff is not just a joke because in terms of... Her design works in the context of a platform fighter. There's nothing about Jigglypuff that feels like it wouldn't eventually exist in Smash. How would I define Joe characters? <sighs> Joe characters... You know what? It's honestly difficult to explain what a Joe character is, but it basically boils down to... They are intentionally made to be a specific way, and usually that means that they are either underpowered, more underpowered than everybody else, or they are more overpowered than everybody else. Maybe not exactly from the gameplay design, but approaching this philosophy of Smash itself at its base level. I still think, no. Lil Mac, Lil Mac existing in this game and not being a joke character 
I think makes that statement moot because I think that he is a way bigger departure from what platform fighters are supposed to be or platform fighting characters are supposed to be way more than Jigglypuff. Because Jigglypuff uses platforms. Lil Mac doesn't use platforms for anything. Lil Mac's counter is platforms. If you you can't you can't platform counter Jigglypuff or Camp Jigglypuff. It's his mind's <laughs> the argument is good, but it's just not that it's just still the key pieces of information are wrong. Jigglypuff is not a joke character, just like Wee Fit's not a joke character, just like Little Mac's not a joke character. It's like, Pichu's not a joke character. The character was put in the game to be put in the game because the character was popular at the time. And fit the criteria of Ball character, similar to Kirby, basically was a semi-clone of Kirby in her first appearance. Like, that's, I don't see any joke character in that design. Yeah, Game & Watch isn't a joke character either. I argue, I definitely feel that the argument of joke characters is just something that is so weird and arguably doesn't fit a majority of modern fighting games. Yeah, but that's because she's a fucking balloon. I would still wouldn't say that's a joke. Especially since, you know, Jigglypuff, you know, being airborne, it's not going to really be using her shield very much. Just who the character is? She's a joke in how she interacts with the mechanics of Smash Brothers. I never thought of it like that, but it's so true. I was like thinking about where to put Jigglypuff and I went, well, I really like her. And I do this with all my videos. I go, why do I really like her? And then I dissected my brain to figure it out. Humor like, maybe, oh, but, for, but, game, but design really like wise, like, I don't think that that's subject. That I don't think that that is subjective. matters at all because of Smash Brothers. Like, insofar as, like, characters like Wario or... Like, Adam I can Army. think Wario's funny. Wario does a lot of weird, hot, like, weird animations and stuff like that. But I wouldn't call him a joke character. A lot of characters have weird, funny animations. Jigglypuff is literally just a novelty of when she was introduced. That is here because we praise the Smash 64 cast for what they brought and what their game started. Jigglypuff is the weirdest one of the bunch. In any other circumstance, she wouldn't be here. Nobody would ask for it. But she's here. And I think she's here for, to be more than a joke. Poorly represented. Jigglypuff is propped up like the best of them, like Falcon and like Fox. Where she matters because she is this joke that they did the absolute most with. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, that, that's just correct. You're right. I know I have her high, well, obviously, but uh, because I value that mechanical uh, nuance a lot more than I value specific references and whatnot and what I think a lot of people look for in a character. And like Jigglypuff is the one character where I look at this and I go, you could be cut and I'd be disappointed, but I'd be okay. But at the same time, if you were in, I'd be like, yeah, Jigglypuff's back. I mean, I think that's pretty much everybody's personal beliefs on this character. If you're cut, it's like whatever. But I'm glad that you're here when you are. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to... <laughs> this, is, this is such a new perspective for me that I'm having... Also, please don't put words in my mouth, Puppeteer. By my definition, none of those characters are joke characters. I literally told you there's no joke characters in Smash. A hard time laughing, but I do love it. <laughs> it's just new. Because I've never liked Jigglypuff. I, I think a, a big part of that comes down to A, I, she is kind of annoying to fight against. Oh, totally. But B, she's an, an annoying character in Smash speculation. Uh, one of those rules is, oh, we can't cut the original 12, despite the fact that Jigglypuff has almost been cut in almost every game she's appeared in. The question is, was she almost always cut, or did they always start her development late because they knew they didn't have to do very much? I'd argue it's the latter more than the former. And just so many arguments of that have soiled the character's reputation for me, but looking at her design just as that joke, she's incredible. <laughs> Do you know that uh, specifically only in event match 39 of Melee, they play on the Pokemon Stadium stage, and if the camera is focused on Jigglypuff, her sing will amplify and set all the other Jigglypuffs to sleep, no matter how far away they are? I had no idea. There is just so much That's to it, man. Whole Melee was designed in such a short time frame, but they still found the time to do that? Yes. <laughs> And like, rollout <laughs> is a crap move where you kill yourself, but I kind of love it. Yeah. I, the only thing you really need for Jigglypuff's character, speaking as to like the anime, because nobody cares about Jigglypuff. Oh, so when I say like overpowered or underpowered puppeteer, I mean like we're talking like this character was specifically designed to be like God tier broken, nothing can touch it, or this character was literally designed to like most of the most of the functions of this game doesn't work for this character like dan in the original street fire alpha like street fire alpha 2 and alpha 3 definitely alpha 2 where some he just like can't combo or do like very basic things that the game lets people do I also would argue that none of those characters are, are designed to be overpowered. They're overpowered in a vacuum. I don't think that's I don't think that Sakurai looked at Bayonetta and said I want this character to be I want this character to kill the game. I don't think that's the case, no. I don't think that any character was ever designed with the idea of, I want this character to be the most broken thing in the game, or I want this character to be the most underpowered character in the game. And because of that, I don't think that anybody fits the design aspect of a, Sma of a joke character in Smash. Because I don't think that Jigglypuff's idea was, oh, we're going to make this character a joke, we're putting this character in as a joke. I think the idea was, we're going to put in a character really quick and easy. We'll give her aspects of a balloon because it fits what the Pokemon is. As like a Pokemon? Yes. Is that she sings? Yep. That that puts that to sleep? And that means okay. Well, actually, no, that's not true because I'd argue that Street Fighter Alpha 2 and Alpha 3 are fairly good, are fairly balanced games, and Dan exists in them as a joke character. Tekken 3 is also a fairly well balanced character, a well balanced game. You still have that dinosaur. 
that's a Joe character. Yeah, looks wise, he was meant to poke fun at Rio, but the thing is that he moved out of that joke design over time. Like, yeah, gone in Tekken 3. But yeah, Dan, especially in like Street Fighter 5, when they brought him back as a DLC character, yeah, he still does taunts and stuff like that. But this character was designed to be a real character. Like, they didn't go into Smash... They didn't go into Street Fighter Five thinking, we're going to make Dan the worst character in the game on purpose. We're going to give him things that don't work. We're not going to do anything along those lines. We're basically going... to design a character that's fun and expressive and feels very much like Dan, but he is very much his own character and he is not a joke. And for a while, Dan was... Dan had an infinite. <laughs> Dan was regarded as a high-tier character that had an infinite that, while difficult to do, it was possible, and somebody actually managed to pull it off at a tournament, like a week and a half after he came out for Street Fighter V. Like, Dan is... A joke character must parody the game that they're in. In a sense, yes. Because, you know, being designed to, you know, just be better than everyone or be worse than everyone is a parody of the game's design. And yes, I know what you're going to say, but the Jigglypuff balloon pop, I... Def I believe that that's based on the fact that she's a balloon Pokemon. I also think that it's also designed to work in tandem with the fact that this is designed to be a character where you're very rarely using your shield. It is a punishment for, for being on the ground too long because you are a character that is inherently designed to stay in the air and at most... Pressure opponents from, like, mid-range with your decent buttons, your decent attack speed, and your fantastic aerial mobility. And I don't think that any of that is a joke. Do I think that Jigglypuff should have more Pokemon moves in general? I think that you could replace Rollout with something else. You could give her, like, echoed voice to, you know, help her lock opponents down to make it easier to set up rest. Which would be nice because, as I said, rest in Smash Ultimate and 4 and Brawl has been a shell of its former self. And even the game is actively trying to punish you for using it at this point. And it feels, it feels like an afterthought in a lot of cases, to be honest with you. To which I say, no, echoing voice. It's a move that in, in Pokemon, if you use it over and over again, it grows in power. That move you gave to Eevee's neutral special, that was hyper voice. Rollout should be a bad custom move. It should uh, should be out of the default move set. I mean, I, I know why they gave it to Jigglypuff. Because, you know, it fits the fact that she's literally the stubbiest character in the game. And literally just is a ball. But yeah, I, I still do not believe that Jigglypuff is a joke character. She's weird. But she's weird in her own unique way. That I think a lot of the, a lot of the Smash 64 newcomers are weird. Like, Ness is weird. The fact that you use your 
you have a move that's a, a recovery that's a projectile, but you can aim it into yourself to to deal damage and recover. These kind of designs would not exist in anything but Smash 64. Rest flies in the face of all of this. No, I don't think that rest flies in the face of all of this. It's a weird move, but again, I'd say that Jigglypuff making somebody explode with sleeping is no different than using a projectile to use your... Shooting yourself with your own projectile to recover. Like, they're both things that make no sense in the context of this kind of game. And they come from what is clearly an experimental phase of Smash that we are we have sadly moved out of and we will probably never get again, which is why we've never had characters that have options that feel anything like that. And the projectile used to recover doesn't do self-damage. I I wouldn't mind if it did, if it meant that, you know, it was more powerful. I mean, it's already powerful, but make it more powerful. Ness doesn't really have very much of a character to be in. I mean, you could make the same argument of... Of Jigglypuff. Yeah, I know. I know that I know that it doesn't. I said if it did. And but it did more damage in return. A joke character should be enough to win despite being a joke, so you could turn the joke on opponents if you're good at Enough with them. Okay, if we're going by that description, you're right. Smash does have a joke character, but guess what? It's not Jigglypuff. It's Pichu. Because, Harry, what you just described is exactly how somebody described Pichu as a character when he was released in Melee. That this is the character you play to style on your friends, and when you're really good at the game. We've been arguing for the wrong thing. Jigglypuff's not the joke character. Pichu is the joke character. We have reached an impasse. The thing is, Chuckles, since we have no confirmation and Sakurai basically says nothing about Jigglypuff ever, my interpretation of the situation is no more valid than yours, and yours is no more valid than mine. But I think you also need to ask yourself, that was Pichu in Melee. Is he a joke character anymore? No, actually. You've helped us reach an impasse. There are the argument of joke characters in Smash. It exists, but it's not Jigglypuff. Oh, uh, Christian, 
Joe character is not an FGC term. Joe characters have been coined by actual developers. That's not something that's a that's an FGC term. She's just kind of stuck up. Yeah. And that works. Like, what else am I going to ask for with Jigglypuff? Like, have her have a concert file smash where she draws with markers on everyone's face? Uh, I, I do wish she sang as she grew bigger, just to, like, put people to sleep as she... I mean, an emote where she puffs up angry would at least be nice. It just pushes them off. Yeah, I, that would be hilarious. That would be really funny, but I love angry puffy. How would you feel if Sakurai said he made the decisions because they were funny that I would concede the argument and admit I was wrong? But I don't think we're ever going to get that out of Sakurai. And I, I personally believe that somebody that has been around a lot of these games for a very long time and has seen, and has seen fighting game characters and fighting games come and go, I don't think that Jigglypuff is a joke character. Cheek Jigglypuff getting really bigly puff. <laughs> Am I going to agree to put Jigglypuff in S tier? Is that where this is leading? <laughs> well, if you say one thing to her detriment, then I'll agree to put her atop of A. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Should Sing be a bigger part of her kit? I don't know. See, I would have said that, but then Ultimate made it fun. Yeah, it's better now. She could have, like, maybe sound waves or something, but, like... That sucked in Smash 4. Yeah, it's... Maybe move Sing to standard special, make it outward moving, and put something different on up special. Anything that could, like, add to, like, oh, let's actually translate the actual character into, like, the actual Pokemon, I don't care. Yeah. If you're, if you're, if you're approaching to put Jigglypuff into the game as the Pokemon, I don't, I don't, I don't give a damn. It, but that's what Jigglypuff is in Smash. It is the Pokemon. I mean, it's not the anime adaptation, even though that's the reason she got into the game in the first place. It's a Jigglypuff. There are dozens of Pokemon I'd rather have over Jigglypuff, but as this joke... Yeah, but Jigglypuff not acting like herself is very, like, not true to the Pokemon in Smash, who all have distinct personalities and act and move and work in distinct ways that, while not all of them work as characters, Lucario, they still feel like the Pokemon in pers in their personality and Jigglypuff is the only outlier of that I don't think another character could land this joke as well as she does maybe a the 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 perpy enemy that puts you to sleep and even then like I, I don't think it would land as well I, I like Naughty but like that you have to give a full move set to Naughty I mean, Mewtwo's personality is fine. Mewtwo in Smash is stoic, and Mewtwo in Pokemon is stoic. I mean... Mewtwo is Mewtwo. Is, I, we can't talk about Mewtwo right now. I mean, they gave a full moveset to Jigglypuff. <laughs> Why do we keep talking about characters that we're not allowed to talk about because they're not in the video? <laughs> That's my question. Yeah, but, yeah. But he's not puffy like a balloon. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, it's a great joke. Uh, I'll, I'll, I had her all the way down in C, and you have talked me up to S. <laughs> I would settle for B. I think that B is a good spot for where Jigglypuff is. The B can even stand for balloon. Uh... While I still stand by the fact that I don't think that Jigglypuff is a joke character... And that there's- I feel there's a lot to show that she isn't a joke character and is just- And that a lot of her weird stuff is a byproduct of the experimental days of the beginning of the series' inception. She's still fine. Like, she's a B tier.
And the only reason I have her in B tier is because I don't think she, she's that she's very consistent. Like she's all over the place, and I wouldn't feel it wouldn't feel right in me to judge only melee Jigglypuff. Harry, um, why why do you want a worse little Mac? Hasn't he suffered enough? Haven't the people that have played him suffered enough? Haven't the people that wanted him suffered enough? Let little Mac rest. He's, he's done the best he can. Also, well, hello, Pierre. You made it right at the end. Uh, I don't inherently agree with your joke character argument because I don't think that Jigglypuff is a joke character and I think that she's like a B tier. It is what I would basically boil down the last 40 to 45 minutes. No, it's fine. I tend to lose track of time because I'm somebody that works from home. So, you know, for me, it's, oh, it's work time. Oh, it's, it, it is daytime. Oh, what time is it? It doesn't matter because it, it, it's either daytime or it's nighttime. Who cares? Day means work, night means sleep. But yeah, uh... It caught me off guard. Out of all the characters in Smash 64, I was not expecting an argument for Jigglypuff. And while I can definitely understand why the argument was made, I still think that she's not a joke character in design, and that I think a majority of the things that make her funny are simply from the fact that she's a balloon. And, you know, balloons go pop. If you, if you pop, they're, you pop, you know, they, they explode. <laughs> um, I also don't like that Jigglypuff is the rare outlier of the Pokemon that where each Pokemon in Smash has a very distinct personality and like ways that they like animate and move, Jigglypuff doesn't have the personality that people know and like the character for. Like the Pokemon should like puff up angry for a taunt, or in like instead of clapping, I know she just like tilts her head to the side, but she should like look pissed off. Like, you know, oh, you, I'm the focus. Who the hell is this cloud guy? Giant sword? No, I hate that guy. I don't think they focus on it. The focus is just that she floats. It's not go pop, it's go float. I also don't think she's a joke because I think that a lot of the weird stuff she does in Smash 64 or, you know, were designed in Smash 64 are on par comparable to some of the other weird things that characters do that makes no sense. But... I never, at least at the end of the day, I'll say this. I never said Jigglypuff was a bad design because I don't know how you could make Jigglypuff a bad design. She's the most inconsistent character in the entire series, but I'm not going to say she's bad.
if she was as consistent from melee till now, I probably would have her in like A tier. But that explosive personality and the and those explosive moves being basically not only neutered in terms of like stats, but just the changes to like launching opponents off the top of the screen in Smash 4 heavily damaging the potential of rest and what it is as a move. I I can't. <laughs> I think that she's a B, in my personal opinion. And while I, and while I respect where the opinion is, where the opinion of you know the ultimate joke character comes from, I disagree wholeheartedly. And I think that there are definitely aspects of the character that do not match the joke character aspect. And then I feel if we wanted to go by a lot of the arguments of Joe characters in a game like this, I, I even said I think that Lil Mac is probably closer because he has a he is flawed at a point where he just doesn't work in a game like this. Lil Mac's shortcomings feel closer to what a Joe character is in most regards. Like that that aspect of he's in the game, but uh, he has something that just doesn't work like the rest of the cast, and as a result, he's just there. Look, I've been talking for a while. I'm still uh, I'm still a little caught off guard by Jigglypuff being as high as she is. Is Nori Maru from Marvel vs. Capcom a joke character? Yes, he is. He he's also only in Japan and was never outside of anything from Marvel Superheroes vs. Street Fighter. Where in S are we putting this joke? Oh, bottom, bottom, one hundred percent, the bottom of it. Okay. Okay. okay good. Crazy. If you put him, if you put her above Fox, I would throw hands in the Wendy's parking lot. Z. But I did tell you I have one character that you are never gonna guess. I put in S tier. I never would have guessed that. I thought you saw that. Okay, maybe he like really likes Mario, and I can respect that. I can see where he's coming from. I would have guessed Jigglypuff last. Uh. <laughs> No, uh, Jigglypuff's the only one that I had, like, an adamant disagreement with. I think the, all the others were like, like, what was Mario? Mario was like, I think that the focus on Mario being the, the everyman, the beginner character in every multiplayer game is a part of, is represented fairly well in Smash. Uh... I think I'm, I'm not going to say anything about Donkey Kong. I kind of want you to hear my opinions on Donkey Kong. But I will definitely say this. I liked Donkey Kong more in Smash 4 when the developers knew what the hell they were doing with the character. Uh, I like classic Link design more than Link. I gave ideas for Samus and generally agreed that she's fairly low. Uh, I said nothing about Yoshi, because it's Yoshi. I argued that Fox is the best character in Smash, and is basically the face of the franchise. Uh, Kirby's Kirby, and he's very good, and, uh, you can't really insult Kirby. Pikachu is really good, and is a good encapsulation of both the games and the anime that his personality is clearly based on. 
Uh, I had some things to say about Luigi. I also think that like Donkey Kong, I liked him more in Smash 4 and the developers knew what he was what they wanted him to be. Ness is okay. Captain Falcon is second best character in the game. And Jigglypuff is still here. <laughs> no, knowing how you feel about Donkey Kong, I would have guessed Jigglypuff last. Wow. Okay. What a strange episode, right? <laughs> we lost our minds over Luigi, and this maybe explains where we are, but... <laughs> we I cried a little bit about Donkey Kong. Huh, okay, okay. Now, we have been talking for a while. Do you want to reflect a bit now that we're like three episodes in? You got the stamina for that? Yeah, I can reflect just a bit. Okay. On what? Okay. I, I, I do, I... Ugh. I can do it, but I need the guidance. Okay. Just because I, I do want to just... After that Samus rant, I want to respect Zero Suit Samus for what she does more. Because yes, the jet boots are stupid, but she plays like Metroid, and Samus does not. I no longer feel... I gave my ideas for Samus. To at least we talked I mean, she was always more about Samus me. yesterday than theater. Zero Suit. All right, all right. Uh, where would she be? Um, let's see. Of people we have in B, I have her over Greninja. I don't know who else that puts her over. Uh, that yeah, her conclusion. Ninja, Making Hunt, things up on. is good. And I kind of wish that the Smash team was allowed to do it more. Because when they're allowed to do it, they make the best characters in the game. I mean, look at the Transcendent tier. Three of them are literally what that is. Okay with all those. Uh, it puts her beneath Bowser Jr. And I would like to keep it that way because Bowser Jr., like, yeah, he misses a lot of the character, but so much of that design impresses me. Whereas Zero Suit Samus is, uh, satisfies my need for a... Metal. Adapt things. You don't need to take things over one for one. Don't implement mechanics. Adapt them to a fighting game. A proper Metroid character. Man, remember when I talked you into believing that Zero Suit Samus and Jigglypuff were better characters than Dedede? I, oh. But he's right, though. Oh, um, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> okay, fine, fine, fine. <laughs> oh, uh, that, it, it's a, that was... Oh, that hurt. That really That's hurt. That's okay, say something oh, mean no. about Donkey Kong. Oh, yeah, I, I deserve that, but damn, that hurt. <laughs> I also just want to say something. Like, I, I, I know, I know, I'm not trying to move Robin. I'm just put it, making my case for why he's in D instead of E. Okay. Because the top of E is Lucario. Okay, you want to know what? Using... Using my ability of foresight... Because I'm usually pretty good with this kind of stuff. I am going to guess that two days ahead of time that Robin is not going to be anywhere near D tier by the time this series is over. And he will at the least be in B if not A. Grant me the gift of prophecy who has a lot of the same problems, correct? Correct. Lucario is a character maybe- No, be mean to Robin, he deserves it. ...of the time you are playing it. Robin only has very, very small windows where his kit is offline. And I feel like that fits a tactician, because a tactician is not about just having the best plan, it's adapting to an ever-changing battlefield. Especially for, like, Awakening, because sometimes you just have three paladins charge upstairs and act on that same turn because Thanks. That'll kill all my healers. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's fun when reinforcements spawn and move on the same turn. I, I, I'm not, I'm not like arguing that he should be any higher. I just want to say that when comparing, like, th there's a reason that Lucario is an E and Robin is an D. Yes. Yeah. So I, just, I, 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 just wanna, I, I just wanna I guess because I, I actually had him all the way in A tier before you talked about him with me. Man, remember when I convinced you that Zero Suit Samus and Jigglypuff were bear characters? Stop! This <laughs> goes against so much of what I know. Oh. What I believed over all the years.
I'd like to take a moment just to say I've had some really nice talks oh, and no. comments with some people about Mega Man, his design, and just all the really neat things he does and the sort of ebb and flow that he has and uh, how it reflects his fights against robot masters. I'm not moving him. <laughs> Thanks. Pierre. I was waiting for that. Uh, Come on, yeah, like, buddy. We've, we've gotten some good comments already. Come like, on, I'm, I'm buddy. That anymore, cause that's gonna be a separate video, let's I have some good let's be on. realistic about this, buddy. <laughs> we, you and I both know the Mega Man is not that low. Shulk on Wii Fit Trainer. Just that kind of got me to pause and like, oh, really? That's actually really interesting. Uh, but for now, I am, I am tired. I am and too. I feel like this has been a, a solid episode. I still can't wait to get on with the rest. I don't know when we're going to like finish this series. Cause part of me, there's a part of me that wants to wait until like we have the entire ultimate roster, but at the same time, like we might just wait for like the comments video to talk about whatever the last fighter is. Yep. Plus, we still got one more game. Oh, so I should mention the the since the comments video is seven hours, and I don't think I would be able to sit through the entire thing. My plan for that stream is one: we're starting very early. We're starting at like noon. We're starting like an hour before I usually do, just so I can squeeze in the entirety of Ultimate, which is the biggest video yet, along with with looking at the final product because my plan is look at the final product look to see who changed where like the like the list notice any notable changes and go to the ones that are the most notable and the ones that I feel need to need or could be moved around the most because I'm pretty sure that a lot of these characters are where they are going to stay where they are and belong where they are. I'll tell you right now, I'm very interested to hear Robin because I, I, I feel it. That Robin's going to change in some way, shape or form. And I hope Ryu and Ken do as well, and, and Mega Man, and, uh, and, um, yeah, maybe Shulk could go up a little bit, uh, yeah, um, uh, it just, couple that'd be interesting to look at we'll we'll have to wait and see there are definitely some i want to know about yeah. either way we'll do that yeah yeah ultimate will definitely be the last one so spoiler alert can you guess what we're going but of course you know sora is also part of that video so i think looking at sora and at the end result then looking back to see how we got to the end results is the best way to do it. Look, I've already I said this last time and I'll say it again. I've talked in like the last three streams, even the last two days, I've talked more than I usually talk in like the like two weeks time, two or three weeks. I'm gonna be gravel <laughs> by the end of this. I talk about next. <sighs> No, what don't is think it? I don't see oh, you spinning down there, you. Oh, Kirby Fighters 2. <laughs> ah, but for now, this has been the Smash Brothers tier list. I am the Duke of Dorks. Oh, come. And we are bidding. <laughs> this. We are officially. We have officially passed the halfway point. We've covered Smash 4, Brawl, and 64, and next is Melee. And Melee is very interesting to me, because I think that Melee is a game with one character that's like one of the best designs in the entire series, 
and the rest are just okay. <laughs> That's my opinion on Melee. One character is, like, incredible in, like, almost every regard. And all the others are like, oh, yeah, he's okay. He's fine. Actually, no, what two? One from a gameplay perspective and one from a just design, like a full-on, like, personality and design perspective. It also holds what I think is easily 100% the worst character design in the entire series. I'm pretty sure a lot of people already know who it is, but uh, we, we will be talking about them tomorrow when we get to Melee and uh, we talk a lot about Fire Emblem and a lot of weird characters that are just The byproduct of a game being developed in a year. We do all of them in a row and it's exhausting. Honestly, since they're all fairly similar, I'm not, you know, too bent out of shape about it. And, uh, I'm fairly indifferent to almost all of them. And,. I still, I think Marth is phenomenal. But. Yeah. Um, I am going to now go and I'm going to put together poses for the next thumbnail. And uh, I will see you tomorrow. Probably starting around the same time where we will be covering Super Smash Bros. Melee, the best playing game with some of the weirdest and weakest newcomers that are arguably a byproduct of the development cycle. And, yeah. I will see you later. I'm going to go make some tea. And uh, look, we we finished fairly early. It was six. It was almost seven hours, but uh, we. Uh, we uh, finished early, the earlier than expected. We started at like quarter after one and we're about to hit seven hours. And uh, there, I knew there was going to be a lot of talking points for Smash 64 because everybody has opinions about characters from Smash 64. Melee? I don't know. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll at least say this. Claren clears. All of them. <laughs> okay, I'm going. Uh... Good night!